time to take a moment and say thank you to our amazingly generous sponsors. Without their ongoing support, we couldn't even begin to think about hosting an event like this year's Steely, ARB, Rainbow, Big Desert 480. So a big thanks must go to our major sponsors. Steely, Paint for Steel. The Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. ARB, 4x4 Accessories. Mickey Thompson, Legendary Off-Road Tires. Rainbow Rise Events Association. Raceline Wheels. Dynamic Wheel Co. Australia's hottest and toughest wheels. And the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. Good morning, people. Welcome to day two of the first round of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship out here in Rainbow, Victoria. Another sunny, beautiful day. We're here at the Steel at ARB Big Desert 480, and uh, we've got a, about 42 cars on the start line this morning. We had about 10 drop out. I'm Sandy Bowman. I'm here with Glenn Wells. We'll have our... Uh, Lee will be in uh, after as well. Morning, Glenn. Morning, Sandy. Good to be here and great day again. Just worries me a little bit. The breeze is uh, not up off. yet. It's dropped off. It was a little bit brisk this morning, but uh, clear, sunny day uh, out here in the western Wimmer of uh, Victoria. And uh, we just need that uh, wind to come up a little bit, be ideal. But uh, as you said, 42 cars uh, proceeding up to the start line as we speak and uh, I believe there was 52 starters yesterday, so as you said, we've lost uh, uh, 10, overnight. 10 overnight. Disappointing, but uh, it was a rough and tough day yesterday, and uh, they've got uh, four laps, two sections of two laps today of 77 kilometres, so, uh, and this is a brutal track, so, so uh, see what happens. We're going to cut to some Saturday highlights for a minute <coughs> and uh, show you what all happened out there in the desert. Bernie Kai, Kohesi, raced up for years in Sea Light, yeah, good competitor and strong car. So pretty sure he won the championship uh, in that class, uh, you know, at least once, maybe twice or more. <laughs> and we know that we will be at different stages. Especially with names, or not the best. I never passed with it. I was never the best. I used to do it in class or that. And I think now they do it at three years finishing. <laughs> I don't know whether that happened to you. It happened to me quite a bit. Well, not a, not a lot, but occasionally when you caught somebody in the trial, you lost time. And, uh, and you were uh, deep. And get space. Yeah, it's a good thing that they had Locked off the line, folks, in the nickel pan. Good look. 
Brown coming up to the finish line now. Plenty of Today's pace. Look at it. Check it flag. Kids are happy. And I'll tell you what, wasn't there some action yesterday? How's Danny Brown there? Uh, you saw last on your screen coming over the line. His first off this morning, followed by Bo Robbo in that uh, white white truck. That uh, we've got Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman. So a lot of these guys are going to be going full throttle to get. Don't forget, there's no wind out here this morning. Yesterday, we had about a 20k an hour bring, breeze, and uh, there's only about 500 metres to that first left-hand corner. So getting the jump on those guys to that first corner is critical. Certainly is, especially this morning, you know, with the dust, uh, the dust out there. As we saw yesterday, the infield was just uh, horrendous. That's with a 20k an hour wind, as you mentioned, Sandy, and... Uh, at the moment, it is clear and dead still. The so flags aren't moving and the trees aren't moving. <laughs> there's nothing moving. Both the spectators on the hill here and the uh, competitors getting ready to line up for this uh, great race. Now, tell me the goss, mate. We've got a bit of time this morning. We've got about 10 or 15 minutes before they um, pull around to the start. Oh, about 10 minutes, sorry, should I say. Uh, what goss did you hear last night, mate? Because well, I saw... It was a little bit running around, but you've got to kind of siphon the... The competitors, you know, with a bit of goss, you know, because they don't give too much away, no, as you're don't. aware. And uh, sometimes, you know, what's really happening is is not the case. Um, Danny Brown's got a bit of an issue leading off this morning and car got a gearbox 42. noise. Got a bit of a rattle. It looks sounds like a rattly bearing. He's a bit concerned about a, um, a, a pinion shaft bearing on the front of the gearbox, which is um, not ideal. So they drained the oil out of it last night and. Uh, had the normal what we call fluff and uh, metal bits on the on the um, bits plug. of bearing on the plug, but nothing serious. So I didn't need a uh, dentist or anything. But um, he's put some heavier duty oil in the gearbox. Yeah, some uh, uh, with some two hundred or four hundred weight or something. Yeah, silly. yeah, quite thick and syrupy oil. Which, as you know, your gearbox oil is quite thick as it yeah, is. Anyway. But uh, he's gone thicker. So uh, you know, it's 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 going to be a bit hit and miss. So. We can, um, we can, uh, we got both, yep, we'll go um, over to a couple of videos and a bit of an onboard with Danny Brown in a minute or so. We've got Bo Robbo in second, doesn't seem like he's got any dramas with his car, Andy Brown, no dramas, Clayton Chapman, so the top five, from what I know, are all clear to go, apart from that little issue with Danny Brown, we'll come back with some more info that we've scavenged around town over the overnight. It's but, good to um, see the two Chapmans at four and seven still going I tell you strong. What, they're going great, aren't they? You know, they started off their year sensationally, and uh, you know, both those cars were just um, superb yesterday, and uh, didn't hear any uh, any problems from that camp last night. Yeah, here we are on board. This is Danny Brown's on board run yesterday. Like I said yesterday, he has had five prologue wins in a row in the championship. Last year, everyone, and yesterday. So, a great combination of Danny Brown and George Apted in the navigator seat. They just work together so well. This is a uh, Milwaukee sponsored um, Alumacraft built in San Diego in America. It's, uh, it's got a five speed AGB Albans gearbox from Nissan Ballarat. Twin Turbo. Correct. 800 odd horsepower with um, plus. 
Uh, just depends on how then much he turns the, the switch. Yeah, I was going to say, where the, <laughs> where the switch is pointing. What we mean by that out there for the uninitiated is he's got a switch on the dashboard. Like with boost. It's called a boost switch, and you can just uh, tweak that a little bit, and it just boosts the turbo, the two turbo charges a little bit more, and it just um, adds or increases the horsepower to the back wheel. So this is a bit of his onboard footage yesterday. Nice and smooth, fast. Handles well. It's just um, it's just a terrific car. Well set up. Yeah, and I see the the green lights on the dash there, mate. Which is that's in the green zone of the rev limiter before it comes up to orange and yeah, a bit of blue. He's got. Well, you can see well, he's in the green. Lights, he's, he's certainly not over revving it. You know, is it the shift light obviously comes on around in the red, but uh, we're not too sure what it revs to. I'm not too sure. You might know. No, not Tip not totally sure. But, or something. Um, He's got plenty of torque, so he doesn't need to rev it that hard. You know, it's got plenty of grunt. You know, he's has um, got the 37-inch uh, diameter Toyo tyres on it, and uh, this thing just um, just gets it done. As you said, he's won the last five prologues or qualifying in a row. He's only only just had his own way yesterday with Bo Robinson, 0.003 of a second. So uh, it was only just a win, but... A win's a win. And look at this footage. You can just see it all looks easy from where we sit. Yeah, it does. Sandy, but, um, you know, open open screen and open to the elements and, uh, uh, you know, he's pushing hard. Makes a difference when there's no dust in front of you. Yeah, and he got the jump on Bo yesterday off the start of that section one. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm tipping... Uh, Bo said to me this morning, he's just going to go full right-hand lock, and when they take off the line, he's going to just punt into Danny. <laughs> There's no way he's going to beat in the first lines <laughs> to the first corner, sorry. <laughs> well, Danny was going to let Bo yet go yesterday, yeah, too. That was the plan, because um, he's just a bit worried about torque converter heat and so forth, and he said, well, I'll just let him go, and I'll just... Um, but uh, that, that um, strategy changed from <laughs> the first second off the start line. Here they are out in the... Uh, this is right out in the desert. This is in the back, uh, the middle third, should we say. As you can see, look at the sandy environment. Um, lots of scrubbery and uh, very hard to pick. You can see George, you know, he's got the uh, the rally safe in front of him. and He's, he's also um, got a GPS. They, GPS, they, and he's just saying, just, just keep going. And you can see the arrows, which is the directional arrows, which are just pointing straight up to the sky, which means... Straight ahead, as uh, the Milwaukee car just travels along in front of the commentary tower, yeah, heading, for the heading for the start line. Heading for the start line, yeah. So we're only a few minutes away, I believe. But you can see how sandy and loamy, and that is horsepower sucking terrain. You need to keep the speed up to keep on, keep top, on top of, of the, the sand. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's just so like water your skiing. Thing. If you're not skiing <laughs> fast enough, you're, you're sinking. Just, you're sinking, so you've just got to keep the foot in and just keep on top of it. And uh, that suspension is just working very hard, and it's just fabulous on board footage, Sandy. That's amazing, isn't it? Gee, they've gone a long way with the GoPros and uh, and the way you can back get from this, the um, handy cam. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember back in the '80s, and we had a couple of times where a television crew wanted to hop in and just um, and uh, try to get some footage, but. It just did, didn't work. It was, you know, didn't shake the round. Obviously, the suspension wasn't as good, and it didn't matter anyway. It was just too difficult. But gee, they've come a long way now. As all the cars are coming up in front of us now to the there's start still, line. There's still a bloody good line up here. I tell you what, I'm surprised still that they're going to any one of these top ten or twelve cars. But literally, still. Well, we've got Danny oh, Brown, Bo we? Robinson, Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman, Mark Burrows, Dale Martin, Stuart Chapman, Simon Tucker, and uh, um, Stephen Graham. Uh, Brent, Brent Martin's out. He had an issue yesterday they couldn't rectify. Apparently all the bolts come out of the uh, the drive plate on the torque converter. Yeah. So, and uh, they're rattling around in the uh, bell housing and just um, damaging sensors and so forth. So that was disappointing for our number one car. Not a good start for his year. But... Um, it certainly showed some promise when it was going 
tell you, yeah. Very it's, quick. Um, it seems strong, and uh, I believe I was, I was talking to Craig Martin, his father, this, Brent's father, this morning, and said he's a very happy with the uh, very happy with the car and the performance. It's just that uh, you know, little just got issues. Those little issues, which <laughs> they've had happens. everything apart in the off season, and um, something's not something's not done up. Right, is Danny Brown now in the tree section? Look how quick those trees are going past. You just don't want to get it wrong in those sort of areas of the track. Still sandy, and as we're speaking now, I'll tell you what, they're going one at a time. Line, well, that's folks. interesting. We didn't know that. We thought they were going two, two at a time, time, but uh, our first car, car 42, Danny Brown and George Apted have just left the start line. We've got Bo Robinson and um, Shane Hutt. On the start line now, and I would say there'd be 30 Where's seconds. That dust has not moved one bit. Look at it just hanging, just hanging. It's not a Bo breath of wind. 30 second line. intervals by the look of it. And Bo Shane. Robinson. Uh, he's, I see he's removed. Look, he's struggling with the dust already, and it's 30 oh. second gap. See, he's taken the back quarter panels, uh, the back quarter uh, panels. Look at the pace of Brown down the bottom. End. We are on board with Shane and Bo Robbo right now, folks. This will be something to watch. I tell you what, if we can get a bit of footage this one on the way out. Next up, we should have Andy Brown, then Clayton Chapman. Andy Brown's off the line. This new four-wheel drive, Alumacraft, you know, look at that. It's just a fabulous car. And I was speaking to Andy last night, he's just... Very happy with the car. It's, it's It's got more left in it, but uh, he just wants to get the miles done today, get some seat time and just put some miles on this vehicle and uh, and uh, have a, just ha go from there. Yeah, I mean, have a look at that. Uh, you can see on board with the boys there, uh, Bo and Shane, and you could see that where the sun's coming in through the dust. The sun's still quite low, so this dust hanging around is going to be a real problem until... Um, until the wind picks up. There's Clayton Chapman off the start line now. Sandy, car 15, he showed plenty of pace yesterday and uh, he's on a high at the moment, winning Gun the Windy, the ARB round the three last, last year. year. And then uh, a great performance at the Don River. Had an issue on the Saturday, little issue, but uh, he was super fast on the Sunday and cleaned up uh, up there. I was up there and I was able to, to watch, the, watch it. And uh, as Mark Burrows leaves the start line with young Tom Burrows in car 21, that car is um, set up really well, and I notice it's, it's handling terrific. And uh, Mark was driving it very well yesterday. He was having a, a fair crack. So uh, fifth off the line, and uh, expect Mark Burrows to be right there at the pointy end. Yeah, I saw they were doing a power steering hose on one of the cars down there. On young Matthew Burrows, Matthew's yep. car, yeah. So He's down at 13. As, Dale uh, and AJ in car five. Yep. The Martin entry. The Jim off the line. And look at the dust just holding. Yeah, it's just the dust is just we uh, we're actually struggling right now. We can hardly even see the start line, can we? It's the, the start line you, is. I literally can't in. see what cars on the start line now. I think it was a good decision to leave them leave uh, send them off at. Uh, oh yeah. There's Danny there Brown there on screen, and he's about to head out. You'll be getting close down to the uh, the road jump now. I actually can't see. I, I'm not too sure where our cameras are situated out there today, but there's um, there's plenty of good viewing out there. We've got a couple of drones out around the track. They'll be moving around throughout the day. Look at that dust That's now, just holding in that with the dust. Look at that. We've raced in this sort of dust before. It can be quite dangerous, so. Let's hope all our competitors stay safe out there today. Well, we can't even see the start line from where we are now, Sandy. It's just hovering. We need to set up some fans on the Spectator <laughs> Hill, I think, and just point it towards the yeah. infield. Good to see car 468 coming around the start line now. A Roland Pochow in the rotary-powered stadium truck. Yeah, he's had a couple of attempts, so hopefully he has a good run today. Is Bowie yeah, off? Uh, Bo, is Bo stopped out there? That looks like Bo. Back on board now where we were he's with Bo. stationary, Bo's. I think. Hopefully they're not uh, having... They might be stopped just purely for dust. So hope they can please, see better than what we can. Uh, and crews stay safe in the dust out there. It can be quite, quite bad. 
There you are, back on with the boys. Bo Robbo in that uh, huge truck, isn't it? It is a big truck. Not like your uh, normal Ford Raptor Ranger or anything, is it? Those gate posts out there must look quite tight when that truck's going through. And they, they tell me the four-wheel drive, Sandy, is three and a half inches wider. So, yeah. So that'd be even more frightful. But look at him manhandling that truck. Uh, 68. Craig Barnett. Cougar racing entry off the line. Nice and nice sanding V8 powered buggy. I think we said yesterday, you know, they've been good contenders in this championship for a couple of years. And they have. They've they're, uh, been doing quite well. Trevor Chandler is up next. Twelfth off the line, Trev. 11.21 his vehicle is. 6.2 yep. litre. Certainly is. I can see the king chrome sign from there. Gee, that sounded strong too. Yeah. Sandy. That 6.2 Chevy in the back of that is um, is certainly working hard. Hope you can see better than what we can from this Ooh, uh, commentary what, point. I don't think anyone can see out there. This is... Um, I haven't seen conditions like this for a fair while, actually. And if you have a look on, on the screen there right now you can see I mean this is what they've got to deal with the sunlight coming in on a low angle at the moment and this is only the second car on track you're travelling with oh they cleared yeah. up a bit Shane but, Hart um, and Bo Robinson if in you car get double triple one three this is um, live footage I believe yep dead live yep yep look at those trees going past I haven't got I haven't got any stats up here in front of me, but that'd be near 200k an hour, I'd imagine. As the Westerns lead the start line, uh, number 161, Chris and Cooper. I believe Cooper's driving today, we were told. That's correct, yeah, yeah. So, is it Dean McGinley up next? Is that what it looks like? 1087, maybe? Should be. Yes, 1087 Dean McGinley, McGinley from uh, Griffith in New South Wales. Told that area, that anyway. Our next championship round is well underway. Yes, up at Hilston, near Griffith in central New South Wales. And uh, it was a lot different to what this was this uh, last year. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had that much mud up there oh, last year. We struggled, mud. I don't know if anybody's watching, there was... Uh, it was horrendous conditions. Opposite, absolutely opposite to what totally we've got right opposite today. to what we've got out there today. Exactly, Sandy. And hopefully, you know, they could get a bit of rain prior to the event. And uh, as the Simpson car, 4 one, two, leads the start line. In Warrigal, Victoria, we've got, we've got guys from all around the country this weekend, haven't we? Certainly have, A few yeah. Queenslanders. Bo yeah. Robbo on your right of your screen there is from WA. We've been in the game a long time. We've got the Bentleys from South Australia. We've got, um, you know, a lot of people from Griffith. And, uh, you know, they've come from far <laughs> away. Peyton's standing in front of us cheering himself <laughs> on there. <laughs> we wish him luck today, I'll tell you yeah. what. Well, young Hannah's out. She had a good she, ride yesterday. But yep. uh, Sam, Sam should be coming up quite soon at nine position 19. But what we can see out there, which is not much... Um, I think this should be uh, Simon Govins in 10.54. The infield is just totally... Look at this in-car footage that we're seeing live in the Robinson car. You can see, look at the difference between Bo in second position with no dust and right in front of us. On the See, that navigator's working hard too. Shane Hardy's doing a lot of pointing. Yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. He's pointing right and they went left. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Hardy, Hardy, Hardy's uh, personality's a little like that though, isn't it? <laughs> That's 627 on the... Start line. Yeah, I think we just had Sam Bentley lead the start line at 10.18. 
Victoria kind of missed that in the uh, in the dust. In the dust, but we've got six two seven Justin, Justin Ryder. Ryder. Lachlan Campbell, another side by side up next. That's fabulous uh, in car live footage from uh, the Mason two wheel drive trophy truck of Bo Robinson and uh, Shane Hutt. The 6 0 7 leaves the start line. Lachlan Campbell got from the Candle Stable. Today. Next. Darren, not too, too sure who's in the passenger seat today or next. Yeah. Oh, actually, Darren I think Vandal. Millie said she was in today. Right. So. Just be careful. You can get caught out with these oh, navigators, no. especially when they're cross-ended. Seems like uh, Danny Brown might have uh, pulled the pin. We've just been getting has he already a bit of sign language in from out in the out in front of the commentary box here. That explains why there doesn't seem to That's be a lot of dust, dust in front of Beau. the Ro Robinson car. Yeah, so I think that's all. Well, it didn't last long that bearing in that uh, AGB, did it? No, they were. I did say they didn't want to blow it to pieces yesterday. But, no, um, no, no, but, uh, they've still yeah. got a job to do when they get out there, you know, so give it a fair crack. I can see one of their drivers going back to the truck maybe to go and get them in. Um, is that 929, that single-seater of Plant's yeah, car? Plant's car, That's what yeah. it looks like. Brett Plant. Brent Plant, the single-seater. Sometimes you can see better on the camera <laughs> than you can with our, from up here with the dust. Well, to give you some Little idea, the start line would only be 100 and, 120 metres away yep. from us, and and we can't see that. And, of course, we past that is the whole the infield. We, there's about five kilometres of track that's in there somewhere, but we can't see any of that either. This is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't seen this dust this bad in years. Look at the pace of the Robinson car out the back. Uh, we've got the Honey Badger leaves the start line now, the second of the Honey Badgers. Tell you what, mate, I went out last night and stayed on the edge of the desert. Did you really? Yeah, it was fantastic. What, on your so, own? Oh, the boys were out there. They're doing a checkpoint about halfway out there, Billy and Benny, right on the edge of the desert. Okay, went how out was there, that? Stayed out there, dead silent. Fire? Uh, had a little campfire, had a couple of cans and talked about the day, and they oh, said it was quite, fairly quiet on recoveries throughout the day. That it right? was. Uh, they only they pulled Heath Wheaton out a couple of times, got him going again, and apart from that, they sat around and enjoyed the scenery. Oh, good. The, the corner that they're situated on, by the end of the weekend, is about a metre and a half, well, a metre and a half, nearly two metres deep. Is that so right? they've still got about 500 mil worth of sand to dig down uh, before before they start hitting that rocky base. Right. And, um, and that won't be good, too, if they hit that no, rocket base. That's, that, a, that's a real tire cutter. Yeah. Because these sandy conditions, um, the competitors tend to let the tires down, just a whisker, to help, uh, you know, get through the sand, uh, the sandy conditions. And uh, if rocks start to appear, that's that's not ideal. At the end of the weekend, they go around and fill all that back in. But, gee, that'll be a big job, too. Certainly Doc Martin in uh, 445. Uh, Doc, Doc Smith. John Doc Smith, Smith here. Uh, 445's off the line. Tell you what, the clearest bit of footage we've got right now is Bo Robbo. That thing's charging. That explains why we haven't seen any dust in front of him yeah. for a bit. With um, Danny out. Danny out. He mustn't have got far in either. We're only, we're only 15 minutes in. I haven't There's seen yet, the time yet from last, last night, year, but... Uh, second place getter in the championship leaves the line. The middle miss couple. Yep. Yep. Alice. Dave and Alice middle miss from uh, the Ballarat area in Victoria. Brendan Hill on the start line. 
the amount of dust these people have copped and haven't even left the start line. <laughs> Just looking at the queue, uh, competitors lining up to the start line. We're, we're lucky to see them, and I reckon they'll be dusted in like they'll be wiping their um, visors already before they even start. We've got about 10 cars left to leave the line. Should have Daniel Gibson up there at the moment. His number's a bit hard to read, actually. Isn't it? 651. 651, Daniel Gibson, position 31. And then the uh, 422 truck, Stephen Von Peen. Not too sure who we're following out in the desert there, but can't see much stuff, so I think typically we're sitting up waiting for Bo to come in. There goes Stephen. Forsman entry, the only Forsman entry I think this weekend for memory. There's your boy, yeah. Bo Robbo. Showing that Mason truck no mercy. He's out to open up a bit of a gap, I think, while he's got a dust free yeah, run. Yeah, definitely. Because it was quite close between him and uh, Andy Brown and um, Clayton, Clayton Chapman. Chapman. They yeah, I think they were all within a minute. Quick. So, uh, and both. not forgetting there might be a bit of corrected time on there for that little transport section. And this has proved to be a trophy truck track with uh, Greg Gardner winning this race at least twice, probably even more. And look You're... at that car. Get, look, his truck's getting thrown about. And got to remember, this car's got 40-inch tires. And, and 40-inch suspension or something. <laughs> ridiculous. Look at It'll it. It'll be over 30 inches of suspension, I would imagine. Look at that thing. It's what we it's call getting peak beaten rooting. the hell out of it. What That's a fabulous awesome. aerial shot. And look at the uh, sky, as you can see. Uh, we can't see it at the moment. We're dusted in, but uh, it's a magnificent day here in uh, beautiful rainbow. Look at that thing in the in the sand. There's Andy Brown. Is that Andy Brown, it looks like? Yep. Well, I think the first lap, a lot of people will uh, settle into their positions, get in the groove. Doesn't look like uh, the, there's much dust in front of Andy either. Look. No. Well, Fair gap. Bo's going that hard. Um, you know, the dust, dust the sand, 30 though, seconds. So the sand's not quite as dusty yeah, as Yeah, exactly. What, you can see behind roads. it. You can see it's just dropping to the ground straight away, basically. Yep. And we've got uh, a few things out there today, you know, obviously staying clear of the track, competitors, spectators, all that sort of stuff, but also just if you're pulling up at things like the road crossing down not too far from headquarters here, just stay to the side so that everyone can see the signs, get a bit congested did get a bit congested down there yesterday. We've got our chopper back in the air today. You can go just behind the, behind us here and grab yourself a ride. Yeah, we noticed the two chopper pilots uh, having an egg and bacon sandwich and a coffee this morning, so they're both here. So Mate, we're... I don't know how long their white shirts are going to stay white, though. <laughs> This yeah. drone footage is sensational. That looks like a chappie we're following there, is it? Mark Burrows. That car's definitely a different car to this time last year. Well, straight out of the box last year, yeah. and uh, he's had 12 months to get it right, and, uh, he, you know, he's, he's obviously got a lot of confidence with that um, Monk's Fat built buggy, and... Uh, it's handling really well yeah, and going phenomenal. really well too. So, you know, he's, he's, he's just showing that he's just uh, really confident with the car and he's just driving a, a, a little bit harder than what he generally drives. But, uh, yeah, he's, um, he's got good pace. Dale and AJ, car five. Look at that. That is rough. <laughs> Like it's not those rough gem up here, mate. It's not, we, we don't have it rough at all. <laughs> Look, when you've got to think about these A-arm cars, they've got lots of suspension, and the way they're just 
and jumping and bouncing around is just believable. Uh, four, six, eight, our second last car leaves the start line. Roland Polchow. Had a few attempts at getting going. Yeah. Let's hope today's good for him. Good to see him out there. Let's just hope that he has some. Um... Sounded like I had a little supercharger squeal on the belt there. Yeah. To supercharge rotary. And then Heath Whedon, last car to leave the line in the patrol. It's gone quiet in here almost. Yes. About three minutes. It'll be an eerie silence, I nearly think. Well, we'll not be able to see something, too, yeah. but there'll be nothing to see. There he is, Heath Whedon. <laughs> Our last vehicle, 701. Did you help him change that transfer? No, box last no, night? I nicked off as soon as I could. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Lee. Lee Wells has joined us. Yeah, I've just popped up, mate. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, everyone at home. Uh, and very around the world. This got, I know Taryn's listing over in Scotland. She sent me a message before. There's a few people dialed in over in America that I know of. So, we last year, uh, sorry, yesterday we reached. It was over 2,000 followers live at any one time. And um, they reckon that that will grow once the event finishes. People will watch back on the on the footage. So that's, that's great, good to it? see. Phenomenal. And sitting, like, what you're looking at here, if you're sitting at home or anywhere around the world and looking at on board of this Mason Trophy truck just doing its thing. They're certainly the flavour of the month, aren't they, Lee, he's the only in, He's only in third gear, mate. Yeah, is he? Or yeah, I'm <laughs> just looking at the dash. <laughs> well, they put the 40-inch tyres on. They only had 37s on it yesterday, so they put the 40-inch tyres on it today, taking the rear guards off. But uh, I'm assuming that when he saw Danny Brown park by this morning, he would have had a big smile on his face because yeah. that truck now is in clear air, and uh, if it keeps going, it's going to take him catching. Yeah, and there was only uh, about a minute between Bo, Andy Brown, and Clayton Chapman, and uh, even Mark Burrows was quite close, so uh, I think he, he, he realises that, so he's um, taken the advantage of the clean air, as you said, Lee. But that's just terrific footage and the way we've progressed in the sport and the coverage and the film crew, like you sit back and have a coffee in your lounge room and you can just sit right on board shotgun. Yeah. Phenomenal amount of sponsorships and uh, energy goes. There's over 110 um, volunteers to get this particular race going. I know how much it takes to get a race going. Massive amount of sponsorship. ARB, Mickey Thompson Tyres, Raceline Wheels, Steel at Australia. We've all put in for this, this event, this championship as well. It's been... Uh... Yeah, without sponsors, we certainly don't have races like this, Sandy. So, uh, you know, thanks very much for all your sponsorship. You know, we... Uh... Uh, we love to come and watch these races, and uh, without the sponsors, we certainly wouldn't be get the, the pleasure of coming to see these um, events. It's all the volunteers too, the gatekeepers, yeah. the, all the ladies in the canteen uh, serving all the food all day, the coffees and the um, all the egg and oh. bacon's and oh. the sandwiches and the salads and the recovery, medical, the water, the fire. Yeah, we got the everybody list, here. The list goes on and on and on. The commentators. Oh, gee, they it do a good job, those fans. Goes, yeah, we'll say that. We don't want to pump ourselves up too much. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it all takes a big uh, crew to get it all together. Uh, everywhere from someone cleaning the toilets all the way up until someone running the event. Cougar. That's actually a good section that they've yeah, got the camera out today. It just shows that... It's a section where you're carrying a bit of speed. Um, They're definitely not at uh, top speed out that section. Though. With the cornering. So it's got yeah. cornering, whoops, speed, sand. So it's it's great pitches and great uh, another spot. So there's, I'm assuming there'll be a couple more spots throughout the day and change it up a little bit from yesterday. Yeah, they'll move around. The um, I, I hope by the time they start coming in, they're spread out a little so the dust gets a chance to... Settle. We still can't see. I don't know how long uh, Lake Wells is, how far Lake Wells is away from us, but we still can't see the beautiful scenery. No, no, we certainly, we're, uh, yeah, we, we only can see halfway now to down to Lake Wells. I think it'll be a little bit browner this morning. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> Just no breeze whatsoever. So hopefully it does pick up, and it does. When it does, it goes the other way again, like it did yesterday. As the King Chrome car, Trevor Chandler, I had a chat with him this morning. He had a few issues yesterday, no brakes, 
the, the car kept stalling at speed. So oh, didn't obviously, know that. and when the car stalls at speed, uh, you obviously got limited control of the wheel, and he took out a few plantation trees, fences, but oh, got away it. with it. Yeah, so they've, they've fixed it up overnight, tuned it, um, prepared the issue. So hopefully today he has a clean run. Sounded strong off the start line, so that was a good uh, good sign this morning. Does tell me that today it'll be about 25 degrees in Rainbow, same as yesterday, and about 15 to 25 kilometre an hour wind. But this is the Western car. I believe that Cooper's driving that today. He kicked the old man out, which is good. Yeah, it looks like he's got plenty of pace too. You know, like, uh, the old man to be watching the lap times pretty close too. He doesn't want to get knocked off for his son. <laughs> I think the Western family have always had a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, in-house in rivalry. Yeah, in-house rivalry. That was the uh, the words I was looking for. Maybe but we'll put Reese in the driver's seat for the last heat and see if oh, he can top the yeah. lot. Yeah, sensational driver in his day. Reese, the old man, or the grandfather of of uh, young Coop. But uh, another family's been in the sport for 100 years. And, uh, you know, not too much they haven't done. And they even run the Baja in America, which is, you know, a great achievement. 1087, Dean McGinley in the Tatum. The class 10s are having a really good yeah. uh, battle. I noticed Pup was walking around not in his uh, race suit before. What happened to. Yeah, we went down there last go? night to hear all about it. That he, he had a rear main seal let go. Uh, and then uh, just before the finish, he lost a bit of oil pressure. So he went back and assessed and um, played around with a few things and just left it the safer option to leave the engine in one piece rather than two or three. So, um, yeah, he's out, unfortunately. But the Class 10s are all together, having a good race. Uh, it's a great class, really competitive, fast enough, so they'll be having a ball out there. Class 10 yeah. buggies, which are up to two and a half litre capacity, normal, uh, normally aspirated, so... Uh, yeah, control class, but a uh, great class, and uh, yeah. there's there's five or six of them that are just um, quite close together. Isn't the Bowie car, we... I think, is leading. Yeah, that's, I was about to say, it's funny how we've got no 1300s out here now. One 1650, and... Um, it didn't start, I believe, the 201? 202. 202. 202. They started this morning. Did they? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, At position 33. Yep. But there's not many of those smaller cars now. No. Every other uh, class is well supported. The pros, the pro lights. The, there's no uh, class eights here. No. And there's only one class seven. So some of those classes have, have uh, dwindled a little bit over the years. They're good to build class eight back up again. I love class eight. We're back to some live footage with the yeah. uh, the Mason wow. two-wheel drive. Well, with Boat Robinson. A bit of action out the back now. That's the Bentley car, 1018. So we'll, uh, when you jump on board with Bo Robinson here, you can hear that Gurgan's big block. So we might just let you listen in and have a, have a listen Take to that. Take it home. Take it home, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Jump on board. Seven litre of a Gurgan. I tell you what, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> relaxed watching it from here. <laughs> that is, that is right. I think people will be saying from home, can we listen to that all day? Yeah, yeah, check the house. Yeah, yeah. Stop talking, you blokes. We just want to listen to that seven liter Dugan. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's just, phenomenal. Uh, that's great it? footage. That's just taking you right where, he, right in the heat of the action. There, couldn't get better spot to listen than that. Mason, obviously worked. limited service out in the middle of nowhere. They're right out in the back of the desert, probably. About two thirds of the way coming back in, I haven't got the rally He's safe. Been gone the for thirty minutes and they were doing about needs. forty, so he'd only be ten minutes or so away. Aaron. Yeah, so 
we're just starting to... By the time we can see what we're looking at, the cars will be back and they'll dust us all in again. We're just starting to clear in the infield now. But that, uh, yeah, that'll change when that uh, trophy truck comes around, that Mason trophy truck, and dust, dust us out again on the infield. I expect him to be back here in the next 10 minutes or so. Drones flying around out the back, or cameras, drones on board, everything you could want. We've got the 929, Brett Plant, the single seat Jim Cove. Just can't quite get the momentum to get up on top of those sandy whoops, but it's still, it's still progressing nice. He had a few issues yesterday, but he's back out there again. Like an older style 2000 series Jimco, mid mount, six litre. One up on his own. It's about your age too, I think. Brett? Oh, I think he's a little bit, he's better looking, a little bit he's, younger. He's still out there doing it and you're up here talking. Talking about it, yeah. Unfortunately, it happens to all of us at some stage. Terrific footage. You see the whoopie doos in the sand. Look at the serenity, though. Look at the backdrop and the sky and the yeah. and the crops and the the, the crop the fields desert. on the left. Yep. And the desert on the right. Look at that. Look at that. There it is. The sun. Yep. Look at that. That's and great it. shots. The truck coming. That's oh, four seven seven. Jamie Henderson. From Jamie Henson, Ethan Henderson in the Chev. So look at that there, look at that truck. That is a trophy truck and it, it's Look at it, just up, down, up, down, sky ground, sky ground. But remember too, Lee. This is only—they're not quite halfway yet. This is only lap three of, of a six-lap race of 77 kilometres, which is round about for the uh, Americans about 50 odd miles a lap. At least they've got the opportunity out the back in the sand, as we can see. There's, uh, that's your best opportunity this morning to really catch up on the back of the car in front and put a pass on because once you get out in these roads and these dusty roads it's just you're just going to see nothing the 11 kevin marston amber egan and callum marston in a homemade says here homemade buggy built it himself good on him it was a nice looking car too We can just see in the distance the uh, just cleared enough. So it shouldn't be long. We should be able to see that dust trail coming along that tree line of Bo. Robinson in the truck, Shane Hutt. And we've got to remember just in behind Bo, you know, we've got Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman, Mark Burrows, Dale Martin, Stuart Chapman, Simon Tucker. They're all in there quite close. We know they left the 30 second interval, so we'll get a bit of a gap get a bit of a read on the gap as they, they come through the finish line in front of us here while we can see them. I don't reckon it'll be too far until we see both no, we'll, sides. Because... Well, it'll take generally about five minutes from when we can see them over in that uh, at 10 o'clock there and, and that long straight in the distance. Yeah, um, if you look straight out past the uh, red and black banner, there's straight in that group of trees like a creek drop into a creek and you're running along a dry creek and then you turn out and then it's like six or seven k of just um, straight line to the board little yeah. chicane but foot to the board little chicane halfway but that's you're on the home stretch darren vandy 
in that class five. Can't wait to see the uh, footage of the uh, car 701, Heath Whedon, travelling through. <laughs> He's travelling through these whoops. And I'm in, hurting already. In what we call our production four-wheel drive. For the uninitiated, it's a um, little bit of suspension work, a little bit of engine work. but uh, you Basically know, a standard off-the-shelf four-wheel drive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, most of the suspension is in their vertebrae, in their back. Yep. I know that. <laughs> Four, is that, two, is that two? why you bent over yeah. a lot? Yeah. Stephen Von Peen on screen there. Ooh. The Micklefab Raptor. Stephen Von Peen and Steve Bilby. Another Australian built truck. Yeah, Gavin Mickle up in Mildura. Nice size truck, as we were saying yesterday. Yeah, they're Sandy. not a bad they're size, just... are they? Yep. Not the size of Bose, gee whiz. I mean, Bose is obviously handling the desert better, isn't it? <laughs> However, they, they're in a different class. Bose is 7 litre, and uh, yep. this one's a 6 litre in class 4. As soon as they go anything over a 6 litre, they drop into that class 11 category. Which is a new class new, for the uninitiated. Class, it is. We're always six litre maximum here in Australia, but um, now, opened it out. now we've opened it out to another class, class what we call class 11. So the cars are start with a one, Ooh. or double one. We've got the 44. And he is closely followed. The Razorback. Who's right behind him? Someone's right up behind him. Oh, yeah. I think he's just passed someone you'll find because... Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's uh, Monty. Mott. That's, that's Marty. Marty. That's yeah. another That's Mickle another Fab. Mickle yep. Fab. That's old uh, Christian Mingay truck. Oh, yep, yep. So. But to see the Pattersons in the pro buggy, they've had some issues, and um, you could see it was... I think they just probably put the path on looking at that. Uh, trying to make up a bit of time. And jo Jordan Patterson and Perry Compton in the Razorback, another buggy Australian-built chassis. Got a lot of Australian-built cars out there, which is good. good mix yes. with the USA builds. Well, Jordan did take off after uh, 30 seconds after Darren Mott yesterday. So that makes uh, it's this sorry this morning. So um, yeah, that makes sense. He's caught the 30 seconds up and he's uh, and he's got around him, but it's taken him a while. He's you know the more than halfway around. Well, it's the only opportunity that we discussed with Sandy earlier. Until this wind picks up, you've literally you're sort of stuck you, where you are. You, Out in the desert, they've got a, if they're right up there, clack them and they hit that sand and there's yep. not as much dust. Yep. Um, they can probably get close enough to pass. Because otherwise, if you try to put a pass on in that, that's a big risk. Yeah. That's a really big risk to try and put a move on, on the dusty roads or when you can't see. So that's they'll be pushing really hard at where we can look on the screen to try and get close enough to hit the rally safe, push the pass and uh, make a move. Tell you what, we can actually see now. We can Won't actually be... see... Uh... I don't know for how long, yeah. but... Uh... Yeah. And I would imagine we're only five minutes or so, so of seeing Bo, surely. I don't... It would be any minute now. If we look if you look yeah. straight over the top of that, for those that are here, over that red and black banner... The finished banner. The yeah. finished banner, yeah. Stone the banner. beautifully made banner, that is. Look at it. Forsman's still getting beaten up in the desert. Here we go. We're back on board here. What we might try and do, we might try and pick up Bo when he gets on this straight, coming back in, and really see it stretch its legs. See, uh... If that's come back online, it means he's getting close. Can't see the dust line in the distance yet, but he can't be too far away because he's been gone nearly 40 minutes. Yeah. Looks like he's in that creek area he now, is. doesn't it? Yeah. He's in that creek area. That's a big car to throw amongst the trees there. These trucks aren't designed to go through the tight tree stuff, but it's designed for the desert. But look at Barry, he's just... Smooth driving style, comfortable, making it look easy. Yeah, so you don't want to smack one of those eucalyptus because uh, they don't move. 
So there's the creek. He's just dropped in the creek now. Come out around the farmhouse. Yep. He's obviously uh, right on the edge of reception out there, I would imagine. Yeah, that's just drop. You drop in that creek down the gully, the reception drops out. But as soon as I tip him, there we go. As soon as he turns back onto that road, it'll jump on. might try when he turns on to the big stroke coming to the fish you might jump on board seven litre Dugan at about seven thousand reds I'd say American built vehicle engine the whole lot Oh, it's got to have an Elvin six-speed in it, wouldn't it, Lee? Oh, I'm not... he's, he is literally on that in straight on the way back in now. Because... Here we go. I'm just going to bring up here. We should see the dust line in the distance any minute. From our vantage point, we look at about 10 o'clock. Right over in the distance, it, uh, there's a tree line. Oh, yeah, there's its dust right above the finish line. Yep, there it comes. Slow up here, but the speed's more. For this, if you're wondering where the gear stick is, there isn't one. It's a paddle, paddle shift in shift, this car. Yeah. Yeah. So the two, it's got two levers behind the steering wheel. Six speed, isn't it? Six speed. Yep. Hardy, look at that. Hardy's Hi, Shane. How you going, mate? <laughs> he, he knows. He knows we're watching. Someone just told him, so he's just cleaned the camera for us. <laughs> You just tap by look and said you're live on camera, step it up. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Bo needs to step it up, mate? <laughs> Been that screaming in your ear all day. Oh. I tell you what, it's gonna, it's gonna it's impressive, it's gonna be an impressive at think. It'd be very hard to beat a fink. Still no, we still can't quite see the dust line in the distance. It won't be long. Hold hands. That's always nice. Bit of moment, bit it's, of always, moment out there. It's, yeah. it's always best that the driver can see before you, being the navigator. Is he jumping on that road right now? Oh, right. no, yeah, he is on the road on the way back in. I just can't get his speed up here. 200 plus. Yeah. Andy Brown's still going, Clayton Chapman's still going, Dale Martin's still going. Uh, 1065, car one, car 23, Bowie. Is one it, car still motoring around there. It is. Both just gone through the chicane, so here we yep. go. There's the dust now. Yeah. The first and the last car on your screen. Yep. Roland Paul Chow is also out again today. Jeez, we're having a good day. So you can see the dust line now, folks. If you look at that 10 o'clock right over against the trees in the distance. There it goes. We'll let you have a listen. And now we've just picked it up on yeah. the live stream. Coming back in, this is another new camera. So this is where you turn back in before you turn into the uh, back onto the prologue track. Which is back in at... Um... We'll see him just down there. At, uh, That's a this great shot, isn't right it? Right-hander. Here he is. You can see if you look to your left, here he, through the gate, into the back into the property. They've got a fair gap because I can't, still can't see Andy in, in the distance, but Andy's still coming down that back straight now, so we should still be able to see Andy coming in behind. behind him. This is that seven litre.
We're about to get dusted in again, blokes. Yeah, I know, right? Hey. We just we can just see, and now we're, it's all about to change. Another new shot for today. I think we've got four or five cameras out there. Yeah. A couple of drones. Yeah. Still can't. He's opened up a gap now, though. I'll tell you what, the tractor will want to get out of the way because we've got a tractor that's clear in the start line over here, and I hope he's out of the way before Bo comes yeah, over. Because he's throwing a heap of tyres and he's trying to do a bit of a clean up, but. Uh, Hopefully he's aware that he's going to have uh, seven litres of Mason up his clacker. Up his clacker pretty quick. <laughs> We've got our second car. Andy's on his way back in as well. Yeah, I said to Andy, that new fluorescent amber light on the front very very stands out. So he's turned it back on this morning. We can pick it. It's him. So that's our second car. The 1142 Illumicraft all-wheel drive. Yeah, there it is down that straight. Bo's on his second switchback. So looking at that, I reckon Bo's open to 30 or 40 seconds yeah, up on Andy around gap. that. Yep. I'll get a bit of a gap. Clayton Chapman's also on the way back in. We should see him round that corner into the uh, stadium area any second too. He's just at the end of his thing. Then uh, we've got um, Dale Martin still motoring along nicely. He's on the big long straight at the back there. And also Mark Burrows has just cleared out onto the open, open uh, long straight. So our top half a dozen cars, bar Danny Brown, our first car. Haven't really changed, have they? Yeah, if you've ju changed. just there jumping are, online, we, if you just jumped on, Danny Brown, our leader this morning, has dropped out this morning, about the 10 kilometre mark. Look over behind you, folks. You can see the dust of Bo Robbo. We'll stop talking, I think, and we'll just... Yeah, uh, we'll have a feel of this. And we'll just get entertained. <laughs> I was going to say, by... listen, but you can feel it. Here it comes. The last filling of my teeth is about to uh, fall out, I think, with the vibrations of this thing. But anyway, listen to this thing. Did you have me? Clearly no dramas. I'll get this one. Lap two, so... As we just two laps this morning of a service break and then two more laps, so usually a half hour service break in the middle. He's literally just clicked over halfway of the event, so three laps down and now three um, to go. I got three different spots. I'll get them the same um, spot along the back here. We've got it down the bottom tree line next to the glistering lake wells down there. We'll just refresh the times. We might be able to get a lap time. So 30 seconds is about halfway down that straight along Lake Well. So it's about 30 where Andy is. It's only, he's probably only opened up about 30 seconds on Andy Brown here. Yeah, here's Andy Brown so now. He's got yeah, plenty of pace. 46 minutes and 25 seconds flat for, for Bo. So he's only probably pulled another, not long, probably only another 20 seconds on Andy. Yeah, we're talking about how quick Bo's yesterday, going. But... Yesterday's laps were 42 minutes. So... Bo's actually uh, a couple of minutes down on yesterday's laps, but remember, we've got a little corrected time in there. Don't forget. Yeah. See, Andy's about to wave at Bo. Yeah, he can see that he's just, uh, you know, about uh, 30 or 40 seconds in front of him. Because these cars were only about five or six seconds apart this morning, so it's, gonna, it's very close on, on time as well. going to come thick and fast now. It won't be long until we won't be able to see anything again. Yeah, here's the Clayton Chapman car. He's got plenty of pace too. Look at that thing. It was wheel standing off the jump. Well, if you want to know, uh, Bo Robbo, 46 and 25. Andy Brown, 46, 50. So there you go. About 25, 25 seconds. seconds. That's, you would be close. That's nothing. No. That just shows you the pace of the Illumicraft. All-wheel drive. Yeah, I'm all I tell you what, uh, Clayton Chapman had plenty of pace on too. 
So we can see the Burroughs car come in the view. Should be closely followed by the five of Dale Martin in the gym coat. There's Andy in the infield. That car's just working beautifully, isn't it? First race in Australia for this car. And purchased it and um, had a quick little race over in Mexico with it to a bit of a shakedown, brought it back here and then only got here about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, and then brought it here. And so far, it's ticking all the boxes. Wow. Did Mark Burrows go through? Yeah, no, he's next. Oh, did he go through? Is he next? Well, Dale Martin was behind Mark Burrows, so Dale Martin's past Mark Burrows, hasn't he? I'll tell you in a second. I don't really, well, I've got a computer here, but the internet's yeah. quite slow. It's just, uh, so. it's got a bit dusty again. The breeze, it's just come up. Notice the flags are just flying now, which is great. So the wind's come up a little bit, but uh, it needs to come up a lot more. But at least it's not totally dead to what it was earlier. Maybe we miss Mark coming through. But they'll certainly come through in car five. Mark on screen. I thought Mark was following me. Mark took off in front of him this morning, 30 yeah. seconds. Maybe we did miss him. Well, we should see him in the infield. Now, here he is now, round to the finish line. Yeah, they were right. OK, so Dale's passed Mark yep. and uh, probably picked up another minute on him. Sorry for that one, folks, but we did miss that one. But at the 21, the Monk. That's still strong, though, you know, but uh, Mark's uh, probably assessed the situation and think, well, you know, this is a good pace for me. Yeah, Dale's probably put the move on out the back in the sandy area. Definitely picked up at least a minute because here's Dale in the infield now. And He's got, got plenty of pace. We've also got Bowie coming in. Car 128 coming in. I forget. So after Dale, it was the 17 of Stuart Seven Chapman. And Simon Tucker and then uh, Bowie. So there should be two more cars in front of, in front of him. Showing car 128, or car 110, or car 2, 65, or car 3, and a big long back straight out. That's Matthew Burrows. More live in car footage of the Mason Trophy truck. Folks, while you're standing around here, right behind us is Ultimate Helicopters. You can get out there, follow the cars out, see them without dust up there. So it's probably the perfect time to go and jump in and grab a flight. They're directly behind us here up at the commentary box. As Simon um, Tucker in 110 goes through, and uh, I don't know whether he's past Stuart Chapman, car 17, but... Um, Two of Chapman seem to have disappeared as 128 comes through. And, uh, I think Matty Burrows is next on line out there. Right, well, we're, yeah. we're looking for Stephen Graham and um, Craig Barnett. Gee, that was the Bose car out there. Hasn't lifted for about a minute. Bowie around the last corner, about to finish his first lap for section two of the steel at ARB Big Desert 480, day two. First round of the championship. A 10 car right up, up a two and a half litre 
normally aspirated and he's, he is certainly well in the top 10. We've lost us, uh, car 17, Stuart Chapman. Yeah, um, we've got uh, Matty Burrows is about not, car, not far off the finish line. Craig Barnett's not far off the finish line. And 11.61, that's the western entry. They're on their way back in along the high speed section. 10.87, Sibo is just coming through the creek bed now. Three, five, ten, eighteen, still moving. Six, two, seven, still moving. This is sort of in order where they're placed on the track. Nine, two, nine, six, oh, seven. So we've still got a fair few cars circulating. By the looks of what I can see on today, we've had Danny Brown out and uh, maybe Roland Polchow. Danny Brown is the boys have actually just gone past Danny. Where Danny broke down, which is about a quarter of the way around the track. And uh, at this stage, well, uh, the Stuart Chapman car 17 is missing. Yeah, I can't try and have a look at to see where that is. There's a lot of congestion in one part of the track. It looks like the middle of the desert. They're probably all uh, idling along behind each other, hating each other, <laughs> hating themselves. Tell you who's got clean out the air out there by the looks of it. Clayton Chapman's fair way back from Andy, and, um, and I reckon there's probably three or so minutes solid between them and, and the Burroughs car. So, well, remember Dale Martin's past Burroughs, so Dale Martin would be in clean air too. Car number five. Oh, sorry, that is that's what I'm looking at. Yep. I don't know why. So that, yeah, that's so heavy, uh, heavy. So that's his, he is in really clean air. Clean air, yeah. You have a look at there. You've got. Um, Dale Martin's got probably, I'm going to say, three or four minutes of clean air in front of him, really. Oh, he would be using that up. And he probably only needs to catch up there. Uh, Matty Burrows into the finish line. They are both the Burrows entries safely over the finish line for their... Well, that's assistant. interesting. Uh, Trevor Chandler has um, dropped back. Did Craig Bar Barnett Barnett's, go through? Barnett's next. Right. Uh, he should be really. And the Western be car, the he's, Western he's car coming is in as due. well. Yep, they're due. We've got a few cars. Sibos out on that fast stretch on the way back in, and car four one two, car six three fives on that fast stretch on the way back in. Ten eighteen six two seven six zero oh, seven. They're all basically coming out of the desert and on that on that leg back in. They are Matty Burrows. There's the Barnett car. Yep, car 68, that's still strong. Doesn't even look like it got dust in Well, he took off, he took off um, a minute in front of Matthew Burrows. So uh, he's had a little issue, or, or Matthew Burrows is on a charge because yeah. uh, Craig Barnett in 68 took off at 11th. Matty Burrows took off at uh, 13th, which is a minute. And, and he's probably Westons. a minute in front of him, so... And, and also Chris Weston, who's coming around now. So Cooper Weston. Today. Sorry, yeah, Cooper's, Cooper's steering today. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he should be next. I think we'll see him come around on our left any minute. So it might even be Dean McGinley coming around into the stadium off that fast section and Sibo. like Sibo actually it's just entered the stadium over on our far left the breeze seems to have picked up a little bit mate yeah uh, the flags are flying they, they which... did say 15 to 20 kilometres which is about the speed of the winds yesterday we could have done without it at the start <laughs> at the start this morning but at least it's come up Sandy yeah. and it's come up the same direction as a, a good, good timing also there's no wind in here, a bit of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, here you go, Cooper's coming around to the finish 
right now. That's good to see. Um, a lot of experience. Cooper he's probably Weston getting yelled at him from the passenger seat in this car right now, I'd imagine. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, still strong in the rush buggy. Nicky Pound, Thompson shod rush buggy. So he took off behind Matthew Burrows. He's dropped a little bit, but he's um, still travelling very well. Gee, that Barnett car sounds strong. Yes, it does. <laughs> Did we miss Chandler, Trev? Yes, uh, Trevor Chandler's gone missing. I believe was saying that he was speaking to him this morning and he had issues of it stalling and brake issues and all yesterday, so... There's Bo. We're back on board with Bo here for a second now. He is right out on the edge of the desert, so he's probably... When you see him slow down, he's going to turn into, into the desert's edge. He's around about a third of the way in the track. Here's uh, Dean McGinley in car 1087. He's fairly consistent too, isn't he? He is. He left 30 seconds behind Chris, uh, young Cooper Weston, so he's dropped gap, a man. little bit. Just trying to reload my timing up here, but the timing's not reloading for some reason, so... Sibbo. Car. Peter Simpson in 412, safely. Dee's watching on through from over in the HQ there. Tell you what, there's been a phenomenal amount of energy going into this event this year, hasn't it? Well, every year, but it just gets bigger, 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 bigger every, every year, doesn't it? Year. And I had the Rainbow Rises, the guys from the Rainbow Rises before come up and just said, you know, give us a, give us a bit of feedback at the end of the event. Oh. Let us know what we need to do. I'm thinking, well, the feedback is know. good, good, good. Yeah. Terrific. Um, every year I've come here and uh, it's certainly come a long way. The pits are sensational. The, the viewing area, the mound down here and uh, start, finish and a few trees removed. And um, it's just uh, set up fantastic. No idea why I can't get timing up here, but... I'd love to give you guys a rundown. Here we go. We've finally got a refresh on some timing, folks. So I'll give you, just run you through them. Obviously, we heard earlier on that uh, Bo Robbo came in with a 46.25. And this isn't overall. This is today, just today's laps because uh, that's all I've got in front of me. But Bo Robbo, 46.25. Blake Chappie, 46.24. So he had one second faster than Bo out there today. Andy Brown, 25 seconds behind Bo with a 46.50. Dale Martin, 47.48. Uh, Robert Plant. Robert Plant with a 49.07. Steve Graham with a 49.17. Mark Burrows, 49.32. Simon Tucker, 49.42. Uh, car 3, which is the second of the Burroughs M2s, Matty, uh, 50 minutes and 58 seconds. Craig Barnett, 52.44. Chris Weston and Cooper Weston in the 1161 car, uh, 53.01. I'm just going through what I can see in front of me. We've got uh, Dean McGinley in that little class 10, 53.34. Sibbo, 53.57. Jackson Evans, 54.41. We must have just gone past while I was calling all that mess out. Yes, he did. Jackson Evans, 6.35. And uh, also Sam Bentley in 10.18. And they just did him by uh, about about five seconds, six, seven seconds. So he, uh, Sam came through in a 54.34. So 
Good to see Jackson Evans back out after yesterday. Is he remember he? Uh, yeah, the bolt came. The out bolt the... come out. And the front wheel, uh, front left hand wheel was just a uh, couple of k's from the finish line. I'm scared to refresh my computer because I don't want it to freeze up. <laughs> nine two nine. The plan entry. Bit it's nose down long, off the uh, off the jump, but safely through the completion of lap one this morning. And he's picked up a bit of time because... Uh, Gee, uh, 53.02. So he's jumped he's jumped faster than Jackson, Sam, Sibbo and Dean. There you are. He's picked and up he's four. also passed, I reckon he's passed uh, four cars out there because there's four cars um, in front of him that haven't come through yet. See what happens when you don't have a navigator going up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in a single seat of uh, that plant entry. on board with your, with your number one boy. It looks like he was in a bit of dust by Robbo out there. Well, we'd be in the vicinity of trying to uh, catching some of the tail enders now, I'd say. So, uh, you know, he's uh, there's no doubt that he'd be catching dust at some stage towards the end of this uh, second lap. I think he's... Um He's got from the, from the rally safe, it looks like. Oh no, there he is. He's, uh, the times are. Well, the only dust that I can see, if it's if I'm. The, I mean, these guys are out in the desert. These first first five cars are literally in the heart of the desert right now. Uh, you've got Bo Robbo, Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman, Dale Martin, Mark Burrows, and Tucker in six. Six spot. That's quite a fast little car. Um, oh yeah, that Tucker entry. Yeah, that, that does then, some um, across. That it's one, a two, eight, and then Bowie. But that first five cars are in the heart of the desert, and I don't know. But if you have a look, the Rally Safe is. Um, yep, the uh, Rally Safe shows us that I don't know even know if Andy Brown hasn't gone around, but you can see on your screen folks so on the top left hand side of your screen you'll see 1142 and car 15 at triple one three they're our race leaders all on the bottom right hand side of our screen um, is where the headquarters is where race start and finish is that section those guys on the on that that um, top left hand corner of the screen that's actually the heart of the desert. You'll see the green mapping on the left there. That's running along the edge of the desert. They're in and out of a couple of bits of farming property, but that's that's pretty much there. You see, car 21. He's at the start edge, start side of the desert. So he's got that rough, sandy section. He's got about 30 k's in total of that. My body's aching just oh, watching yeah, these no, cars tell you what. go through these sections, Sandy. I've broken my back a few times. <laughs> but, gee, I'm glad I'm not out there in the, the old Class 7 I had. <laughs> uh, haven't seen any footage of our uh, 701 Heath Whedon yet. No, but, uh, and I can't even see him on the screen right this second. Oh, yeah, he's still moving. Still moving. 10.54 seems to be the last car, and I'm hoping they're aware, because I can guarantee Bo... Or these top few cars, before they get to the end of the desert, I would imagine that these guys are going to catch them. Car 11 yep. over the finish line. Kevin Marsden. Where are we? We must be halfway through or so. And it looks like Andy's just passed Bo out there. Yeah? He has. Well, it t sometimes it, it does I, I it say that, there. but I it get does caught every time. I, I do, get caught I do every get time. caught out of that. I'm not. It yep. might be corrected, but uh, sometimes you do see that see that difference. Wouldn't expect that to happen. Andy's got plenty of pace, but he was he, he was about a minute behind him. So uh, Bo, you'd you'd expect it have to be at zero speed for Andy to get around him. Yeah. And there's a reason, like, they uh, they were allowed to go through that control zone 
at anywhere from, you know, they had to keep moving. They weren't allowed to stop in the control zone. Right. Uh, but they were allowed a max of 80k an hour. I believe penalty for that is exclusion if they break those rules. Right. So they were they were very strict on that. It was part of a late imposed um, change. Had, had an issue, it? yeah, late, uh, late in the day on Friday after re- reconnaissance. And uh, what's but that? that's all right. We've dealt with it well. And um, yeah. but they can use that to their advantage a little bit. You know, if they if they come into that. We talked about this this morning. If they came into that section and they're right up the cracker of somebody, and you sit at sit at forty k an hour, and the guy in front of you is doing eighty, guess what? You get a few minutes there of um, of dust free run out after coming out of that control zone. Yeah, that, so you uh, can play those play that a little bit if you to your advantage if you could. Yeah. So for the people just tuning in today, we've got a seventy seven kilometre track, but at the thirty two odd kilometre mark, there's a five kilometre what we call transport stage where uh, the drivers know it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a massive sign there saying right right here 80 kilometers max for the next 5k and then there's a sign at the end of it which uh, says that they can go back at race speed so there's there's a control zone which are not allowed to do any more than 80 kilometers an hour Chase ball watching at home is uh, telling us that Andy's passed Bo, but yeah, we're showing showing that. But uh, I'm not going to say I'm not going to confirm that until we literally see it because once again it does look like it, doesn't it? As Jordan Patterson goes through in car 44. Unless uh, unless Bo's having an issue, but it's definitely showing that Bo's stopped out there, or at least. Well, the in-car knew, footage that we just saw, it looks yeah, like it he was still on it. <laughs> a long way from stop. Sure they can cut back to the in-car there if uh, if they get a chance. Our producer in the van, working working his fingers are working the magic today <laughs> between about 10 cameras we've got going on. Yeah. Oh, they're still moving there by the looks of it. They've, they've just jumped up on the rally stage. So we've got, from what we can tell, it may be Andy Brown in front of Bo. We've got around him. Then we've got Clayton Chapman. Uh, well, he's got plenty of pace too. Yeah, well, he's also got a bit of clear air in front of him. Then car five, which is the Martin entry. He's got even clearer Dale air. Dale and AJ, then um, Mark Burrows. Should have coming into the stadium Darren Vandy. He should be close to us there on the screen. It's good to see uh, the winds come up. It's, it's, a, it's a lot stronger now, and we can actually see the infield and the start line, which is good with a bit of traffic out there. Car 611 on their way back in. Forsman entry 202 on their way back in. 651, 633, all on that fast section. Chris Land on his way back in. We're watching car 422 just across the finish line in front of us. The Mickle Fab entry. Hey, what Jordan Patterson's doing doing well. And here's a middle car. I don't think I saw another beam car out there. I think middle miss is the only one, isn't it? Yeah, car number two, David. Correct me if I'm wrong. Alice um, middle miss. I see eleven twenty one still moving. Four thirty five, the mock entry still moving. Our Warwick vet six six eight one still moving. Six two one still moving. Seven oh one still moving. And 1054 seems to be the last car on track with about a three minute gap from Andy Brown. From what I can tell, Andy Brown is now our current race leader. Don't, don't uh, take that as a cemented, <laughs> cemented thing until we get some times up, etc. But from what we can see on Rally Safe, it looks like Andy Brown and Bo Robbo are right beside each other and it could just be that you know, Bo Robbo he said yesterday he made a couple of mistakes on a couple of corners so that only takes one mistake oh yeah and uh, a 30 second you know loop around and get yourself back up to race speed and the next guy's right next to you aren't they well it just showed you he lost 25 seconds Andy on him and uh, 30 second gap so there was nearly a minute 55 seconds between between them, which is not much track track time. So you don't need to have much of a hiccup to pick up 55 seconds. 
Stewie Chapman's down as a DNF in here. So I'm not too sure what happened to Stu, but that's in, uh, never good to see. Yeah, notice he didn't come through, car 17. We've got a couple of more Jennifer. times. We had, obviously, Sam Bentley come through about 54, 34. Jackson Evans, 54, 441. There's a King Chrome entry. Kevin Marsden, 55, 16. Justin Ryder, 55, 35. Stephen Von Peen and the Micklefab, 4.22 just before. 56.57. Lachlan Campbell, 57.02. Darren Franklin, 57.12. Dave Lohman, sorry, in that um, Ursa car, 57.17. Dave Middlemiss, 58.40. John Smith, 59.57. And... Uh, they're starting to get up near the hour now, they are. Sandy. The, uh, well, we've had our first one in an hour, which was that 477 entry. Uh, Roland Polchow is now a DNF, unfortunately, in his little Mazda. My fat fingers trying to work the computer as I do this. Jump back up, fellas. Just been down there for about 10, 15 minutes. In that 10, 15 minutes I was down there, the wind went from zero to Two. about 30k an hour, I reckon. Yeah. Certainly made a difference with the flags. They're certainly up right now, Lee. It's made a hell of a difference. Heading in the same direction as you per yesterday, uh, what I call a southerly. And the temperature dropped. It got mm. real cold, so that's why I just switched the heater on when I come in here. Thank you, mate. <laughs> We had the air conditioner going yesterday, and it's going to be the heater today, is it? It's I just switched it on, yeah, because it just the temperature dropped dramatically when south, I was out there. South southwest, about to. Oh, there you go, my internet's just dropped out again, but about a twenty k an hour south southwesterly. That's right. that's that's fine. That's good enough. Oh well, better we can than see the, the infill. Oh, but for sure, it's made a difference. A pity we didn't have this at the start, but anyway, it's better for better for us. It's better for the spectators and. Uh, for the Much drop. safer and better for the competitors. That's right. It uh, makes it it's it's an off-roader's best friend, isn't it? From what we can see here, that 10:54, the last car on track, these boys will have caught the top guys will have caught that dust, and they'll be trying to overtake. Well, they won't be trying. They will be overtaking that 10:54 car. That's when it gets difficult to, you know, use zig instead of zag. And, uh, and that was Simon Govins, the last car on track, then Heath Whedon, second last car on track. But it looks like Andy Brown is around them. It's still showing and him I'm, in front, is it? It, it does show Andy in front of um, Bo we, Robbo. We actually caught, caught a glimpse of it on the live stream. When you're on board with Bo, that's where... Um, we saw the dust. And, Andy, no, got, Andy actually unsure. got past. Uh, right, Andy got go. past, so whether Bo's having another downshift... Issue? Um, gearbox transmission issue? Uh, I'm not sure, but that... Uh, the, uh, I, didn't, I missed that. I was trying to look at the um, computer here, but Darren Vandy's a... coming in. They must be suffering a little issue too. They might even be just going for a splash of fuel. You never know. Gloves are off as he rolls... Roll, or taking his gloves off as he rolls back into the pit area. They might have something they need to fix. They might even be something as simple as flipping a tyre onto the back for a second spare, so... Our uh, famous Millicent Yowie. Darren Vanderwood heading back in. I-5-4 heading to the pits. Looks like Dean McGinley out in the uh, desert. Here's Look the at horseman. That. Look at the kick on that. 1650. 2 finishing that one this morning. Mm -hmm. Hard going out there for those fellas. We've got our first three, top three, are rounded up the last car on track. So they've just lapped the last car. And they'll be coming in. They're probably about another solid 10 or 12 minutes off getting in for their half-hour service break. But Heath Whedon, the boys are just about to go to Heath Whedon. And then there's a fair gap in front of those guys before they have to get to the next car. So they might not even um, get held up by those. I swear Sibo started with the front on his car, but look. <laughs> did he not? He did. He did. But he has the front's now. off the car, so... Must cost him a fortune in fiberglass. <laughs> see, Mo, every time you see it, it, it it's just getting uh, more naked, let's yeah. call it. You've got to race on here. 51 in, Daniel oh. Gibson. Closely followed Matty by 633. Matty Hummer, the race line entry. I'll 
just confirmed down there, fellas, it is a 45-minute service break. So for those oh, at home, right. uh, this is... So when you cross the finish line at the end of your section this morning after lap two, you, it's 45 minutes to the second. They'll probably have done that strategically to let the dust... Yes. There you so go. That, that all means that if you've got 45 minutes exactly until you take off for your second section, any time after that will go against your race time. So that's how that all operates. That's a good idea too, just uh, stretch it out a little bit to get the uh, some of the uh, slower cars, slower cars through. in and out of the way. Unlike Pines, even, you know, we run a reverse grid at Pines usually on the race day. That also is another way of working. We normally don't have the dust issue at Pines. No. I had the odd year where, the, where there's been a mud issue, but the dust issue at Pines doesn't really come into play like here and, some, and places like Gundy. But um, it's another way of dealing with dust Certainly issues. wasn't an issue at Hillston too last year, but that, uh, that could change <laughs> this year. Watching Darren Vandy rolling around. He's coming into his pit area over the back, so I don't know what's happened with him, but... The Class 2 of the Forsmans. So the Class 2 is obviously from uh, anything capped at 1650cc. They and the only everywhere. Class the 2. The only one, yeah. I was saying they used to be everywhere, but... Yep, we used to get 10, 12 of those, and now a lot of those guys put uh, went up to Class 10. But that, that always tells me back at Sea Lake in the late 70s and early 80s that you have about 100 Class 2 cars. Yep. And it's just, um, there's a lot sitting in sheds, but um, yeah, it's good to see, well, there's one out here, but it's good to see some few more get into the series and get out there, but, you know, times are tough and it's hard going in a Super 1650, 1600cc out there. Just watching in front of us, I see that... Um Matty Hummer has just rounded up Daniel Gibson. He got around him, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw line. over on the right, they, they pulled over as they went around that first corner and Gibbo did and let him pass, so that was good. Yeah, he's put the pass on. If somebody catches you, you do have to pull over. They're obviously faster than you, so they are. Mr. Land over the finish line, car 50. Sorry, 80. Uh, yeah, over the finish line. He's obviously cleared the... They had a bad miss, that vehicle, all weekend, so it looks like they've finally cleared it. It's sounding a lot better now. That's an older-style Jimco, very early days, uh, mid-mount, which is what we call the middle reverted, so the gearbox is behind the engine in the back of the car, not in front of it. Bit of breeze out there by the sound. Yeah, of well, we can actually see Just now. We can, out there, but. we can see everything that's going on, which is great. It just come out of nowhere. It just yeah. literally went from zero to this in, in the space of five, ten minutes. Which is a welcome relief, that's for sure, because uh, when it was dead still this morning at start time, <laughs> it, we just got dusted in totally. Looking at the uh, rally safe, guys, I can tell Clayton's... Clayton's uh, closing in the gap on our two front guys, Andy and Andy and uh, Bo Robbo. However, when you look there, remembering that Clayton actually did the fastest time out there last lap. I'm not too sure what the distance was on their starting times today overall. I'm too scared to refresh the computer. <laughs> well, Clay let Clayton, it do took thing. Off, Clayton took off four, so he was in the second group. So they're... they're coming out of the edge of the desert so we're about 10 minutes off seeing those leaders everybody in that top 10 is going to have to go around those slower cars of 1054 and, and 701 and i think 1121 looks like it's not moving which is trevor chandler he seems to be pulled over there yeah, he's been no. stopped there for a while for a while we uh so they've got now, by the looks of it, Andy, Bo, those front runners, they've got nearly a clear run all the way to the finish line. There's 626 and then Mott, the 435 entry of Mott on that fast run back in. So Brendan Hill and 611 in the side by side just through the finish line. And we should only really have, I know, the uh, that little 668 ones floating around in the stadium somewhere, or very close to. Yeah, it's just on our screen now, Sandy. 
Ross Newman. The Warwick vet. He does some racing, doesn't he? Tell you what. <laughs> Seems to pop up everywhere. Mr Mott is uh, hauling the mail down the back straight on the way back into the stadium. And then also 626 Vaughan Hogan. Hogan's heroes on their way back in. They will be... They might nearly be out of the way by the time the big boys came come through. It's going to be a lot easier from now with this wind picking up. It shouldn't be taking too long to get around. A lot harder it would have been, with obviously, with no breeze, but hopefully it shouldn't cost them any time. shouldn't be a problem, but it's, it's going to be tight up the front the way it's looking. Those top five or six, it's, you can throw a blanket over them at the moment. Even that blooming, uh, I'll tell you what, even that um, Simon Tucker's 110, gee, he's, he's been super impressive this weekend. He's only sitting at about 6th or 7th. Yep. Yeah, having a great run in the uh, Southern Cross Pro Light, car 110. Car three still moving, car 68, the Barnett entry, entry there about halfway around the track. Dean McGinley and Sibbo are just behind those guys, a little bit of a gap between them. But we've only got, we've got Roland Polchow out, Chappie, uh, Stu Chapman out in that single seater. Danny Brown, of course, our yeah, first Danny DNF Brown, this morning. That was unfortunate. Just goes to show he's won five prologues in a row, but doesn't take much to tip you out. There's uh, Trevor Chandler's out. One of the King Chrome entries I know. Eden Evans was out yesterday. She said they See, had the, the a other... bolt in their dri belt drive come snap. Ah. Mm. So that put them out early on. And we saw the other one um, break a spindle here up the Jackson finish line. Jackson Evans, who Jackson came Evans. through before. Is but he... he's still travelling really yeah, well. Yeah, he's doing quite well. He's... Um, He's, I think, eight or ninth. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just the, uh, the future. Those they're getting more productive, aren't they? Those Polaris's and more technology and faster and more suspension. And here he goes. Thousand cc's of fury. Oh, oh, something oh. broke off the front of it. Did you see that? I don't know what it was, but there was something <laughs> fell off the front of it. Yeah, nose dog. It landed. It's good that Ross is putting it on for the crowd at the finish jump. One more lap to go. The steal at ARB, Big Desert 480, fellas. What a weekend. First, the opener of the uh, 2024 championship. Yeah, Three more cracker does. rounds after this one, don't forget. Here we uh, head up to Hilston in New South Wales for round two. Gunda Windy in Queensland round three. And uh, concludes at the Pines Enduro in September down in uh, Millicent. We call it Sunny Millicent these days, yeah. don't we? Sunny <laughs> Millicent, after the last two the last years. Two sunny years Millicent, yeah, which is before that, it was wet, wet Millicent. Millicent. Yeah, it was under, it's, they've got really lucky the last two years there, so hopefully the year South Australia. continues. <coughs> Jordan's been pushing quite well in that 44 car, hasn't he? He's, he's obviously uh, had some issues throughout the weekend, but it still looked on that live stream footage. There. When he's moving, like he's was, doing quite well. Yeah, it's just those little annoying little gremlins, isn't it? Can slow you down uh, pretty quick. He's but. not far into the desert, so he's not. He's only on the start of the desert's edge. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer, Sandy. Looks like four, four, five. That's um, John Smith. Yeah, in that Nissan, Nissan powered Nissan looking. Class four, he seems to be stopped out there it's on the side of the track, about a third of the way around. It's going to be a race for attrition, that's for sure. Yeah, we know this time of the this time of the weekend, you know, the track. By now, I was saying last night, I camped out in the edge of the desert, the boys there, and uh, about this time of the weekend, three laps in, four laps in, that corner out there will be a hard base. What you started off on a real soft sand has turned into a Really hard base, um, which might even get some tyres, etc., going around there. 
Nice night out in the desert, wasn't it, mate? That was lovely. Couple Pe- of pina peaceful. coladas. Peaceful. Yeah. Had a couple of couple of young lads drive past. It wasn't peaceful where I slept last night. <laughs> That's all why I, I went out there so I, I could actually was, get a good sleep. All I heard was Dad re listening to the live stream, listening to himself again. <laughs> He's watching the replay of himself. Is that what happened, Glenn? Not, a, not, a, not at all. Lonnie's over the line. So the big boys are now on that fast straight on our far left on the way back in. It looks like Andy's well in front of Bo and Chappie is actually cap- catching, uh, cap- catching Bo as well. So Andy Brown, first car on track. Bo Robbo, Clayton Chapman. So Clayton looks like he's putting a couple of blinder laps. And then they've got a fair gap. Those front three are actually quite out, out fair way. In front of Dale Martin in the five and Mark Burrows. But still a long way to go. Isn't the view fantastic out here, fellas? Certainly is. We're just uh, we're high up here on top of the bank overlooking the infield, and uh, we can certainly see. It looks like there's a brown car. In the distance, it is indeed. I just, yeah, look, plenty just of having pace. a look here. The last car, one of the last cars on the track was Heath Whedon. Looks like a DNF. So, here we go on the screen, fellas. There's a Mr. Mott just came through. By the way, sorry, sorry, Lee. Uh, in a one hour thirteen minutes, it was the last car of the finish line. Looks like the look at that, uh, little, bat- look at that little battle. The middle miss car has just put a move on the. 477 truck. Yeah, the Willing truck. Look at that. Looks like it's getting a pounding that that truck, hey? It is. Moddy on the screen. He stepped up into a... I think he's still got his old truck, but he's... He does. Recently purchased the uh, Micklefab Raptor. Isn't it funny how, you you know, the the trucks are the pinnacle... These class fours, well, class fours taking a little back step with these class 11s and stuff coming into the sport now. So evolution, certainly have a bit different to the old Dats and 1600s. And oh. <laughs> don't get him, don't get him going, Sandy, please. <laughs> the ultimate engine, the L series. <laughs> see, the Bo, very heavy. Bo that, Robinson, just ever willing in the desert, there has entered the prologue arena. Not that far behind Andy Andy. Brown, but there's definitely been a pass put on. You can see on the screen now. With moves like that, Bo, get back on the track, mate. (laughs) We've got an issue here. Very slow. 626. Vaughan Hogan. I know. I think there's only one car left out after Vaughan. Yeah, he was just... Which was uh, the 1050... Gubbins 1054 car. That was the last one still motoring from what we could tell before. Still circulating. We haven't had any word, any DNF or anything on Trevor Chandler. I don't know what has happened to these folks out there today as far as breakdowns. But Yeah, if, you get, if you're on there and you've got word of your crew, any Send issues? them through. Lee yeah. Wells. No. Yeah. 1-800-HOTMAIL. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> dot, dot com. <laughs> yeah, send, if you want to come up and let us know, we can, um, if you've got... You know, friends and supporting you at home and wondering what happened to you, just let us know and we can um, update everyone for you. Or if you need to correct any of Lee's pronunciation yeah, of names. Yeah, I've already copped a fair bit of <laughs> feedback, don't worry. <laughs> Phone lit up like a Christmas tree yesterday. We've got to be on I can a hear a Dugan. Minute. Yeah, I can hear I can it. hear a Dugan. We're only a minute or so off. I can't hear Andy's car. It's coming well, down. That the is Andy's now. Andy's definitely out About in front. Rounding that last through the top gate and you plenty see of coming to your screen on the left there, folks. Any second. Well, About he's now. our leader. Race well. leader, Andy Brown. Wow. Eleven forty-two. Four-wheel, all-wheel jump. drive. The first all-wheel drive buggy in Australia. Yes. Oh, is it? Uh, He's it showing at its pace this weekend. He did really well in its test run over in the States, you were saying earlier, Lee. Yep. 
Yeah, it uh, to test it well, good enough to, for him to prep it up and stick it in the container. And it only arrived, you know, as Lee said, four or five weeks ago from the States. And here's Bo and uh, Shane. He's right off the pace. He might have a problem. Well, he's seen to have plenty of pace through yeah. the finish line. And he's, he's only about 30 seconds behind. Um, so the times would be very close overall now after those two laps because Andy was about 30 sec 25 to 30 seconds behind Bo after lap one of this morning's proceedings. But uh, now yeah, he's uh, Andy him. Brown got a 45-49. So it looks like Andy Brown's got the just done the fastest lap today. But look at this, Chappie oh, over Chappie the is. start He's finish line, and that gap has closed dramatically. So, Bo Robbo with a 47 27. Bo's literally, Bo has gone two minutes slower than Andy around there. So he's obviously had some form of drama. He did say yesterday his paddle shift paddle was shift, not downshift. downshifting, so it yeah. was labouring through the desert until I could get it to downshift. So. I heard that, so it they've wouldn't take come much. back in, mate. They're at idle over there, so they've obviously they're coming back in. They've obviously got an issue. He will not be happy about that whatsoever. But if they come in now, they might get a chance to get back out there. I oh, actually, sorry, they're on their blooming forty-five minute service break. Yeah, service what am I break there. Yep, yeah, there they are. There's Andy in the pits. in the pits. Yep. So forty-five. Look minute at us service on the ball commentator. Well, me. On the ball. Yeah, the end, of, end of lap two this morning. So they've completed four laps overall out of six. Closely, Chappie, there's the Chappie. Are they Chappie's, happy? Uh, he got a 46.24 and a 46.06, Chappie did. How's that for consistency oh, around a rough track that's obviously chopping out? And, yeah, He's belted another 20 seconds. 20 seconds. And difference. we're talking over 77 kilometres of Australia's best. I'm going to do the... Oh, do I really want to reset this? I mean, I'm not going to reset this. My computer doesn't like refreshing, so I don't want to upset it too much. But we should have some more. There was a bit of a gap between these guys and the next couple, which will, I think was... Um, Dale Martin is their next car. And, and the Burroughs entry. And Mark Burroughs. And then there's a fair gap. Uh, Tucker will be on that road on the way in. You should see then the we had Tucker and, uh, entry coming in on the far left in the dust. Bowie Graham. So Who's that now on the screen? No, that's uh, Burrows. Burrows who's Mark Burrows. On our hard left coming in. And Dale Martin also on our hard left. They're just uh, over beside us. Then we've got out in the desert oh, on the way, sorry, on the way back in after these next couple, we've got the 110, we've got 1065, which is Bowie. Uh, the Barnett entry has a lot of clean air in front of it. Between Bowie and the Barnett entry, has got to be three or four minutes. Then Cooper Weston and Chris Weston in the passenger seat. Uh, 1087, which is Dean McGinley and then and Sibbo. So there's a fair few still motoring around. From what I can tell, the last car through is a 626 entry, still motoring, 633. Those little golf carts must be struggling out in that rough stuff now. Well, here's uh, Dale. He's yeah, made up some Dale. time. Dale's car also number five. Made up a fair bit of time. I have no idea on overall times, folks, uh, and I don't want to refresh what I have here. I'll more than happy to tell you what I've got here, but I just don't want to I don't want to refresh it with the internet. It hasn't been the best. Dale in with a 47-46 in so that's fourth fastest for today. Remembering that this is sort of Dale's first real run in this car, isn't oh, exactly. it? Dale and AJ. Yep. They yep. had a few problems last year, they took it away, they rebuilt it, they changed motors, they put the little Ford the, the Ford, Ford Echo Boost in it, yep. twin turbo. They and, had the uh, Nissan in it prior to that, and that's, um, so that exploded here last year. So uh, they, they came out of a uh, Class 1 car, the 3.5 litre. 
correct. Well, they did run Craig's uh, ultimate car last year a couple of times whilst this one was being rebuilt. There you see it. And here's the Burroughs car, car 21 through the finish line. Mark Burroughs, the previous and Australian Burrows, champion. By eight. That's <laughs> phenomenal, isn't it? By eight. Eight championships. There's a bloke out there who's won nine. I know. <laughs> Shannon and Ian Wrench from Warnable. If you're listening in, good morning. We'll see you at the Hope next you're enjoying race, it. Shannon. Up at uh, Hilston. <laughs> there are little Forsman 202, our only 1650 entry this weekend. Class 2. <laughs> Here's me wanting to buy a little buggy. Go and have some fun, you know. <laughs> I think I might change my mind and end up in a big, bigger truck, but I want to go and buy something a little bit smaller so the family can start getting into it. My boy's nearly at the age where he needs to learn what to do. Okay. It's like a bit of dust in. Oh, it's great. These flags are up right now. There's plenty of yeah. breeze out there and, uh, you know, blowing the flies away and also the dust. It's a yeah. nice, clear view for us now from this uh, commentary tower. Gee, that, that... Yeah, I think there's someone... It looks like that. Is that the Forsman entry there on your screen? Can't quite looks see like it. He's, but... Looks like he's... Uh... But the fire's really gone struggling out to or... get going, isn't it? Oh, it's going that again. Sand is, that sand will be that fluffy on top, if, you, if that right. makes sense, you know. If you if you don't lose your momentum, you can quite easily... Oh, yeah, even get bogged. Yeah, like I said, the boys said yesterday they had to pull Heath out a couple of times, and that's well, that's a four-wheel drive, Class 7, Yeah. and he got bogged a couple of times yesterday. So the four-wheel drive, Class 7, gets bogged. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, whatever... It does look like um, it does look like he's uh, he's travelling again, but uh, he was stationary there for a bit. I'm going to say that was the uh, Forsman entry, the 202 car, because he is out on the desert there. We've got car three. Who was car three? That's car three. That's Matty Burrows. Matty Burrows. He's on the in fast the section on the way back in over on your far left. Then Barnett. So Matty Burroughs has got a really clear air right now. There's there's literally no one in front of him on that far section. Section. You've just got to use it up, don't you? Like you you, you get clear air, and you've just got to have a, a fair go and just make up some time because you never know when you catch somebody in front of you. You can just lose lots of time very quickly. Tucker's back in the arena, and also Bowie is back in the arena. So those two will be coming around any any second now to the finish line. Gee, it's turned out a quite a nice day out here, hasn't it? What I tell you, I must say, apart from this morning's race start with the lack of wind, the, the conditions have been pretty much perfect. Pretty much perfect for, you know, competitors. For sunburn? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're lucky up here in the, wind box, in the box. We don't have much wind apart from what comes out of our mouths. There you go. Simon Tucker rounds the last corner into his break. 45-minute break. Yeah, a good couple of laps in the Southern Gee, Cross. Gee, he's done well. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. That's yeah, got to be up there jump. with one of my uh, most right. impressive runs of the weekend so far. And then Bowie. Bowie's always... Always good to watch. He's doing his last run down to the last switchback before he comes back around to the finish line as well. So first of our ten cars too. Sandy. Bowie, yep. yep. Not sure who we're on board here with on the out of the desert, but it looks like um, Mr. Land out in the desert there. Car yeah, car 80, 80 the green uh, mean machine. They're doing quite well motoring around out there. Well, they're still going. It's, uh, it's a lot better than what uh, quite a few of, uh, are doing. Remembering so that's a fresh car for him this year. Yep. Take a bit of getting used to. Every car reacts differently. Hello, now who's that in? Who's there you go, Bowie the over car. the finish line. Well done.
Steve Graham and Ella in the passenger seat. From Griffith. A lot of competitors from Griffith here in central New South Wales. Southern Cross. Jeez, Southern yeah, Cross I'm, looks I'm good, super impressed, it? hey. I'm impressed by Look how that they've done this uh, weekend. No oil, no leaks, no done. It just looks like it hasn't even done it. I reckon if you went down and put your hand on the shock absorbers, they might <laughs> tell you a different story. <laughs> I don't know what shock, shock temps get out here to most of the on most of these cars, but um, some of the higher, hot higher hot up time. teams will check. Uh, they'll check tyre temperatures. They'll check uh, shock temperatures just to see how they're reacting and um, if they need to put any more valving in. At some stages, you know, sometimes when you go out fully loaded with fuel, you've got to dial a little bit more compression in, especially in the back end. Stop it! Stop it! Um, kicking back. Certainly. Got a little bit of quiet time in here. I think uh, the Barnett entry is one of the next ones in. Matty Burrows and the Barnett, and then uh, the Cougar Racing 68 car. We've got a fair gap, and Cooper Cooper Weston's just come out of the desert, out of the creek bed, and uh, onto the fast section on the way back in, followed by Dean McGinley, Craig Sibbo, the 635, and then Aaron Plant in the 929. So we've got a handful... There's another big bunch of cars from the middle of the desert on that uh, third quarter of the track right now. So we're going to have a little bit of fresh air. Where's Robert planned in car 128? Is he still circulating? He took off yeah, at yeah, 10 this morning. Yeah, he's at the start of the desert there. He, he took off after Steve Graham this morning, and I expect, you know... The, Pretty hard charger, Robert, so I expected him to be there somewhere. But He's up on the start of the desert there. Yeah, so he's lost a bit of... He's certainly lost a lot up of time. Up on the top left-hand corner of the screen. On the far left corner of the screen, you'll see uh, 202. That's the Forsman, little Forsman 1600 we saw struggling out there. But down on the bottom, bottom sort of right-hand side of the screen there, you'll see the Barnett 68 just about to come into the arena, into the finish line. Then we've got a, that, that long straight... With uh, Cooper Weston steering the rush truck on the way back in, they're still going quite nicely. This, I suppose, they're doing quite well overall, really. Um, there he is, Matty Burrows, last year's third outright in the championship in a class one, three and a half litre car. He's uh, he's took off at 13 this morning, and now he's down to about uh, what did we have through about uh, seven or eight. So he's picked up quite a bit. Yeah, the he next... had uh, Plant, Barnett, and Chandler in front of him between and Bowie Graham. Barnett's coming in behind him now. Barnett should be our next car somewhere. I can see someone's dust right here. Does look like the Barnett car. So they've got a couple of switchbacks before they get back to us. Don't forget, there's that big hole out there. We've had a couple of people hurt their backs in over the years. They put a little chicane in that now, just for a little bit of safety reasons. A lot of them have uh, out here. You've got different arrows. You've got different. You know, you've got a red arrow pointing the direction of the track. You've got dangers, dangers and cautions and precautions, triangles and circles out there. They all mean something different so that you've where the track's marked with uh, anything in particular that might catch you out. And a lot of these guys, uh, well, some of the bigger guys, we don't run that sort of stuff in, in, my, in, in a lot of the little cars, but some of the bigger guys will run a GPS out there now, which you're allowed to do, you weren't allowed to do back in the day. Here, uh, coming on the left-hand side of your screen, folks, Craig Barnett in the 68 Cougar entry, sir, finishing his second lap this morning. You know what's good about this too, mate? You won't have to wash your car. You just have to blow the dust <laughs> off, are you? <laughs> there was literally yeah, one little puddle. Crank up the air puddle. compressor with the nozzle and, uh, yeah. There was literally one little nozzle over... Uh, sorry, one little puddle over near the creek on the way around the pre-run on Friday, which I'm, I'm tipping has gone. So don't forget, you can come over, grump, jump, uh, see the people at Ultimate Helicopters behind us when you're going to get your lunch. Yep. Uh, of the ladies committee there at the uh, Rainbow Rises they've, uh, they've got everything up there everything 
as Hot far dogs. as food, coffee, and I think Lee steak Wells sandwiches. has had every one of them, one of everything. Yep, he's Sometimes tasted every one. Everything. Yep, yep. He's given me the uh, the insight on what to get a bit later on. Mr. Mott's still doing all right out there, isn't he? Yes. Look at that desert. We've also got uh, a raffle going for an ARB fridge, which if you jump onto, I think, the ARB, the still at ARB, Big Desert 480, Facebook pages as well. That'll give you links to everything. Is our Warwick vet still out in the desert? The wind's picked up quite, quite a bit out here, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Exactly the same direction as yesterday. What did you say? Southwest. Certainly yeah, southerly. It south southwest. And wind. it's uh, it's picked up a lot. Haven't been out there yet, but Lee said the temperatures um, dropped quite a bit. But still a bright sunny day here in uh, beautiful Rainbow in Western Victoria. Finally clear, clear air. But uh, we uh, we can see everything now, Looks which like is great. Dean McKinley maybe. Coming in on our far left as well, and Sibo will be Sibo's dust. You can see Sibo in the tree line over on our far left there, coming back in on the end of the uh, fast section. So we've got a little gap between Sibo and the Westerns in the rush truck. Check when the boys first came in on their, you know, Andy and uh, Bo came in for their break. So, got a couple more times here. So, not forgetting that the fastest lap out there was just done, well, the fastest second lap this morning was done by Andy Brown of 45 49 and uh, Craig Barnett over the line with a 50 minute 42 on his second lap his first lap was a 50 sorry a 50 minute 42 his first lap was a 52 44 matty burrows with a 49 52 on his second lap simon tucker with a 49 42 steve and ella graham with a 49 41 So, gee, that car, what is that car out there we're looking at? That's a side-by-side. -side. It's the uh, Evans, isn't that the King Chrome side-by-side -side entry? I think it Jackson. is. Jackson Evans. Is that heading home? Because he's due. He's... He, he's, he must be right ready to come out of the desert I would imagine because he was doing really well earlier oh yeah he was he was well but up. he seemed to have dropped back a little bit maybe he must be ready to really on the edge of the desert ready to pop out through that creek bed Weston and Dean McGinley and right in front of Dean, there he is. There's Dean. McGinley. Yep, there he is. Second of our class tens, I think, behind Bowie. Yes. So both from Griffith area in New South Wales. I think I can hear Sibbo. Tell you what, looking at just to, uh, only today, but there's two class tens in the top ten. Not bad. Not bad. It sounds like a truck to me. Sounds like Peter Sibson to Does me. Does sound like Peter Sibbo. But then again, uh, Chrissy no, uh, Cooper-Weston. Is, is, is it? Sibbo, yep. 
Cooper Weston's got to be in amongst his gaggle somewhere. Yeah, and well done, Sibo. Loves the race too, doesn't he? Like he was down to Portland, Portland. there the other week. I know D said, D said he, he says to D, I don't think I'll do the championship this year. I'll just uh, I'll just do one or two others. And then they sat down and he goes, oh, I'll do... I'll do Portland and I'll do Rainbow and I'll do. And she's like, mate. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> you've already you already reeled off about six events you want to do instead of following the championship. But here he is, round one. I'm sure he'll get the bug and, and go to the rest of the rounds as well. No doubt, it's it's always good incentive if you do all right in the first round, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that kind of alters the program a little bit. Sibo over with a 52-43 on his second lap. Can't get a summary. So next car should be Cooper Weston. As you said, can't get an overall summary up here. No bonnet on the Sibson car. It's uh, it's gone. Well, we should have some more rolling back in. There was a little bit of a gap, but I think we've got uh, Western should be one of the next cars. Although I'm looking at the out here, it looks like Western's actually stopped on the start of that fast straight. Um. We do have Sam Bentley on the way back in. We've got 929. I forget who's in 929. Was a plant entry, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, Brett Plant in the uh, Brett single Plant. seater. Uh, he's he, there. They should be just in the arena on our left. So. Two six on the screen now. Vaughan Hogan out in the desert. Looks like we've got Jackson Evans and 635 coming in the view and the King Chrome side by side. Certainly is. Still sounding and going very well. Closely followed by 929. Picked up a bit of time. Brett Plant. So Brett Plant's go, still travelling well. Um, no sign of Robert in 128. A bit of dust now. Out to my left, which is um, probably a kilometre prior to the finish line. Going to so go for a walk, but we've uh, we've got cameramen out here, there, and everywhere. We've got so many cameramen out there; it's hard to get them back in, so that we can go for a quick pit walk to see some of the action. I, I think do, Lee's down there too, just absorbing like of what's them, going on. So we've had six, three, five come in. Uh, Jackson Evans. Evans. Here's another one through the top gate. And it looks like Sam Bentley from here. It is. Sam Bentley and good drive by young Sam. 
car 1018. Yeah, it's still going really well. As you said, they're staying nice and clean, aren't they, Sandy, the vehicles? I did just get a scoop off our, uh, our man who's doing a pretty good job running the tech side of it. From the passenger seat of Bo Robbo's car, they did have a shifting issue. So it wouldn't, it go, wouldn't shift into second gear. So in the sand, they were stuck, stuck in third gear. Oh, right. So, okay. That explains... That explains why, why uh, and that's his, Andy... You know, they friend. said they, could, they were just lugging along in third gear instead of sitting up Second. on top and being able to... Yeah. So that happens. That same problem they struggled with yesterday. Still, he's still in the equation. Yeah. Definitely. Well in the equation. And because they went to a 40-inch tyre, obviously that's changed their gearing. Yes. A little as well. Yeah, well, that would uh, bring the gearing up, and the third gear would have been come up. So, yeah, you can see why it would have struggled through those uh, that uh, So we've got coming area. in, just so you, want, so you know, we've got coming in to the arena, 607, Jordan Patterson in 44, the 104 entry, that's the little Ursig. Motorsport buggy. Yep, the little honey badger. Honey badger. badger. Um, then we've got, it still looks like the westerns are stuck out there at the start of the long straight on the way back in. Um, we've got car... What is that? Car 610. Can't actually see that. Car 422, car 47. Oh, car 2, car 477. Those guys are all coming out of the desert now as well. Was that 627, Justin Ryder through the finish line? They're side by side. Welcome back, Lee. What have you found for us? Thanks, boys. Um, yeah, I just went down there to give a bit of a chop out to the the brown crew, um, yeah, all good, all smiles down there. A um, couple of new rear boots and just a little bit of a sticky throttle, that, which which has been fixed. So other than that, um, not a not a mark on it, not a leak on it. It's uh, it's doing it doing its job out there, and they're really happy. And um, yeah, all smiles. So all good down in that camp. Great to hear. That's a good initiation for that uh, all-wheel drive Lumacraft first up and uh, leading this event and uh, don't want to put the commentators moz on it but uh, it, it certainly it, it looks the part and uh, it's what I can see from where where I'm watching it's it's ticking all the boxes yeah, it's just built tough it's just a, it's an extraordinary you know, bit of gear that the boys of the Lumacraft have built um, four wheel drive obviously it's uh, and it's working well out of the box and it's just loving these conditions so it's, it's very rough at the back even in that um, but I think they were pretty excited to uh, go past the uh, the mason truck in the rough which has obviously had a few issues but um, hopefully they're sorting those out now and can get back out there yeah apparently it's got shifting issues it, uh, mm. it couldn't uh, downshift a second in the um, in the, the rough so well that explains it yeah that's that, that'd be very frustrating just seeing a couple of that are still stationary out there 6.51. Heath Whedon looks like he's on a trailer or something on the way back in or under tow. Trevor Chandler's under tow. The Western car still has not moved for a while, so I'm presuming they've done some something out there as well. got any outright times at all Sandy, i haven't or? got any outrights i can't bring them up here and i'm, I'm too afraid to re uh, reboot the computer because it's frozen on me a few times yeah apologies for that we um got a bit of technical stuff with the timing with the with the not updating for you but we'll get that to you as soon as we can Stu chapman's dnf we know danny brown was out early roland pearl chow heath whedon's out Trevor Chandler we see on the trailer on the way back in. Simon Govins, Govins in the 10.54. There's Jordan Patterson. 
been one of my, uh, I reckon, a bit of a standout. I know he's faced a few little issues, but he has been doing quite well when he's been going. Yeah, the 44 Razorback. It's, it looks good when it's going, but it's just had a couple of little issues throughout the day and yesterday. But when it's going, it looks they're going really well. Mm. So there's a couple over the line there. 626 Vaughan Hogan. They came in with a one hour and uh, 13. Darren Mott came in with a one hour 13. Brendan Hill come in, in with a one, hour 109. Ross Newman with a 108. Mandy with a 105. So these, some of these guys are still cir circulating on their second lap. There it is. 104. 104. Most cars are in now sending for their service break, so it's yeah, a good opportunity. Yeah, there's still a handful out there, but we're just getting, waiting for updates to see whether they're still still mobile or not. The Ursig. Good opportunity to go have a drink and go see the girls in the canteen and get some lunch and a coffee or a Zupa yeah. Duper or... Yeah, we saw earlier that his car on screen was, was stationary. That's, John, uh, that's the Smith entry 445. He was stationary, so maybe once again it's something as simple as a tyre or a thrown belt. Or well, you look at the racking on the back. I just caught a glimpse. Looks like he had the, a good tyre on there. Yeah, the right the right hand tyre on the rack was missing. Was that run two? I think you had run on two. We might be able to see here from the, uh, the our footage. lovely drone flyer here. Might be able to zoom in, but it looked to me like the uh, the right hand rear tyre was off the rack. Oh, he runs two upright. Two, they, they stand upright. Yes. It's going to test your sight from there, Sandy. I think I can Here see is, the, the screenshot, big screen. He's flying in. Down Here we there, go. Better than I can see the, the one in front of me on the computer here. So, Oh, that looks like the... Is that AJ? I think it's the plan. Don't, don't tell me that. That's bloody AJ. Is it? Is it? Looks like it. it. Looks like the... Is that the plan? Jimco? Don't know. Let's ha hold it on Turn that so we can out. see... Yeah, I think it is the one two eight. Oh yes. Yep. Yeah, you're the right. Jimco Pro Light. Never good. Never good when you're. A... He started out in seventeenth this morning. No, that was yesterday morning. I Something think he started dragging out. on that. What's that dragging in behind? That's a trailer that looks like a drive CV. shaft. That's drive a drive shaft. shaft. That's a tent peg now. That's yeah. <laughs> that's what they, that's what that'll be good for. But that looked like a drive shaft dragging in the dirt there. So that's unfortunate. And he started in tenth this morning. He was doing really well. Yeah. Well, that just shows yeah. that's just a brutal. It's a real desert race, this one. Just to finish this race is an, an accomplishment. So that's unlucky for the boys. The Franklin entry. Triple Second one. lap, I think. Triple one zero. It should be there. Did their first lap in 57.12. It's not bad going. That wind's picked up even more. Sandy, look at that. Yeah, it does. It's... Uh... That's fine. I'm happy with that. I'm sure you're, and I'm sure they're all happy with it out there. Blowing the right way, so that's the main thing. We got Here we now. go. The Middlemas car. Yeah, that's the dramas. second in the championship last year. We said it before. These guys, uh, Alice and um, the Middlemas, they they've done phenomenal. Yeah, the middle miss. Yeah, they had some issues. I, I saw a damaged wheel or a damaged tyre or they had an issue uh, yesterday, but it's still, they do a great job on that car. They prep it. It's a beam car, father and, uh, what, no, husband and, husband wife. Wife. Husband and wife. Yeah. So that's... that's David you, and Alice middle miss. Yep. Yeah, it's just a great family. Um, the kids, they all come along. They do a great job, great prep. It's probably the only time they get to get away from the kids, is it? In the car, yeah. <laughs> we we're up here for that. I see Pup down in front of us uh, chowing down. I think he's realised that he doesn't have to keep yeah. his weight down. He's, he's been over and got a hot dog and some chips. He's got a hot dog, a hamburger, a steak sandwich, some chips, a can of Coke and a donut bag. Jeez. Yeah. I don't think you need all that, Pup. <laughs> Is that 4.22 aimed at the finish line just next to us? Got a Mickelfab truck 
Sandy coming towards us. 4-2-2. Completion of a section one this morning. We must have nearly everybody, nearly everybody on their break. Stephen Von Payne and Steve Bilby. Yeah, it's, it's getting towards... Must be very close. The service break. The others, I mean, we've got a couple of uh, side-by-sides out there. I couldn't even tell you. I know Doc, uh, that 445 car is still moving in about, a, about just a quarter of the way through the desert section, so they're not far in. They're not, they're not far into the desert. Andy Brown's headed out after his break. He's just about... He's rolling up to the start line. Watch the starting lights, but... Yeah, as we mentioned, it's a 45-minute service break, so that 45 minutes starts from the second you cross under the finish line, the steel at finish line ban banner there, and then that 45 minutes, will you, you resume your section two right on the smack bang on the 45 minutes. So if you... If you do have an issue in the pits and say you come out at 47 minutes, it's your new. It's on your race time, yeah. Just looking, so the dock, the, the last car that's circulating out there on this second lap for today is uh, that 445 Nissan Turbo powered Class 4. And he's about halfway around the track, so Andy Brown has another clear run into the. Into the uh, last section of the weekend. Yeah, Andy did inform me that. The big straight coming home, it's at 213, 216 kilometres an hour, the car is warping and he's using yeah. every bit of road. Yeah, right. So as we, with that, when that wind picks up, it does unsettle the cars a fair bit. So he, he was Kevin saying he was using every single bit of that road on that straight, trying to hang yeah. on to it. So if you do get it he heading towards you... He did say, you know, it's taken a, taking him a little bit to get used to the four-wheel drive, how it, he said, you know... Under 1,000 RPM, it's in two-wheel drive. Under braking, it's in two-wheel drive. Yeah. So um, there's different stages where that car, the technology in that car allows it to drop in and out of four-wheel drive. I presume it's putting 50-50 power to the front and the back. Some cars, you, on, you I can think you can dial it. that you to can. like 80-20 or something like the old... Yeah, uh, you can change that ratio on that. Yeah. But the hardest part for Andy, I think, it's going to be uh, stepping back out of this, back into his two-wheel drive. <laughs> so he's very happy with it. So it's going to be a hard, um, hard act to follow, this, this new car. Definitely the pinnacle of off-road motorsport in Australia right now, isn't it? Yeah, that it's car? been in the works for a long time. He's always yeah, had three the, years. Yeah. I think they started to, uh, yeah, but engaging in the build. They've talked about it for about 10, you know, 12 even. That, that's, that's the aim. Being, you know, ARB, 4x4, four four, you know, to have a four-wheel four drive truck. And he's always been a buggy man, so well, let's try it in a buggy. Well, he hasn't always, mate. He used to race that Frontierer. He did. In and, they, and Danny started out in a little Rodeo, if you remember. Yeah, I did. Doing yeah. some uh, cross-country rally, Condo 750, Australian Safari. In that Frontier, I went for a little ride around it once up at the... What a uh, weapon, huh? Oh, I just... I didn't even put my belts on properly. I thought, <laughs> oh, this will... Well, this I think there was a little nothing. shakedown somewhere for an event, and I jumped in. I just threw the belts on, didn't tighten them up, and very quickly it was a. Uh, <laughs> I was holding on for dear life. It, I just couldn't believe it. And he's still got it. Still keeps it. Still in the shed. They still got their little sixteen fifty. Yeah, I still think. got the sixteen fifty. The tracker up there. Um, I think that's going to get passed down to the grandkids. They won't be too far off either, will they? couple of years yet but you can see what Andy's doing here he's just doing laps and keep things warm keep things warm getting Gear some heat oils. yeah getting some heat into the the transmission which is obviously in the back and in the front just keep the wheels turning over getting all the heat through everything it's a problem with these cars sometimes you go for your 45 minute service break and everything cools all right down, cools and, down yeah and then it's just getting it's getting it all moving again to get back out there so 11.61, and that's the uh, that's the western entry is moving, but I'll be honest with you, it doesn't look like it's moving on track. It, it, if, if it is, we'll see dust over on our left because they are literally coming in on our far left now. So if we see a dust trail, it may well be them. I do see a car out there. It looks like it's just gone through the chicane. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure the westerns might have gotten going again. That will be good to see Cooper... Well, I saw Chris earlier, and he told me that they've lost fourth gear. Ah, right, They've there lost you go. fourth gear. In the um, rush truck? Yeah, in, in, the, yeah, in the buggy. So 
Still got the other ones, but it just when it's shifting, it's it's missing fourth and going from third to fifth. So whether that's got worse or it's another little issue, but another generation young kid out there handed the keys from his dad. So hopefully they can uh, get in and get it resolved and get back out there. That definitely is them coming back in. Red and white car and yep. on the screen is telling me that the, uh, the 1161 is about to turn into the back end of this stadium. Yeah, the top of the hill there. So that's good to see. We've got the 15, Clayton Chapman. He's going to try and keep Andy honest. Uh, I think it's going to be close on time. Tell you what. Yeah. Yep. But just a remark. He's come a long way too yep. over the years. You know, second generation. I don't know if they have any before old man Chappie, who's still got a big part to do with the team and, and off-road racing around Australia. But uh, he's come a long way. We, I started racing against him about 20 years ago in Class 8. They had Class 7s, Class 8s. 20 years so ago? I, yeah. Are you that old? Yeah, <laughs> no kidding, huh? Um, I had hair when I started. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, they've had Class 8s. They've got side-by-sides. They've got pretty much everything under the sun, those guys. From down at Queensland. They've got a big, big part to do with the Queensland off-road racing scene as well. Yep. So there you see Andy Brown sitting on the start line waiting for the lights to drop. They didn't even know what colour, how to how to work the lights earlier. But you'll get uh, red lights or flash when they go out. You go when there is no lights in front of you. So, yeah, not long till the start of our final section. Front car, two more laps to go. And the only car in front of those is literally halfway around the track so by the time Andy finishes his first lap everybody should be in for their 45 break yeah so he's, he's going to have a fair, fair clear go but Clayton's going to keep him honest on track it's going to be close on time as well so and not only that at the end of the day it might be a bit drawn out because some of these guys will be coming out of their service break as if they've got a 45 minute service break and a 45 minute lap then we'll have some cars coming out just as these guys yep. are finished going into their last lap, we'll yep. have some guys coming off their service break, some of the slower cars. Yeah, lucky we've got the breeze, which is going to help a lot. But we might... Um, Danny's down there on the fence, so once the car takes off, we might get him up. He can answer all the questions about this new vehicle and give us the specs, and he can give you some more info on it. Sandy? Yeah, phenomenal bit of engineering. I think he's pretending like he can't hear us, but I think yeah. he can. We know, we know you can hear us, Brown. <laughs> he's not flinching one bit, but that's all right. We'll just keep talking about him until he comes up. Gee, that must be seconds off starting, I reckon, because the... Well, you're, you never want to be late to these, Sandy. You want to be on time. Nothing worse than a mad scram. It'll get up there, so you always give yourself... I noticed yourself... yesterday even Brent, you know, Brent yep. came up, stopped the car and took off straight away. So yep. he, that's how close he ran his time yesterday. Yeah, you don't want to be... You want to be comfortable. You don't want to be rushing. Give yourself five or six minutes once you get up to the line and get going again. We should have the Western car. Not far. They should have one or two more switchbacks before they come over the finish line. Too sure what's happened with them, but there uh, that's them on screen coming at us. Yeah, that's the final tunnel shoot that to the last corner. There, it's a great shot by the camera. There, it looks like yeah. it's going, going, it's going right, right again right. now. Yeah, still, yeah. Chris said it did lose fourth gear. One, so. Well, I wonder if Chris might have got seasick in there. Maybe you know. <laughs> No, Chris is in. in. No, Chris is on the fence. He's, oh, um, is he? Yeah, Cooper's got his he's mate in with him. So Chris, oh, Chris right. drove yesterday, and he's got Cooper driving today with his mate Benny in the passenger seat. Shouldn't be long now. I'll tell you what, we're we're itching here for Andy to leave the line. Yeah, look at that. As I said to him, that neon light really stands out. That what, the bottom yeah. light bar. It's good for the dust. Good to pick it. Good for the other other cars to spot that in the mirror. Should be any second now. Dale ro rolling around the back. 
Burrows, Mark, uh, sorry, um, yeah, Mark Burrows coming around the back as well into the lineup. So they are top four on track at the moment. Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman, Bo Robbo, Dale Martin, Mark. Mark Burrows, Burrows. here comes Bo now. There's Bo. They've battled with that downshift issue. That's really hurt him this weekend. Look at the race tape holding the front together. <laughs> Actually, the front was white, so now the whole front is black. black. Yeah. Plenty of tape. That's the best tape in the world, that stuff. It'll hold anything together. So it's they holding the front cosmetics of that mason together at the moment. They also said that they struggled a little bit with braking once the 40s went on after the high speed sections. Yeah. Trying to pull it up, so... That was a little bit of an issue as well as that downshift issue. Hurt them as far as their times are gone, and guess what? Now they've got to suck dust for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, looking at that, it's hard with the rear guards off it, but it looks like they could be the 37s that have gone back on. Yeah, you're right, yeah. It's hard. It, it looks, yeah, they've probably reverted back. He's got a crew of about 4,000 people down there working on his cars. Yeah, it's good, in it? His car. It all helps. All mates and the Browns, Spanner Man. The Browns and had 10 over there. The Martins have got 10 rambling yeah. over there as well. You know, there's... At 45 minutes, they can go pretty quick. If you've got an issue, it's all just the general service stuff. It's all pretty good. But if you've got an issue, it can, can uh, suck the time out of the clock a lot. Our first five cars are lined up. Ready for the last section. I think we'll see our outright winner come out of this top, in this top five. Someone in this top five. Yeah, I reckon you're we'll, right. We'll uh, take the chocolates here. The Steal It ARB Big Desert 480. Speaking of Steal It, they've got a little tent down beside us here. You can go and chat to them about their products. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah, um, great product. They've got light grey and a black and a charcoal just introduced into their range and they've got uh, a ceramic styled heat coat that you can do exhaust, the tur Rolly was telling me up to about a thousand degrees so the, the turbo cars might not be able to use it but definitely the NA cars, no drama there, there you go, Andy Brown So they're obviously not staying at their 30-second gaps like this morning. So this is on um, on their service break. So to the minute, second of the 45-minute service break. So some cars might be it might be minute and a half, two minutes between when they take off. Could be just wherever they came in. It's bang on that 45 minutes. Shaking as that Dugans goes past. We go. set that. They've only got about 25 percent battery. Look on their camera. And then we go straight on board with Bo Robbo. Look at that. From your lounge room at home or wherever you are, your shed. Just sit back and enjoy. That system on that car was built to make uh, the first of our live desert stuff that can go the whole way around the track, I believe. Chappies. Two Joes. <laughs> Boost. Boost. Look at the way it works in the all-wheel drive of Lunacraft through the infield. Oh, he's just overshot that he corner. He has overshot yeah. that corner. Yeah. That's all right. When you know <laughs> there's nothing on the outside of it, you can overshoot it a little bit. As Bo comes through, so again a little wave. The pressure's going to be on in this last section of all these top five cars. There's not much in it. Dale, the next car off. Yeah, number five, Jim Co. Dale Martin, Adrian Rowe. 
the three and a half litre EcoBoost twin turbo V6. C626 has stopped out there, but uh, these guys have just taken all, all these guys are just taking off now, and we've got Doc, the uh, 445 entry, still motoring around there, 6681 and 202 still motoring. They are three quarters of the way through the desert, about third to go. So the ever willing entry is getting towed back past us in front of us here. They've obviously had a big issue. They're still idling, but maybe they've done a, uh, an axle or a diff or something silly. Ever willing entry. Still have three cars on track yet to come in out of the desert. There's a couple coming in around the finish line now, but there's a couple still stuck out there. I reckon we'll see. There was a little bit of gap between uh, between Chappie and, and Dale on the way back in out of the desert the first time round. So there might be a little bit of a wait here. Darren, yes. Darren Vandy came in before on yes. his first lap, didn't he? So this is Darren Vandy's. Oh, what a horrible time to go out. Oh, man. Nothing yeah. that. Dale's not going to be happy with that. No. Having to follow his dust out. That's so the last thing you want to see. Darren Vandy's just leaving on his second lap for the morning. He's come in and done a repair. But uh, I'm sure he's going to have to be well on the, on the mirrors and the comms. Yeah, right. Um, stale gets wound up. That's not what you want to see because those those trucks do fly up a lot of dust. Back on board with Bo, Robbo, Shane, the Mason. Split screening. To be on the big Sixth straight gear, mate. Yeah, it's definitely in top gear. Dale and AJ off on their last two laps. Hopefully they have a safe run. Well, Bo was saying before, he's in third gear right now, but saying they wouldn't, down, wouldn't downshift to second, so. His finger on the paddle shift, ready to give it a nudge. Yeah, just remind right, if you are right watching from home, there's no gear stick. There's a paddle shift behind the steering wheel for up and down shifting. Being a two-wheel drive, the back end super happy, especially with one million horsepower that he's got in front. Oh of yeah. Still waiting for Danny to come up and tell us all about a couple of things. Mr. Mott's over the finish line. There you go. Mark Burrows as well on his way. As well. Yeah, car 21, the Monk. Three and a half litre twin turbo. Bo's got his car in second gear, but it looks like they might have had a ticket with it during the break and got it sorted. Might help him. Uh, a flick of the finger there by the looks of that, isn't it? It is. It's very, they're very sensitive. It's just mm. like your joystick controls on your Nintendo. <laughs> this live stream really has come a long way, isn't it? With Phenomenal. Board, Phenomenal. We're at the back. We've got drones. Next year, every car's going to have an online yep. feed, I heard. We've got some good sponsors uh, getting rounded up, I reckon, if Absolutely. you want a sponsor. You can get in touch and yeah. uh, get on board. You can have your logo on the bottom of the screen there, and it's just great for the family. Put a bit back if you can't make it to the event, you got friends and family and competitors here, and you can just sit back with a cold beer in your lounge room and just have all this. We had over two thousand, you know, about twenty-two or twenty-three hundred people following the live feed yesterday so they reckon that that jumps phenomenally once the uh, yep. event's over and people get a chance to watch it back 6.11 over into their break little entry of Brendan Hill side by side is that the 
looks like McGinley car out there or something. That's a good one. This live oh, no, stream obviously sorry. be following all the rounds, so everywhere we go with a big screen here, and that'll be following all the the ARV Championship rounds. Tucker, this is a car that's super been super impressive this weekend. Yeah, Some absolutely. cars just stand out on the weekends. This this for me has been one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Class one car. Yeah, Australian built Southern Cross. And um, Nissan BQ35, three took and a half this leader. morning in eighth place, Lee. Yep. Will be our first. Must be currently sitting about yep. fifth. First in class. Fifth or sixth. Is first in class. So the number of the the triple one zero, the one in front represents it's double in one the pro zero. light class, double one zero. So it's a pro light class. So you class can one. you cannot exceed three point five, five liters. liters. Followed by our first of our Class 10s, Bowie and Ella in 1065, which is a two and a half litre maximum. Yep. Recently joined last few years, about three so years. Come into it. Sixth gear. You know they're moving when they're in sixth gear. That's around the 200k an hour mark. Yep. pitches we're getting. I think we've got four, four or so, four or five cameras out there, a few drones that are moving around throughout the day to give you a different perspective on the de edges of the desert and etc, etc. Freeze up that... that uh, Starlink? Yeah, Starlink freezes on the, up every now and then. It's on the roof of the car, pointing skywards. Go back on again. Bowie off the start line. That's impressive. He's pretty impressive to watch too. Hey, Absolutely. always. Uh, you know, remember Griffith last year up at Hillston. There, he opened the eyes, my eyes, when he uh, did a crack around up there. He's got his daughter, Ella Graham, in the passenger seat. Matty Bowie on the start line, ready to go. A lot of fast sections out there. I'm just looking at those gear selectors in yeah. sixth for a lot. It's a very fast circuit on the way out of the start. On the way sharing. out and yeah. the way back the way in. Back. Once you come out of that yeah. river. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like the Bathurst. You know, you've got the big straight on the way up, the big straight on the way back, and then you've got your technical oh, I mean, part through the top. This is better than Bathurst, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. This is better than the Grand Prix. It's on today. Oh, I didn't even know there was a Grand Prix, mate. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that wind looks to have turned around now. It's blowing straight, straight yeah. down towards Lake Wells down there. Named after our fearless leader, Darren, which we've obviously mentioned. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it this weekend. I'm sure he's watching, mate. Oh, he's at home watching. He's correcting me on everything I'm saying or yeah, doing I, wrong. I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He's the principal at home just correcting me on everything I am saying or doing wrong. <laughs> Barnett car sitting there. Doesn't even look like it's turned a wheel. No. Great sounding car, though. It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's got a real crisp note to it. LS powered. Yep. Six liter in that one. Up against that tractor in the background. Both of them off the start line together. Yeah, that'd be a good match. <laughs> well, uh, 
looking on the screen there, Andy's opened the gap between Bull a little bit. I think. And Chappie's right up Bo's back up from, from what we can see. Yeah. The, uh, live on the rally safe. Andy's not far off turning left into the desert's edge. Yep. And um, there's some of the slower cars. In the last two or three, I think it looks like Matty Hummer and uh, Vaughan Hogan and um, the uh, 445 of John Smith. They're still motoring along the desert, so I'm hoping they get out of the desert, which they should do, before these boys come back around. They are. Matty Burrows on his way. Last section, good luck. Yeah, in the gym car, Jay Mitchell. Passenger seat. This used to be Mark's car. Uh, it was a pro-class car. And then... well, I've been an advocate for getting turbos back on that car, but yeah. I haven't had any success yet. I don't think Mark's happy to at the minute. He's happy just to leave it the way it is. Maybe he doesn't want to be embarrassed, though. Eh? Look at this section, Sandy, with Bo. Bo's, look at the, how quick those trees are going past. That's six gear, 211 kilometres an hour. 190k an hour right now. You can come and get into this sport quite easily. There's these these side by sides you can buy, step right in, you can buy an old class yep. class, you know, four or an old sixteen fifty or something. Yeah, in, uh, come and have a fun. Pays out a little bit. Like, remember we used to have the old bar bugs, and we had bar yep. bugs around. And, but there's uh, ten different classes you can get into. Different uh, There's more now, isn't there? Ten or eleven. We've got there's class 11. eleven. Yep. We've got a couple of class sixes, six and sixty-six. Yep. So yeah, we've got a fair few classes you can play around in now. Another class 10. I think the second of our class 10s lining up now. Dean McGinley. Dean McGinley. From, uh, from our second round. So coming up, don't forget, folks, we've got four rounds this year. Hilston on the 5th to the 7th of July. Gundawindi on the 9th to the 11th of August. And our final of the... ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship in uh, September the 20th to 22nd. Down in Millicent. That's a cracker weekend. It is. The ARB 4x4 accessories, race line wheels and Mickey Thompson tyres. Yeah, it's a good way to finish with the reverse grid down there. Just It's just the weather's the... Uh, but lately, yeah, as we discussed earlier, the last two years, we've had uh, coconut oil on down there in Millicent. <laughs> and never, that never happens. So hopefully we can get a three-peat down there. While there's a little bit of quiet, you can run over, grab a helicopter ride with Ultimate Helicopters. They're right behind us here. Follow some of these big cars around or your own team if you wish. Go to the uh, canteen, get yourself some lunch. Bring so you sampled a few hot dogs earlier, mate. That's where Daddy's at the moment. I think he's left us, and I think he's over there stuffing <laughs> his face. He's been somewhere. gone a little he's while. He's been gone. He's probably telling someone a story. Yeah. The first one that brings Sandy and I up a coffee gets the prize. <laughs> Two cappuccinos, no sugar, and you will get a prize from Sandy and I. Bo's car seems to be sticking in second gear now, so I'm interested to see if this makes a difference to his to his lap time. Not that I'm soon going to say he's going to catch Andy, but we can the gap looks like... I'm looking at the screen right now, and it, it's telling me that Chappie is in front of him. Oh, well, you can see Bo just mowed down a tree there. He just took out a big tree. Looks like Chappie's in front of... Yeah. Bo, I didn't see that happen anywhere, the overtake. But um, the, the rally safe's telling us that Andy Brown, then Chappie, and Chappie's even closed in the gap on Andy. So, Because it'll make, if, if that Mason's still having downshift issues, when you get into that heavy sand, if you're stuck just, in fifth, fourth, 
fifth Whatever gear. Whatever gear. He said, so, said it was third to second was the issue. Yeah. If you're, so. That's like you and your road vehicle trying to drive up a hill and, and in fourth gear. Yeah. In, in a manual vehicle, it's... Um, It'd have to be frustrating if that's still the case, but that explains why it's losing a lot of time out here. In the areas we thought he'd be picking up speed... Right and there, picking out up the issue, desert, that's where it's going to make his time. That's where that truck's... And, and he's losing it, so... It'd be quite frustrating in there for that. They are. The Forsman entry, 202 over the finish line. That should be there. They should be into their brake section now. Is that the last car to finish? No, we've no. still got 633 Maddie Hummer, 626 uh, Vaughan, that's the Hogan's Heroes, uh, our Warwick Vet, 6681, six, yep. and also um, Mr. Smith in 445. So we've got still got four, four or, five. or five cars to come over the finish line on the end of their first section for the Sunday morning here at the Steel at ARB Big Desert 480. What a weekend. What a weekend. Still uh, plenty of racing to go. Plenty of classes and outrights. And and I'm sure the uh, desert will choose a few more people to uh, consume. consume out there. It's going to get rougher every lap. Mark Burrows is around Darren Vandy. So before the, the Tucker car still got to get around Darren Vandy out there. But there, he went there's out still three or four Dale. minutes. Yeah. Away by the looks of the screen. Yeah, Darren Vandy went out, went out just before the five car. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Forsman's 202, little 1650, only 1650 in this weekend. Really good club cars, those 1650s. Yeah. They're... Fantastic for those slightly smaller events. They don't get beaten up quite so bad. In 87, Dean McGinley in the Tatum. Did we see Hannah come over? No, she didn't, she didn't start this morning. Oh, no? No. She had, Seeing, had uh, some Hayden, issues. Hayden yeah. walk up. Yeah, she had some issues yesterday, so did not start this morning. But still got... Uh, Interesting what the issues are out there. You know, I haven't seen a flat tyre out there this weekend. I'm no. not saying there hasn't been. I just haven't seen one. I see, you know, Eden, Eden was saying she's broken a drive... A bolt that holds the drive pulley on on the yeah, side by side. Something yeah. really you it's wouldn't not expect to of, break something like that. Yeah, that it's not here. that sort of track. Like, but our next event, Hilston, that's where that's we a, see, we see a lot of flats. Yeah, with a the rocky ground, rock. different terrain. But it's not really a puncher track this one. So, we, as you said, we haven't seen or any or many or but different events, different terrain. I remember Pines a couple of years ago. Every car came in. There was a tree root or a rock, a rock sticking yeah, out. Yeah, a root. and that got. The one rock got like 20 times. 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> there are Sibbo. He's on his way. Yep. Dee's uh, doing some official background work here at Rainbow. So yep. she's not in the passenger seat. She told me she's retired. Yes. And um, That's not bad. She's had a good run, though. I tell you what, they did very well together. She's uh, relegated to sitting in the back box and, and making the event happen. 110 volunteers. I was blown away by that this weekend yeah, just to huge. make an event happen. It's huge, isn't I it? I didn't realise there was quite that many. Yeah. As we know. mentioned, it goes all the way from the people that are cleaning up rubbish all the way to the whoever's um, running the event, all the way down to the gatekeepers. Traffic the control, traffic recovery. Recovery, commentators. I see Pup's old man bringing him out, taking him another feed over there. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look what we got rolling up to the start line. It's out again. Chow. God. God, get a lap in, boy. Get he's, a lap in. He's had nothing but trouble. I don't know what's gone wrong with it, but I know he had a little transmission issue down in Portland. He's resilient. We'll give him I'll that. I'll tell you what, yeah. Very resilient. But that's what it's all about. If you're here and you can fix it, you're down on the event, on the outright running, but you can still get back out there. Looks like Andy Brown. I know it's just refreshed. Andy Brown and Bo Robbo. They must be sideways. Is he in his dust? He's right yeah. up in front. Look. Yeah, there he is. On look the live that. stream. Oh. Is look. that the footage you want or what? Have a look at the screen. Look on the screen. We've got Bo Robinson right behind. Andy Brown. 
the 11.42. Uh, Clayton Chapman seems to have dropped back just a little bit over. So we can And see. I tell you, Both. if this was just Bo's second gear issue yep. that sorted all this out. Yep. We just saw the pass then on board. There you go, we just got told Hannah in the Bentley entry 418 that didn't start this morning. She's jumped in with Sam for this last section, so. Brother sister combination. That's a nice way to go about it. That'll be good, but as we saw on the live stream there, the you saw it here folks, on board with Bo putting the pass back on Andy Brown. Look he? at that dust. Well, he hasn't still yet, behind. mate. He's beyond. He's eating dust. And there's no one in front of Andy, so... Because I saw some clear air, and I saw Huddy reach back and clean the camera, so I thought they might have put the pass on. But this is... This is wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. Yeah. You don't this see is, this very often. This is as good as it gets. These guys are halfway through the desert section, literally halfway around the track, so... He seems to be grabbing second gear, so they might have done a little adjustment there. To... Yeah, Roland's off the line. Let's let's get a lap in, Roland. Come on. He's got fuel issues. He yeah. said they had tank issues. Yeah. They said they did have tank issues. Uh, before they started? Before they started, during the week, they said they had fuel issues, so I reckon he'll just loop back around into the pits because that's... Um, no, he's not. He's, he's giving it a go. He's going to persist. I wouldn't want to hurt my engine myself, but... Those rotaries, mate, they love it. Do they? You sure? Oh, I'm just trying to be... <laughs> be I'm, positive. I'm just trying I to get be it. positive for him to get him around. Yeah. They are. Jackson Evans is on his way out as well. Roland seems to be struggling. It's not been not been a good start for him, but we all have them. Andy Brown looks like we've still got to come in. Matty Hummer, um, the 626 entry of the Hogan's Heroes, uh, 445 and 6681 are the last. Looks like the last four cars, but they seem to be moving quite slowly. So I'm hoping they get out of the way of um, Bo and Andy. And Chappie, the gap between Bo, Andy and Chappie seems to have opened up as well. Yep. I always try and wait. Look at, look on, I'm just looking at the live feed, at the thing out here and Bo Robbo, 201.4 kilometres an hour. Yeah, well, it looks like the way it's going, that issue could be restored. Yeah. Uh, fixed. Which means look out, Andy. Look out, yeah, look out. I, I don't doubt that Angry. Andy and Bo are very, very similarly matched. There you are. There goes uh, Sam and Hannah Bentley. Yep. From Bentley Cabin Park, uh, Cabin Park entry. Second Hayden, generation. Hayden brother sitting and, down in front of us. Brother and sister out there having a ball together. That's good to see. Jackson Evans. 6.35. He's and, uh, done really well this weekend too, hasn't he? Apart from his little issue yesterday with limping across the line, I think he's actually done quite well. They finally sorted out a few issues. He said he took, pulled the rev limiter off that car after Pines last year. That was its first event. Yep. And um, Simon's was uh, Simon was in with Eden and said, oh, maybe we need to get this second car second car going. So she's like, oh, I think that's a good idea, you know. So yeah, why not? Why not? The King so Chrome Racing through. with Samuel Raper in the passenger seat in the Polaris. 422. Who have we got on the start line there? Six. That's testing. 622, is it? Six. 622 is come. Oh, sorry, 422 is coming out. 626. They haven't, is got it? A, they haven't got a forward facing number. Yeah, it looks like it's slightly tilted. 627, maybe. Yeah, we've got 626 or 626. Justin, Justin Ryder? Yeah, it could 627? be. 627? Yeah. We need our eyes checked. We do. <laughs> So Luckily, Dad's six not up two here. seven. Dad would be able to see it up here. We've got He's six oh seven, forty four. Jordan Patterson. We've got the Honey Badger one oh four. We've got four twenty two. There's a handful of cars lined up ready to go back out. Matty Hummer should be the dust on your left coming back into the arena. 
He's just come off that fast straight. Then we've got 626, and we also have 445 coming in. Looks like our six, our vet pulled our, off. Our Warwick vet. Yeah. Looks like Newman's pulled off. He looks like he's out the toe on the way back in the centre of the field. Yeah, so the John Smith should be our last vehicle. And I reckon he'd nearly be out of the way. If he can get out of the desert quick enough, yep. he might be out of the way of the big boys coming in behind him. And uh, he's usually not that far back, mate, so he obviously had a problem. He was stopped there for a little while earlier on. What about the uh, the patrol, Sandy? Whedon, did that uh, he, still we, going? Heath came in under tow, mate. Under tow, so that's yeah, so all over? Yeah, so uh, came through the middle of our screen. All right, yep. see on our uh, the rally safe They're fairly well spread out again so he got cleared up he got clear ahead yeah, has he like, been around him yeah that looks like clear ahead right to me he's, i reckon he's made a pass yeah, while we've been it. not looking folks yep well with any luck for Bo anyway he's gone back around andy out here and uh what a time to do it as they're smashing through the desert because if he can get a little bit of a little bit of distance before he comes out of the desert, which is where he's going to make it. Yep. Um, and he's possibly a little bit quicker out on that high-speed run back in. Yeah, the buggy's... It's going to have an advantage and disadvantage on the circuit where the buggy's going to be quicker than the trucks, and then... Obviously That's definitely made a pass again, though. Yeah, the, issue, the trucks are going to be quicker than the buggy, vice versa, but... Just amazing for we're getting here. So you can see, folks, that, that circle piece in between the two upright triangle bars, that's actually that's the motor. That's the air cleaner. That's the donk. The, that's frozen, it. the frozen donk. That's the that air, happens. That's the <laughs> air cleaner on top of the donk. That's right where it sits, right between them. Is that 607? Sorry, 627. Justin Ryder on his way back out. He's had his 45-minute break. Don't forget, we've got four cars leaving after their break. We've still got a couple of cars coming in from their from their last yeah their last uh, before their break, should I say? Well, the way it's looking, so Sandy. Matty Hummer, yep. should be nearly coming around to the finish line here somewhere. Our front running cars are gonna. It's going to be an interesting last lap because they're going to run into the back of a uh, lot of these four, cars. Four four five is our last car on track, from what I can tell. Yep. But then on their last lap, they're going to come on all these cars that are taking off now. Potentially, they're going to catch them yep. on the last lap. Yep. And that's at some just, stage. Yep. And these are not the back mark. These are like mid midfield midfield cars, which are obviously harder to get around and catch. So the last lap, there's going to be a bit of traffic going on. Interesting to see that uh, Bo's pulled away from Andy again. Yep. And um, not only that, Clayton was actually up behind those two a little bit closer. So he yeah, seems to be dropped back in the rough. Yep. Hasn't he? Clayton seems to be a little bit quicker on the first third. Gets yeah, dropped back just, a little bit on the second third. Probably and, just hasn't got the wheel travel out the back in the room. It's, it's probably not. He's got plenty of wheel travel, don't get us wrong, but it's probably not as. More than a class seven. Yeah, mate, not I've got a, to say. <laughs> Yeah. Just not as many as the two cars in front of him, but you can see, yeah, Bo's... Yeah, Bo's... He's cleared out. And that'll be good for Bo, because, look, he's got fresh air now. Yep. So he can try and pull away. Fresh air until he catches these cars that are taken off in front of us. Well, don't forget, you know, 445. Yep. Uh, John Smith, he's now out of the desert, and he's on the fast section of the way back in. Both still in the desert, so uh, 445, he's going to be in the pits before Bo gets in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if not, it'll be such a close, you know, he might get a little bit of dust right at the finish line here, if anything. So. The 104, David Loftin and Michael Schneider and Jake Stevenson, the Honey Badger, which is a chassis built in Adelaide by Luke Ertheg. Is that Roland? He's that's back. Roland. He's Is he still back going. from there? He's obviously stopped in that first section and got going again. It's obvious, it I think he fuel. just wants to get some... He's got some issues with that car, unfortunately. He's just purchased this car. Yeah. Um, well, it seems just, to be going, going a bit better now. But, he's look, he's got two cars right up his doorstep now. Gee, it, uh, there's a little bit of work in the front suspension, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I just felt that one. Yeah. <laughs> 
But so he's got a side by side, and then he's got the 44 Patterson buggy. Oh, and Patterson's doing really well. He's uh, he had his problems early on, but now that he's back on track, he seems to be doing quite well. Yeah, you can see on our live stream, we've got the the Mazda closely followed by the sod and the, and the pro buggy. and then Jordan Patterson in 44 in that uh, yep. ultimate class. So we've got the triple one zero, yep. Frank Ling. Darren Frank Ling. Come over, jump right behind us. There's a... Uh, the helicopter rides of Ultimate Helicopters. Don't forget to log on and grab a ticket to get you win yourself an ARB fridge. Um, but you can go for a chopper ride. Follow the last lot of these fast cars out on the next lap. You're windy up in the skies, but they'll they'll get as close as you can and follow your car or the one you want to follow or give you a different perspective and look. So go see the boys over at Ultimate Helicopters. Don't forget to see the girls in the marquee selling all the food, drinks, icy what poles. Motor, what motor's in that 104, that Usyk? Uh... It's got a V6 of uh, some description. It's not in our program to what actual engine it is. Side by side. That's an easy way into the sport, isn't it? Those side by sides. You can purchase a, an off the shelf car ready to go. Um, not that off road racing is the cheapest sport out there, but. You can purchase a side by side. You can send it off to someone like even Greg Campbell. They do cages. They do all sorts of upgrades. You can buy off the shelf parts for them, and um, quite an easy, quite an easy entry into the sport. You can buy yourself an old class seven or class eight or something. Come and have a few local rounds. Come out, join on the championship rounds, which I've always been a fan of. I entered the sport 20 so years ago, straight into the championship rounds. They are middle of century, David and Ellis. After their break, they're on their way. And we've got car 11, the Marsden entry, with Kevin, Kevin lining up. The, the See what, Dale's, yeah, Dale's back on the money, isn't he? That's a new, is that a new uh, location, film location? I that's think a, so, yeah, that's yes. a good. that's a good shot, that, of the uh, number five Jimco along the fence. That's a, uh, they're, they're still doing it for us. The boys out there, they're just moving the cameras. The cameras are moving and, yeah. around. Like I said, it's been really good to get a different yep. perspective on the That's a great shot, that weekend. is. Look at those blue skies, mate. Oh, yeah. Ours aren't that blue from the commentary box, I've got to tell you. No. They're uh, tainted by a little bit of dust. All we're getting is a dusty windscreen. Yeah. 422 sitting on the start line waiting to go. Gee, they're bouncing through the desert now, isn't it? That looks like the uh, one of the Alright, guys. We can see, uh, yeah, John Smith just coming back, our last car on lap two. And you can see the bow has cleared out from um, whether Andy might have a slight issue or he's just uh, settled back into a groove at a pace that he's comfortable with. Steve Get the car to the end. Team just left the line. See that Franklin, they're quite short, these Polaris things, but they're actually easy to tow. That's another bonus with those little cars. Yep. And you know, as we're getting closer back towards the start no, of the area... 215.3 then... kilometres an hour, mate. There you go. And he's not even at the fast bit. <laughs> that just proves he's getting closer to us because the start is working. Look, look at the gap. That gap between him and Andy's opened up. Yep. Andy's actually dropping back, if anything, because the, the gap between Clayton and Bo hasn't changed too much. The gap between Clayton and Dale hasn't changed too much. Yep. But Andy's definitely dropped back, hasn't he? Yep. And well, you've got... got uh, sorry, mate. No, while well, we've got the pictures going here, but... Like... We're only in third gear on Bo's car. See the... Both Shane and Navigator. Shane's got a lot to do with production here on the live stream, but Shane's got a screen that tells you what gear he's in as well. Uh, in front of his right knee there, as well as Bo in front of him. They've both got, I think they've got nearly every bit of controls from both sides of the car. Yeah, they have. They've doubled up. Yeah, double the screens, yeah. double the um, the management system on the dash, which has given all the feedback and what every sensor, gearbox, yep. temperatures, the yep. whole lot, gear oils, yep. everything. So that's our view from the, from the commentary box, isn't it? It is. 
the uh, Marsden on on his way. Kevin, been a little bit of a silent achievement this weekend, hasn't he? Yeah, and a homemade buggy. Yeah. So and a homemade buggy is a homemade buggy. So they've done a great job building that themselves. Put a six liter in the back and go and have some fun. So once we see the dock come back in, we have four five. Yeah, he's over to our left. So then there's going to be probably about five minute gap. Yep. He's the last car on track, and then we've got about a five minute gap before you'll see the big dog Bo Robbo coming in. Yeah, but there'll still be a few more coming out after their service break, so it's going to mix and match a few for this last lap. Yeah, these boys, these boys, on, yeah, you're right. These boys, uh, Bo and Shane in, in triple one three, Andy in uh, 1142, Clayton in car 15. And looking here, it just shows Dale Martin seems to be a little bit stationary. Unless we just haven't had an update, but. Yep, well, we won't. Oh, look, just jump a little bit. It's just... Um, Whether that or he's not on the bloody track, I hope that's not the case, but... If you're at home, you can you jump go. on the RallySafe app and download the app and uh, you jump can... Jump onto yep. the ARB Big Desert 480, backed by Steel at this weekend. And you can look at what we're looking at. So it gives you a uh, map of the course and all the cars and the numbers and gives you their tracking of their speeds and where they are on the circuit. That's Cooper... Cooper Weston sitting in the car, 1161. Yep. A so rush. A, got an issue car. this morning somewhere. They can, might be able to fill us in on what the issue was, but they've got it fixed back out there. Cooper Weston. And Benny. Passenger seat, the rush buggy, Mickey Thompson, race line wheels, dynamic wheels. I haven't had too much up there. They are. He's over the line. I think that's our last car. Well, I can, yep, what I can tell, for car 445 four, 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 yep. uh, is on there. It's just coming in for their service break. So that's from what we can tell on the screens, that's the last car coming in for their service break. So they've got 45 minutes. They'll be out. Yep. And uh, Bo will be very close to home on his last lap, I reckon, if he's still uh, motoring the way he's motoring now. There's that shot. Super impressive, man. Look at that car. That Tucker entry, 110. Yeah, it's a great footage we're getting from out the back. Shows the speed. It's crazy what these, you know, we're talking a car with double the horsepower yep. of this thing, you know, this Tucker entry you just saw on your screens. Another car that's quite close to that another car we saw, but we go have a listen in. Bo's just going through coming out of his last creek bed section and on his he should be on the far section on the way back home yeah. any second. Oh sorry, he's well through the creek bed. But he's pulled the goods on Andy. That gap's open quite considerably now. That's our pit area, folks. You can see Matty Hummer in the top of your screens. Yep. In that race line wheels entry. Um, we've got about 40 car uh, competing cars this morning. Bowie and Ella, our first class 10 on track. Yep. K24 powered Lumacraft. Honda. Honda motor and in the back. a super fast little car. Yep. Top 10 in a... In a 2.5 against something that's got um, 224 horsepower. 224.8 kilometres an hour. Wow. There you go. That's on a Sunday drive in a <laughs> coach truck in a, down a paddock. 225, oh, 225 kilometres an hour with that tapped out on. So I think it. we've got an angry bow, I think. Yeah. I think we've got an angry bow, Robertson, driving this truck. We had some issues this morning, but here we go now. And he, he yep. does have a little bit of time to make up the correct time. 232 kilometres an hour. Sit back and enjoy that. I don't think Andy's got that same top speed, has he? 
No, it's see all them. 20k now, short. Bo will know the time he needs to make up. Yeah. So they're, they're doing, there's the chicane. That's the chicane. Yep, the that's the chicane. chicane. And then we can see now, if you look over to You're just over the water left, truck. You can see the dust. Yeah, the water, over the blue water truck, you can see that dust line going very quick at another 227 kilometres an hour. There it is. You can see the white truck, the tip of it. 228. Yeah. Barry, obviously very experienced racer, been uh, second generation yep. from his uh, late father. Uh, he's got his brother that also races at Travis. Uh, great family, been racing a very long time. They've been, they've been to Baja, they've been, they've been, they've been everywhere. Here, they're yep. everywhere, haven't they? This is a shakedown for the Fink Desert Race, which... Uh, 230k an hour, folks. I'm just going to click over to Andy and see what Andy's doing down there, but... There it is. You can see it's just turning in the gate. So 26 out of Andy Brown. So I was yep. I was wrong. There's Bo into the infield. Obviously, I think without Bo's second gear, I think the gap would be a lot of issues early on. I think yep. the gap would be a bit bigger. Seems to be uh, ticking all the boxes now. From the little issue they had, seems to be resolved. And that's showing us. You're quick enough you could go and get in the chopper and follow them out for their last lap I reckon yeah that'd be a great avenue to see from yeah Andy Brown 227.9 for 228 kilometers an hour so they have got a fairly evenly matched top speed don't they these two cars both they running have, yeah. very similar engines I suppose and they're warping at speed along that final straight too. Like it's, when it gets windy, it does upset the cars. It'll lift the front of the car up off the ground a bit. It'll make yep. them taily. We see the Chapman car now on the on the back straight coming in. It's getting closer to the two twenty five out of Chappie as well. Yeah, so, so it's pretty consistent, shush, isn't it? There's uh, three different cars, and we're talking a two wheel drive trophy truck and all wheel drive buggy. Yep. There's Andy coming into the arena. Yeah, there's Andy just turning and left. And also just a 2JZ powered uh, Toyota. Toyota powered buggy. So there's three different styles of car it's all doing six, the same. Straight six cylinder, isn't it? Yep. 2J. Yep, yep, 2J. Yep. And all doing the same sort of top speeds. I'm starting to hear Bo in. It, his car, when he comes in a bit closer, it starts well, to shake the commentary box here. Well, the Western, the Western car has taken off, and that's going to be so far the first cab off the rank. But, but these boys have to round up again. Yes, well, they've obviously repaired the Western car and sorted the issues out. Bo's heading down alongside the airfield now, and then he'll do his last switchback. He might have one more switchback before he comes back up. Oh, this is the final one, Sandy. So you do a U-turn here and shoot back along the tunnel chute, there he is. which is on Coming now. Coming back towards yep. the last right-hander around to the finish line. Still got one lap to go. But I'll tell you what, it'll be interesting to see the times. Chappie, 229.1 kilometres an hour out there on that road section. And he's coming back around. You just see Chappie's lights in the distance coming back around into the arena as well. Here it is. Bo Robbo. Yeah, boy. There's many places you don't really want to stand in front of Bo. But, no. Um, the desert's one of them. So as we know, this is all run by the clock. So just because he's first on the road doesn't, doesn't mean he's mean first he's, outright. No, it doesn't. Yep. It so a, we're not going to know. This is going to be close. These don't forget front that we cars. do have our control time in the middle of that, which needs to be calculated. Yep. So we're really not going to well. know until the end whether the on-track order matches the corrected time order. I'm going to go and... Uh, Bo's last lap. Oh, no, Push the wrong button, Sandy, that you shouldn't have. Yeah, we've lost it. Yeah. Last corner now for the 11.42 Alumacraft. 
one lap to go still. So Bo's passed him and put on another probably 45 seconds. So that's the gap back up, isn't it? Yeah. Still pushing hard. I don't know what I've just done with the computer, mate. We might have to get our expert IT man up here to resolve it for you. There he is. Chapman car, the Razorback. Currently third on course. There it is. Turn the last corner now. One lap to go. Two Jay Z, sounding very strong still. The Chapman's dyno tuning. Adam McGuire in the passenger seat. They're doing really well this week in those boys. Just had Andy miss that corner again, Sandy, in the infield. Same corner as yeah, last time. That's alright. Nothing there. It's gonna be close on time with all these cars. We've got the Dale Martin in the 5 and Mark Burrows in the 21. And the next two cars expected to be in. So, Bo Robbo, Andy Brown, one, uh, one, at 1 minute 36 behind. Clayton Chapman, 1 minute 52 behind. Is that total? Total time total over there right hand side. Yep. And uh, Mark Burrows, 4 minutes 35. So, there's a fair, fair gap between yeah. the Place, but then that could change. It's only five and a half minutes between the top five cars, and if you have a small issue, it's it's nothing in that. There's a helicopter from Ultimate off to the left. Chasing someone. So Robbo, did, uh, he literally did two minutes faster than Chappie. On that last lap? On that last lap, who was only four seconds ahead of Andy. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to come down, it's going to get, it's going to be close. And this is only today's... Yep. Overall, so to get this doesn't take into account yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So with the with the uh, the timing, speed zone, and yeah, so it's going to be it's yeah, going to be all unofficial. Out there. Yeah, it's going to be all unofficial at the end. Till I'm told, this is who's got the bag. Yes, that's right. I'm not um, I'm not letting them, uh, saying anything in concrete. <laughs> no, it's all going to be unofficial. That's for sure. But look What's who's come mop? back, Tony. Look who's come back, Sandy. Yeah, the, I was going to go to the canteen, there's no point now, is there? Oh, yeah, Dad's just cleaned it out by look at it. <laughs> He's been gone for an hour and a half. You are right, mate? Good afternoon. What's happening out here? There looks like there's been a bit of moving and shaking while yeah, the... I've been away. I've just been sampling some of the tucker in the uh, the Rainbow Rises ladies' uh, committee tent and uh, can thoroughly recommend the, uh, the food there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and sample. Yeah, there's a little bit left, but not a lot. Let Sandy go have a sandwich now, and I'm, unfortunately, I'm stuck with you, Dad, for the next 15, 20 minutes. Lucky you, lucky you. Now, tell me what's happened. 
with um, the Bo Robinson and Andy Brown scenario? Well, like... it, looks, it looks to us like the Bo Robinson issue has been fixed, as you can see on the screen. Uh, so we've gotten back around to Andy Brown. And so we legit, legitimately, uh, he legitimately he caught him and passed him. He caught him and passed him, yet, and he's put another 45 seconds on him. So as you can see, that Mason truck is just... It's just hauling. And um, Clayton Chapman is... Uh, doing extremely well too. He's right in the equation too. Yeah, as we look for the top five cars with the we're expecting to see the uh, the Dale Martin Jimco and the Mark Burrows, the Monkford car, the top five cars, they're, they're spread over about five and a half minutes. So it's going to be close. With the lap traffic and the other cars coming into it, it's going to be close at the end. Right. So who was leading after the uh, completion of lap five? On track? Yeah. Uh, Bo Robinson, Bo, Bo's first on track. The, we've had our first three cars come through, but the fourth one is just coming around the final corner now. Dale Martin, Adrian Rowe, and the gym coat. Oh, this is he's going to want to get this. There's Motti. Yep, Motti pulled over. So Motti's going out for his yeah, well, fourth lap. So that's that Dale. saved him a bit. It was only just, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah he's caught a break there. Well, that's good of Motti awareness to pull over and. He doesn't want to get tangled up in that. Motti was taking off while uh, Dale Martin was coming through the finish line side by side, but Motti saw him and uh, just lifted, yep. which is good good value. This in-car footage of uh, Bo Robinson and uh, and uh, Shane Hart is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's just taking it right back to you, Andrew. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way he's stepping up this... Great filming uh, production crew we've got going. Look, we're just capturing drones, helicopters, uh, on boards, static cameras. Even one above us, I notice, on the, in the commentary tower here. Yeah, we put a bit of tape over that earlier. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, not in here, no, the one up on top of us. Oh, the one up on top, right. But they're the, as good a shot you're going to get. Listen, that seven-litre Dugan. Crisp is enough. Yeah, paddle ship. There we go on the our fifth car, Mark Burrows in the in the monk. And that handles extremely well on look and, and just look at the whoops. Yep. It's got the King Shocks, Alvin's transmission. It's got the, the Cadillac V6. Yep, correct. Oh, the whole oh, oh, GM or Cadillac or whichever yep. you like to call it, the V6 twin turbo. Just really strong engine built um, yep. by Stewie in uh, Brisbane. Stewie Noel. Yeah, look at, look at the car. Not a mark on it, not a scratch on it. Um, preparation second to none. Eight times Australian champion. Yep. And Doing it with his son, Tom. I'm sure Tom's desperate to get the keys. Yes, but I think you have to wait a little bit longer. So Matthew, the, the eldest son's out in Mark's old car, but Tom, the youngest son, is sitting next to Mark, so... He's screaming for the keys, but he, yeah, he's going to have to earn it. Beautiful day out there, but still a bit of chill in the air. And but the wind—the main thing is the wind is still up. And that's that's, that's as you said it's earlier. It's, uh, it's brought the uh, temperature, mean temperature, down a little bit. A bit fresh, but um, ideal conditions now for the. Uh, the drivers and navigators out there. Yeah, this is a new section we've got. Going along the fence of another camera angle. It just really shows the speed and the... Look at that Polaris. Yeah, that King Chrome Polaris of uh, Jackson, uh, Jackson Evans. Evans. This is the one that had the wheel pointing the wrong way yesterday, but they got lucky it happened just before the finish. But that car would be in the top 10 outright somewhere there. close. Yeah, it'd be going really well. Looks like they're moving the drones and moving the cameras around a bit like they did uh, yesterday afternoon. For yeah, the... it's, it's just a great production of the way we're getting all the shots from everywhere around the circuit. You can see the Burroughs car in the background there. With 671, well, 6... 611. 11 leading the start line now. Yes, Brendan Hill on the start of his final section. Starting to thin out a little bit now and spread the cars out with these service brakes. And you look at Mark, he just looks smooth. 
He's been racing for oh, since '76, I think it was. That's 48 years. That's a long time. But uh, yeah, preparation. You don't see him sitting on the couch. He's just in the shed. Puts all the hard yards in. Puts all the work. You know, the old prepare to fail. You know, fail, prepare, prepare, prepare to fail. That's it. And he does it great. drone footage out in the uh, desert, sand there, Had a few drop out this morning with Danny Brown, Stuart Chapman, Robert Plant, Trevor Chandler. I see young Cooper Weston got going again. He obviously had an issue and he was stopped for a while, but uh, he got going. And I think, has he gone out as yet? Yeah, I went over and spoke to Chris <laughs> after you um, hung a bit of uh, crap on him earlier. And he said that um, it, it lost fourth gear, but that, I think they've had another issue um, since that. But they got going again, and yeah, he just out there to finish and having a good time. Good. It's a long way for them to come from the Gold Coast, sunny Queensland. It's a long way down here in the western Victoria. Yep. We see the Bentley uh, Class 10. Yeah, young Henders in navigating for uh, Sam. Yep. Brother and sister. Look at it work. That's a working very nicely. The suspension on that car. Yeah, they're really happy with it. I was just speaking to Hayden, and uh, yep. they're really happy with the car. Racer Engineering, which is built in the United States, Class 10. Up to two and a half litre capacity. Yep, great class. Normally aspirated, of course. Now we're back to the Mason. All right, we're just going to cut to a uh, bit of an ad break with a few sponsors and uh, then we're going to put you back on board with Bo Robertson and Shane Hart. Uh, so sit back and, and relax and um, yeah, we'll be back shortly. Thank you to our amazingly generous sponsors. Without their ongoing support, we couldn't even begin to think about hosting an event like this year's Steely, ARB, Rainbow, Big Desert 480. So a big thanks must go to our major sponsors. Steely, Paint for Steel, the Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. ARB, 4x4 Accessories. Mickey Thompson, Legendary Off-Road Tires. Rainbow Rise Events Association Raceline Wheels Dynamic Wheel Co, Australia's hottest and toughest wheel And the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship Steel at ARB Big Desert Race wouldn't have been possible without the involvement of the following sponsors. Quality Metal Solutions. Chase More Heavy Haulage. Ultimate Helicopters. Rally Saver. PMD Race Products. Millie's Media. Promotional products and uniforms. And Andrew makes wines. This year's steal at ARB Big Desert Race wouldn't have been possible without the involvement of the following sponsors. The Australasian Autosport Alliance. The Australian Off-Road Racing Association. The Hindmarsh Shire Council. 
grain core. Wimmera Mallee Waste. The Rainbow IGA. And SP Tools. This year's steel at ARB Rainbow Big Desert 480 is honoured to have the following class title sponsors. Unlimited Class and Class 10, proudly sponsored by Marson Race Transmissions. Class 1 by Show and Go Photography. Class 2, proudly supported by Dart Transport. Class 4, Warrigal Machining and Mechanical Repairs. Class 5, Browns Gypsum. Class 6, proudly supported by GRC Motorsport. Classes 66 and 9, the Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. Classes 7 and 11, proudly supported by Gold Acres. Thanks again to all our sponsors. It's just nominated on the screen. Without them, we don't have events like this. Terrific race weekend here. Got some good coverage now of uh, aerial coverage of a buggy out in the desert. Level 5-4 comes through the finish line. Darren van der Waal. Simon Tucker in the uh, Southern Cross buggy, just leaving the start line. Car 110. Next uh, 20 minutes or so, those uh, first 
four or five cars are probably about uh, halfway around the, third, the last lap now, lap six. Yeah, we're back on board with Bo and Shane and then Mason. They're out the back in the uh, in the desert, the sandy desert country, out the back of the circuit. We've got their, obviously, that's when they're right out the back. The the stream keeps dropping in and out. It's got the Starlink up on the roof of the vehicle, pointing skywards. This Tucker, look at this Tucker car. When it's yeah, look at it, it just it's, drives the wheels off it. To your handles well too. That's yeah, Southern Cross. Southern Cross. V6. It's been in the top uh, half a dozen yeah. all weekend. Yeah, it's just... Green and white, just, it's just doing it all. It's the 68 goes through, the Barnett car. Little Miss car across the back on the live stream, out the back. The Beam car. That's in the heavy sand. You wouldn't know it. It's just digging holes and making those holes deeper. We've got a drone shot now. Plenty of drones, cameras, onboards. Just remarkable footage where we're getting for you at home or the event on the big screen. Helicopters out. Yeah, remember there's helicopter rides, ultimate helicopters. Yep. Out the back here, so uh, I tell you what's a good opportunity to uh, go for a helicopter ride. It's the Mickle Fab truck. Yep. I'm going to uh, leave you boys with it. We've got the Danny Brown's going to come up and answer all your questions, give you all the right answers give you a uh, rundown on how his weekend and the new car and how all that's going so I'll um, I'll jump out and then uh, Danny can take over for the next four hours I'll give you four minutes there's the 10 car of uh, Stephen Bowie Graham Danny. goes through Danny Brown here well, we are welcome back mate a little earlier than I wanted to yeah, be here. here it was a uh, car 42 out there earlier folks what happened? Um, we had an issue with the gearbox yesterday, which we knew we had, um, bearing on the input shaft. And, um, yeah, I think it's just got super hot in the centre of the bearing carrier there, and it's uh, it snapped uh, when we're doing 232 k's now. We came over a crest, so this went straight to the limit. Nothing locked up. We just rolled to a stop. And um, it's, I'm glad it happened where it did, because if it happened down the back, it would have been it? horrible to recover out there. And uh, the old man's still going out there. Yeah. yeah and he's, he's doing real well. We... Um, we thought he might have an issue because Bo got back past, and um, we radioed him I when we saw him. I think Bo had the issue with his second gear, so... I think Bo had an issue getting passed by a pensioner, so yeah. <laughs> that's why he's back on it. So, um, And, yeah, Bo, um, we spoke to Hardman, and Hardman said, no, nah, everything's fine. Bo's just driving like a maniac, so Bo's having a real crack out there, I think. And, yeah. You know, I mean, that, that truck out there would just be eating up those whoops. Be, even Bo says it's, it's horrible, but horribly rough, so, but he can probably push a bit harder in that stuff than the, than the buggies. And uh, going on to things like the championship, mate, I know we've seen we've got four rounds again this year, same rounds as last year. The championship seems to be moving from strength to strength. Um, ARB obviously have backed that since, since its inception Yep. with Mickey Thompson tyres, obviously Race on Wheels now on board. Yeah. Um, any any differences moving forward in the championship in, in maybe even next year? Um, look, I mean, it's always it's always you know options of you know adding another race, um, dropping around. It it is getting hard now. Like you know, I'm out, so I'm, I just know I can win the championship. Our, our um, current champion Brent, he's out. He can't win the championship this year. Um, so you know, sometimes there's a bit to be said for being able to drop around. Um, so you know, do you add another round so you can drop one? Do you do best of three, best of four? Um, yeah. So there's there's a lot of things we can do moving forward. I think, but. Um, 
you know, the, the rounds we've got, the clubs we've got are, have been really good. Um, they're spaced out pretty well. Um, allow some people to go to some other races and, and contend for the championship as well. And, I mean, at the moment, we're just uh, focusing on the live stream um, and getting it to the people at home. Is, uh, that's come, really that's come along a long, yeah, a long way on. as well. Each, um, each time we go out, it seems to get better and better and more cameras and different ways of doing things. And, and yeah, we've, Obviously, we've got a it's a hard thing with. to do that in the middle of the desert as well. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, things like Starlink are making stuff a lot easier. And um, the setup they've got here is pretty impressive with the switching in the back of the truck. Yep. Um, but... You know, it's um. You know, the other thing is we've got to work to a budget too. You know, if we could spend a hundred grand around on, oh, on TV, it'd be awesome. But you know, amazing. It's hard to get we need return. massive sponsorship behind that. Yeah. So we, you know, it's you know, you, you gotta you just gotta start things small and, and build them up and, yeah. and go from there. Um, who's your pick for this weekend, mate? Now, now that you're out, um, I, I picked you and I've done my dough <laughs> on you and AJ, and uh, I think Bo's my only one that I picked. And the only reason I didn't pick some of the other cars, you know. It's the first car that uh, first time that your, the other your other cars been, been out, out in a race out yep. here. That's why I wiped it off for this this yeah. first round. I know it did really well in America. It's first race, um, and there was a few others there that I thought, oh, we'll uh, leave them to the side just because these other guys have had these cars out here a while going. So yeah, you know, like I know Brent's had such a tried and true thing, and you know he had a, a yeah, exactly, a and I knew he was coming out with a different parts. engine or something. I thought, yeah. oh, and. Um, Dale and AJ in uh, the five car. Yeah, and that's had a major birthday, that thing, that new motor. And all like, I'm everything. Not, I'm not, uh, but it's done really well so far. Hopefully they come in with a good, with a good finish. Yeah, so Can't yeah, be sitting it's going to be, gonna be hard to go past Bo at the moment. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting between um, Dad and Chappie as well to see where sort of that lines up because they're all pretty tight on times there. And Chappie um, seems to be uh, on fire on those fast stages. And yeah. I think the the suspension is what might be hurting him out in the desert section. Yeah, I, it's it's unbelievably rough and it's it's inconsistent. You know, it's like somewhere like Fink where the you know they're pretty evenly spaced and pretty evenly sized, and you sort of know what you're getting into. But out here, they you know they could be four foot deep, one foot deep, you know, ten yeah. foot apart, three foot apart. You know, yeah. it's, so it's a bit hard to see bow on the screen. Yeah, we saw on the way back in, you know. Uh, all three of those, you know, Bo, Clayton, and, and the old cheese was coming back in, all doing around 230k an hour. Yeah, we pulled the pulled the data out of the GPS yesterday. That was two 227 was the fastest he saw yesterday. Yeah, um, and I think uh, in our car 233 was about the fastest we saw yesterday too. Yeah. But you, know, there was you don't really morning. want to do much faster than there at the moment no, with the cars, with the <laughs> handling. They, they have no downforce. They're not. No. And the, the amount of wheel travel you got, they just wander because you only do those boats, those speeds on some, you know, some sort of graded, loose, loose gravel graded roads. roads, and and they, you know, they sort of tinker left to right, and it's a bit, a bit of a handful of those speeds. Yeah, um, I don't know where Bo is on on the on the track, but uh, these these top guys, they're about. Uh, oh, nearly, they're halfway through the, or more than halfway through the desert section. So yeah, it looks like Bo's pulled a little bit of a gap. Yeah, he's on Andy out there in that second section. Bo's real quick in there, and um, yeah, I think there was a bit, of, maybe a bit of dust there from um, Cooper Weston. Um, but it's, it is hard to pass, you know. Even you know Cooper's not slow, so it's um, it's hard to catch up on the back and get past them. You've got to be a bit lucky sometimes with the spots you catch uh, people wing. We caught a class six yesterday, and uh, it was the first lap that we came across. And it was when you go into that river, riverbed section, yeah. and it's just like bull dust in there, and there's a lot of trees, so you can't, you know, you can't take can't any risks. You nah. just gotta drive Sit on the track, it. you know, and just and just be patient and wait. There's a, the old cheese. Yeah. Along. Doing That's quite I saw a couple of videos of it last week, but it seems to be jumping really nicely out here. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, uh, landing smooth, landing even, not nose heavy. I thought it might have been a little bit nose heavy with that extra diff in the front, but obviously they've got the balance right in that car. Yeah, we went out and did some testing in Plaster City with um, Todd and Dunkey from SDG. Um, you know, they do both truck here, they do all the truck trucks in America and, and my car. And they know what they're doing. Um, and yeah, we're out there in the, in the real rough stuff and got it, got it handling really nice. And yeah, it seems to, seems no to changing, jump. No changing suspension for the next race or anything? No, nah, we'll leave it, leave leave it, it as it is. Yeah, it, you, get it, it, you get it in that window where it works well. and, um, and it's, it's never going to be spot on for every race, nah, but you can get a happy medium throughout the whole championship. And, uh, yeah. Obviously, coming to Griffith. Yep, yep. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that four-wheel drive goes at Griffith. It's nice and tight there, so I think it'll be a bit of a rocket there yeah. um, through that stuff. It just gets out of the corners so well. And we were a bit worried about the top speed, but because um, when we were in Mexico, we didn't really get the top speed we were used to saying. And 
with that said here, it's, it's no worries at all. We'll, um, we'll probably pull the cam on that and change it. We just want to bring the torque down a bit lower because you've really got to rev that car to get it going. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of work to it. And we'll... What motor's in that one? That's an LS, uh, so the 427, but I think it's got all the fruit. There's not much yeah. LS left in it. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a, I mean, a good, reliable thing. Um, so I think we're revving that to about 7.5. It's probably good to go to 8, but we don't want to push it that far. It sort of makes its, it starts making its power and, and torque really late. So that's why you're having to rev the thing so hard. Yeah, the dust is still... Uh, the dust hasn't got any any better it's only the wind's kept up yeah how was this morning's takeoff mate oh, we just we couldn't even see where Sibo is on the track here on the screens people we couldn't even see that this morning yeah right. we were lucky to see the start finish banner um so by the time you know the fifth and sixth cars had taken off we literally we had no idea but obviously you had a clear run yeah I mean, to start with we were, we were having a giggle to ourselves because we just knew there was, <laughs> there was no wind and it was just horrid it was just hanging so and because it was um, it was quite brisk this morning too, those the, you know the turbo cars love that cold air. So yeah. I mean, we were, yesterday we were changing to fourth gear, we were changing into fifth this morning. It was that yeah, much quicker, right. it makes yeah, that much nice. difference. Yeah. Well, thanks thanks for swinging in by, no Danny. At all. Uh, for commiserations for the weekend, but I'm sure yeah. we'll see you take out another podium at Griffith, up at Hillston in New South Wales for round two of the Australian. The ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship in 2024. All right, thanks a lot for that. Thank you, mate. There you are, folks. Danny Brown, he was our leader this morning. Had a gearbox bearing failure. <coughs> they, they knew it was hurt this morning when they were heading out, but we're hoping it would last the distance. Please. Yeah, they were. They did the right things last night. Uh, Drain the oil out and uh, anything else that was in the gearbox and uh, thickened it up a bit. But uh, you know they had a they had a go and uh, didn't ask him whether it totally destroyed itself or how much damage and it did. To say it just snapped one of the shafts or yeah, something. So, so hopefully, hopefully an easy repair. Yep. They've probably got 42 gearboxes sitting in the back of their truck anyway. As the Bowie car comes into the pits again for its second visit, so... Uh, Something may be amiss. Yeah, it's a disappointing last lap. and They uh, were our leading class 10. Yes. And uh, he's left it open for Dean uh, McGinley, McGinley now in 1087 because uh, Bowie was uh, travelling really well and, uh, yeah, he's, um, he's in the pits. Is Jordan Patterson still going? From what I know, he's just entered the edge of the desert. We I haven't seen his car move, but he he's sitting up there on the edge of the desert, mate. Oh, okay. Um, yep. With the Tucker car about to come up around into the desert. So I don't know if he, he hasn't moved for a minute. So he may be stopped there repairing, you know, hopefully just a tyre or something silly. I tell you what, that Tucker car has really impressed me. Here, Here the, Bentley the, the Bentley family. family yeah. Sam and I, one left to go. Uh, say, Hannah's, Hannah's in the and, passenger uh, seat. Hannah, sorry. I, Hannah. Yeah, hey, a lot of hey, we in front of us here somewhere stressing about that. There he is. Yeah. He's smiling, so that's all. So is Mum. Mum's stressing. <laughs> Mum's biting her nails off. It's the first time they've travelled together ever in an off yeah. road car. So. Um, yeah. If it's anything like my kids... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my kids, I must say, they're at home watching this weekend. Uh, they're pretty good. They get along quite well, and I'm, we're only a year or two off getting into our kids in cars as well. Well, this might be a test of the family for the for Hannah and Sam, but yeah. uh, be interesting. And you know, and now, this is an interesting, interesting entry on the start line. You'll see on the front of this car, uh, there is a disabled sticker. This man does only have one leg just goes to show folks don't let anything hold you back bloody inspiration good to see, uh, to see him out here this weekend and he's still circulating many are so see him leave the line in, in any second now and this is Vaughan Hogan is it 626 yeah 626 Hogan's Heroes I see nothing. <laughs> I love that show. They've been circulating reasonably well. I know they're down the down the lower end of the field, but somebody has to be. 
I always say that, that can that can change quite quickly. Without, sort of place without like fast this. people, you don't have slow people. And without slow people, you don't have fast people. So we had the chopper take off a few minutes ago. I saw it in the air. Been um, been giving a few rides. There's the Bentley entry. They've just left for their last lap. Last lap. There he goes. 626, Vaughan Hogan. It's warmed up a bit up in here. Still, it has, still breezy it's a bit chilly outside. outside. Yeah, it's a bit brisky now with the, the wind that's come up. You see Bo Robbo's not far. He's pretty much coming out of the desert now around towards the creek section. So he's still a little ways away, but... Opened up that gap between him and Andy. Uh, as Danny just said before, you know, Bo's, Bo's on a mission and he's faster in that rough, rough second half of the desert. So. Especially if he sorted out that downshift problem with the yeah, paddle shift. I think shift. that was his big issue, wasn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> That's why uh, Andy got around him in the first place. But, uh, you know, obviously they've corrected that issue and uh, it's just made it into a... A faster jet than what it was initially. Probably not the car you want to start in one of these top cars, are they? Not you ideal. Wanna, you want to no. cut your teeth in something smaller. Eh? Even if you've got the budget, I would say go and do a few rounds in a smaller car first. Even though Bowie started off in a pro <laughs> buggy, so... Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's just been all big stuff right from the word go. Dale Martin... Open the, open the gap a little bit between him and Mark Burrows. Dale Martins just over halfway through this last lap. Still got clean air. He's had clean air for, for a, a long time, yeah. 627 over the line. We have uh, Justin Ryder. boot my computer again but I haven't got an overall time unfortunately folks I'd love to give you an overall time but Bo Robbo coming into lap 3 1 hour 33 Chappie at 1 hour 35 and Andy Brown at 1 hour 35 that was as they crossed that was as they crossed the line into their last lap today and not including yesterday's I don't have an overall time race time Sorry, Bo Robbo, an overall race time today, 1 hour 22, Andy Brown, Bo Robbo, 1 hour 22, Andy Brown, 136 behind, a yeah, minute 36 behind and him and, and Chappie at 1 minute 52, so... Yeah, it was only 20 odd seconds between that, that once again that doesn't include yesterday's time I don't yep. have that on this particular computer well we've still got a fair few cars circulating out there Hoping most of the people have left on their last last lap. I can see Matty Hummer, who was down the back end of the field, he's um, he's on his way back out for his. I would imagine his third lap. Here comes Stephen Bowie Graham again. Who's going to have another attempt? He, this is uh, second or third attempt. That's not ideal, too. Well, no, he, uh, he was having a really good run. The side by side is snuck through in between him. <laughs> Tell you what, you get tired towards the end of this, the weekend doing this job, concentrating on everything that's in front of us. 
physically easy, but mentally, oh, yeah, draining. Yeah, yeah. mentally draining. The honey Badger. Yep, it'd be 104, is it? Indeed, Dave Watson. Fifth lap. Fifth lap complete. Alright, Bo's, Bo's about to come down that main straight, so we'll have to get our camera back in and we'll stick the camera in his face when he comes in. Uh, I know he'll be hot and flustered, but. There he is, we can see him in the distance no, now. I think that's 422, mate, to be honest. Uh, oh, is it? Bo's just coming onto the start of that straight, so he's got a side by side he's got to overtake. He's got a uh, triple one zeros coming up in front of him, so hopefully that doesn't hold him up too much. That's the Franklin entry. And then um, car 11's in there as well, car 422 that you just saw over on your left. So we've got, we've probably got a couple of minutes gap between him and Andy still. Bo and Andy by the looks of it. Yeah, Stephen Bowie is unfortunately, he's, when he's gone out, he's... Bowie Graham, he's just come in behind that side by side and he's just trying to peg it back. So seven. Bowie's come back into the pits. Bowie's okay. Yeah. He's not having a good run. He's obviously got an ongoing issue. Bowie's just around the chicane, folks. So your current on-road race leader will be making dust down the far left-hand tree line in the distance above the finish. Start finish. Yeah. about to catch that little triple one zero side by side of the Franklin. Oh, well, he's going to catch it pretty quick if that's good. And that can get dangerous, as you know. You know, you, you, you both be doing 100k an hour faster than these both. There's something wrong with Chappie's, Chappie's uh, thing. You're telling me he's doing 296k an hour. Well, I know that isn't true. Telling me Bo Robbo's doing 302 k's an hour. Uh, number two, Dave and Alice Middlemiss go through the finish line. They must have one more lap as well. Yep. Yeah, the trucks love this place, don't they? Like yeah, Greg Gardner. Yeah, yeah. We've had a lot of good it's success here. We've had a lot of success yeah, here. Lunch, fellas. Oh, how was yeah, well, it? Well, there wasn't much left when I went over there to get a snack. I there'll, tell be, you. there'll be nothing left now. <laughs> no, this you can still get a quick feed over there. I've got a zooper duper and a bucket of chips. You could probably, if you're still quick enough, you get your ticket in for the fridge, for the raffle. You can do that at home too, I believe. You can do that online at home. Yep. Get a raffle ticket. So we, if you want to be quick. We just saw the Bowie car go back out and back in again. Twice. Twice. So yeah. in and out, in and out. So that's it's obviously that's not good. Got issues. Yep. Not good at all. I'll tell you what. Bo Robbo should be literally. We should be able to see him somewhere. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down, fellas. I'm gonna leave you with it. I'm gonna go down and see if I can't grab a spot. Yep. To, yep. Uh, jam a microphone in his face. So I'm sure he'll love soon. that. 
Shouldn't be too much longer. We've got a lot of cars a in here. A lot of cars as dusted as in, Lee. Yeah. We've got the middle miss car. Bridge. Yep. The middle miss car in the infield. I can hear a seven litre Duggan. Dugan. Dugan. There it is. We're on board with it at the moment. It's that nervy little time now where you, you, you the lead car on track. You have not far to go and you start hearing little noises and little... But this is where right, getting right towards the end and it can become a little bit, you know... There oh, he is. There he is through the last gate. Final last corner. Right-hander. Yep. Up the... We have our first car straight. across the line. The triple one three of Bo Robinson and Shane Hart. It's uh, provisionally the first on track. First on, we're, we're going to get the time sorted once everyone comes in, but our first finisher of lap six, section three, uh, the triple one three of Bo Robinson and Shane Hart. Sounds like he's doing a donut in the background there somewhere. Yep. Yeah, no doubt he is doing a bit of something. It's no. a good shakedown for the boys. Had a few issues, but first car in. Triple one zero completes lap five. Darren Franklin. So they'll uh, come down and stop in front of us. Sure, they got yeah. their. Uh... Where's Andy Brown? He's. I uh, can see him just coming down the uh, the tree line, not far from the finish line. So. Uh, yep. He's done extremely well in that uh, that new uh, all-wheel drive Luma Craft. Yeah, we have got the uh, Robinson car coming in there. Some men got their friends and family watching. Got Sandy down there on the. Uh, it's taken a bit more body work off that front left corner, but got uh, Sandy's going to capture some chat with the boys. But we got here's Andy Brown through the last uh, yep. gate. Great drive from Andy and uh, Danny Hardman in the uh, new Alumacraft all-wheel drive, eleven forty-two across the line. Just looks like it's uh, fresh. Yep. Gee, jumps well. Yep. Just goes well. Danny was saying before GPS a 227, so uh, it's got good speed too. So Yeah, it seems to be doing everything. All right, we're going to cut down to Sandy Bowman, who's got the uh, the man of the hour down there. So take it away, Sandy. <laughs> I won't repeat what Bo just said, but it was something along the lines of I want to get back out and do another lap. Is that right, mate? Yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> look, at fucking, look at the poor thing. <laughs> Looks good. Done to it. I wasn't steering, mate. It looks like you got your mojo back, got second gear back at the end. Nice. What the hell? Um, Coming yeah. back to Rainbow well, again then. Can't have, a, can't have a 60 year old man beating me. <laughs> can you? <laughs> That's you know? what Danny said. He said he didn't want you to get overtaken by a retiree, so you <laughs> wound the wicker. I thought he was the retard then. <laughs> he was the retard. Nah, nah. How'd you um, go? You look, yeah, no, look good, good man. Super impressive on that last section, huh? Yeah, yeah. We just had to pull our finger out. We can't, yeah. Second gear's back on the action? That's it. That's it. No, we're all yep. good, so um, no, thanks everyone. everyone. Well done. First car back in. Yeah. We'll see how this all turns out, eh? Yeah. yeah. All right, well done. That was Bo Robbo. Shane in the passenger seat. How'd you feel? Uh, insane. Madness. Insanity. It's like a cage fight out there, you know? <laughs> Far out. Uh, yeah, I'm Shane's got a lot to do with the production out here this weekend. You wouldn't think he can do it for the passenger seat, especially in this car, but uh, it's all come together in the end. No, well, it was a late call-up. He's. Uh, I got the live stream now. My my boys, Charden and Phil, and that have taken over, and I, I think they had a live stream working out of this car at some stage today. Yep, so most of the day. Hopefully everybody enjoyed some of those battles and some of his madness. That's what I get to see, so... Um, Thanks to him and thanks to Drew and Jake and you know all the boys, Brady and everyone hauled everything across the country, you know, to be here and it's a great championship and far out. We actually won something. You know, <laughs> I'll ta take a trophy home to Harrison, stick it on his mantelpiece. All right, well done, mate. So, uh, thanks for that. Yep. All right, we'll go down. Uh, I can hear the Illumicraft in the background, so we're just going to go down and see Andy Brown second over the line in the first 
first event in Australia for this four wheel drive buggy. See Danny Brown there. In here with Andy Brown. Looks a little red in the face. But I can understand why. Letting some temps cool down. Let him get a swig of water before I jab a microphone in his face. Super impressive, mate. You boys did well? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Bo's taken off like a rabbit. He really did. He's an idiot. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he was a bit upset that a retiree was pulling away from him there for a minute, so he... Uh, he wound it up again towards the end, but I watched that gap just slowly get opened up. The car looked super impressive this weekend, though, for its first run in Australia. Oh, I'm absolutely wrapped in it. It's good in the rough. It's it's starting to handle. I'm starting to get used to it. It's um, yeah, it's a great package. Really, really happy. Um, All right. Well, second over the line. Well done. We'll see you at round two, guys. Cool. Yeah, we'll be there some way, shape, or form. I'll get a new back and I'll be there. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well done. That was... Uh, Andy Brown and Danny Harbin, 11.42. And the little 2J-powered car driven by Clayton Chapman, third over the line. Now, this was a stellar effort also. A little bit less travel than the other guys. The first of our uh, ultimate class cars, remembering that these two cars in front are class 11s, which is the new big boy class. And... Uh, Clayton and Adam have been at it for a long time since I started. We both started roughly around the same time. They're second generation. <coughs> and uh, gone from class sevens and eights and all the way up to this thing. And well done, mate. Third across the line today. Didn't quite get there, but I tell you what, you closed the gap a few times. Yeah, righty yeah. We um, don't you, know what... And I've got to tell you, you, don't, you look, look like you've got out the car. You look like you're about to get in in the morning. You haven't <laughs> changed. You're not sweating. You don't look like the other boys that look like they've been working hard, so obviously you weren't pushing hard enough. <laughs> oh, I don't know, mate. Um, yeah, it was rough out there, rough and tough, but yeah, I don't know, we yeah, it was just, we pushed through. We had a bit of a bad noise coming in probably the last 10K there. It sounded like a CV maybe starting to let go, so we just pulled it back. We, were just, <laughs> we wanted to finish this thing badly. So, um, oh, mate, just can't believe it. That was just great, great effort. We just pushed around, um, huge effort by the team. Um, every service break, just getting in there, just um, checking it out. But we just can't, yeah, the, the speed line 2J and the Razorback just uh, just got us through. And, um, yeah, we just can't believe it. Awesome. The suspension in this is probably not quite what the things like Bose truck are, but um, I noticed uh, you seem to sit well with them in most spots. It was only really the rough, one rough section of the desert you dropped back a little bit. Yeah, that's probably fair, I suppose. This car's going on about 20 years old. Yeah, so we're, 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 lack, talk, we're lacking a bit about of travel. two cars, that one's brand new. Yeah, yeah, that's so, it. So, yeah, yeah. and, and um, but yeah, and we, I suppose we run our, growing up in the class seven, class eight world, so like more rally car cross yeah. country. We probably run our cars a bit more like that. Um, and up home in Queensland, a lot of our tracks are fast and flat. So we like a, a stiffer, kind of more predictive car in that. Um, and then in the rough, maybe we do trade off a little bit of speed there. But it's comfy, it gets us through, and we don't break anything. So we're, um, yeah, it's what we love about this sport. It doesn't matter. Everybody has their own way of doing things, but everybody can be fast. So we love it. <laughs> All right, there you are, Clayton Chapman. Adam's having a little break here. He's sat next to Clayton now for about nearly 20 years, I suppose. It's been a long and, time. And um, last couple of... Excuse me. Last couple of big ones actually come in on the podium, so that's good to see. Yeah, we're finally getting some fruit for our efforts. We it's had a long awesome. time there with the Triton that struggled, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that but, one um... gave us a lot of character building, and those years <laughs> are paying off now, I tell you now. Yeah. We're doing a lot of smart racing out there, and um, it's finally paying off you for two, us. You two look as fresh as the time you got in this morning, I tell you. Well done. Yeah, I feel good today. Yesterday beat me up more, I reckon, but uh, today's good. All right, there you are, Adam. Sits in next to Clayton in car 15. We'll go back to you guys for a minute until the next round come in, but uh, that's your, your provisional top three for the minute down here at the Steel at ARB Big Desert 480. First three over the line. We've got a long way to go. There's still plenty of cars out there. I think there's still about 30 cars circulating. So there you are. Thanks for that, Sandy. We um, expect the looking at the rally safe here. With the, looks like the the 21 of Mark Burrow should be the next car in. So 
Um, Dale Martin in the five was ahead with that on the last lap, but it's looking like Mark's passed Dale on this last lap. Just updating for us, but Mark's sort of coming in on that final straight towards the uh, the complex. So Dale must have Dale's still moving, but it's he's had a slight little issue by the look of it. So that's uh, first three cars in provisionally: Bo Robinson, Andy Brown, and Clayton Chapman. So our uh, Position four, provisionally, will be the 21. The Monk Fabrication, Mark Burrows and Tom Burrows. You can see now, just that's the dust sign of the, the 21. It's a great finish for these guys. Here it comes down now, turning through the uh, the gate. Have all the family and friends on the fence ready to go. So uh, it's still uh, Dale's still moving, but he did. He was in front of Mark on course for the start of the last lap, so. Might have just been a slight problem or a flat tyre or who knows. Here comes, uh, is that, oh no, that's still Mark. Babylon back. <laughs> yeah, it's coming... Dale's only just turning on. Dale's just coming out of the creek section at the top. So when he comes onto the finish straight, should be... He's just turning onto the last straight now. Great shot out the back. The McGinley car, the Tatum, working its way across the paddock. last lap. I think he's probably taken the class with the issues that Bowie had. He's probably taken the class lead at, at this point. Still some good footage, Lee, from out the back there. You've got the little Super 1650, our, our sole lonely so last one. Oh, it's the only one entered. So hopefully these boys can um, get it around. Hopefully they can get it to the end. Shouldn't be far off. The Burroughs car should be... Right in front of us at any minute now. So, uh, Mark and Tom Burrow should be in car 21 in the Monk's Fab buggy. You can see it on the screen now in the tunnel chute just before the finish line. Yep, up through the last, last corner, corner. And through the gate. So, provisionally, uh, Four. the fourth car in. Still looks clean as a whistle, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. Tidy as. It's a great result for father son combination. It's getting windier. Yes, it is blowing up now. And there's the dust, I'd say, of Dale Martin over there in the distance, Lee. Yep, that's our number five car. 
just going down that tree line, that far straight. So he had a minor problem on the last lap. Yeah, he's lost about five minutes or so. So, you know, it's it's kind of uh, getting around that uh, puncher type time, isn't it? But there it is now. You can see it in the distance. Still got plenty of speed. Sandy's still floating down there somewhere. We'll be able to catch up with these... These guys, as they come in. Rubbing shoulders with all the place getters down there and winners. Yep. So you yeah, see the... Yeah, Dale's just entered the complex through the gate down the bottom. Look at Mark's car. Looks like it hasn't even done anything. Amazing, isn't it? Yep. Well, they're all very similar. Like, uh, yeah, it's always good to take them home when they've got mud all over them. I mean, you know, dust is... A bit of fiberglass missing off uh, Bo's car off yeah. the front and a bit yeah. of tape. and uh, A lot easier. And the rear um, step-side panels are missing, but, uh, yeah, the buggies just uh, look like they haven't even done it. Here's another vehicle there entering the uh, complex. Yeah, well, after Dale, it should be the uh, the Tucker car, 110. The Southern Cross. That's our next place vehicle on, on course, on its last lap. bit spread out as we look on the rally safe they're all we've got cars spread all over the circuit at the moment some are on their second last lap some are on their last some have had issues getting going again some have stopped it's a challenging race this the uh the big desert 480 just to finish here is an accomplishment About to see our uh, fifth car provisionally on track. Fifth, fifth car, number fifth car five. Car in, number five. It's a good hit out for these guys. It's a relatively new car, had a bit of an upgrade, a Up change in power plant. Yeah, a fair bit, a fair few modifications over the summer for this uh, this team in this particular car. So. Uh, it's uh, plenty of seat time and uh, a good effort first up. Yep. Whoop. As uh, yeah, 554 comes up. Bandy's going back out, but here we go. The number five, Dale Martin, Adrian Rowe. It's our fifth car in. Yeah, we're going to cut back down to Sandy, who's got uh, Mark Burrows with him. Off to you, Sandy. Tell you what, we're down here with uh, eight-time Australian champion Mark Burrows and young Burrows in the passenger seat. Uh, fourth over the line, a little bit of a gap between you and these other three, but that doesn't mean that the corrected time, this is all provisional at the moment, but uncorrected time, fourth over the line at the moment. Yep. Um, you seem to have a bit of fun out there. You look pretty fresh after a after 480 k's of a rainbow's finest as well. Yes, well, it's uh, certainly the finest. That's uh, the sand out the back's got really rough now. So, uh, but that's off-road racing, isn't it? Yeah, it's got fast at the start and a bit of rough out the back, and there, yeah, no, great, it's great fun, good this, fun. This car had no dramas on the weekend. We, it looked really well sorted. Yep. Um, 
you know, you've done a lot of work in the off-season, obviously, and it's paid off today. Yes, no, it has. No, the car ran perfectly. We didn't have to do anything to it all weekend. So, uh, so it just needs a younger driver in it now, I think, to get it up the front, up front. Oh, but, that's uh, happening. But not that's far coming off. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah so... You'll be delegated to uh, crew chief in no time, crew I reckon, eh? Yeah, yeah, so the young Tom in with me, and he did a great job today in the yeah. navigator seat, so he's done all of last year, and he'll be doing all this year, and uh, then we'll see what goes from there. And Matthew's still going, as far as I know, yeah. so yeah. so hopefully he'll get in too. Apart from his little issue with the power steering, power steering he's, yes. you know, he's done a cracker run this yes. weekend overall as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah, a bit of power steering hose in the prologue, which dropped him back a bit, but uh, anyway, he's still going, and that's the main thing. Yeah, all right, well, well done. Thank Good you. Good to see you at the finish line, yep. guys. Thank you. There you are. Car 21, the Burroughs team. One of the Martin cars in fifth place. They uh, had a little bit of drama here with this car last year. And uh, Dale and AJ across the line. Fifth on track, fifth on road, but we're not too sure on provisional results. I'll let them get a breath and... Get out of their gear. There's a lot of safety gear, as you can see in here. They've got harnesses, they've got Hans devices, helmets. These guys have got uh, blowers into their helmets for fresh air. Hey, Dale. How are you going, mate? Going well? Yeah, that's uh, that's glad that's over. It's pretty rough. It's the roughest track I've ever been on. But guess what? Car's finished the race. We We're on from here. That's exactly what we wanted. So I just said to AJ, that's what we wanted to do: is get out, get through this. <laughs> um, tell me about what. Tell me about how it went. Like uh, any dramas with the car? The car seemed pretty solid all weekend. Getting a feel for it. Obviously, a new car from from what you've been in the last eighteen months. So yeah, the car was fine. We got a flat tire. Then twenty k's out, uh, didn't hit anything. Just I reckon it's just a punishing of the tires in the sand. They got hot. The sidewall fell out of it. I reckon. To hit that enough, and the um, it sounds like uh, obviously AJ got out and changed that in about 30 seconds, so that wouldn't have been a drama. He's a uh, the pinnacle of fitness over there. He did pretty well, actually. He did real well. So, well, considering you got a flat, mate, I think you've done pretty well to come in in that time. Yeah, I don't know, but we we're pretty quick time change, tire change, but we've been pushing hard all day because um, we had to back off so much in the rough. We were literally crawling in the rough. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, no, we've had a good weekend. Thanks to AJ. Called the race perfect and uh, a big team effort. So. A few little changes to the car before Griffith, I'm yeah. sure. There'll be something to do with suspension. Everybody always says they won't, but um, it seemed pretty sorted. But If we are at Griffith, there'd be no complaints. It's just this is unique out the back yeah. there. I don't think there's anything you can do. Yeah. yeah. And that chops out. I know that corner that we usually camp out on the, on the edge of the desert there. It gets down to a... A metre and a half, two metres deep. So. It's unbelievably rough. I don't know how they'll ever deal with that. They need to they need to fix it. <laughs> Bitchman. Nah, just a breather in between. <laughs> All right, there you are, Dale and AJ, car five. Uh, the, one, of, one of two Martin entries this weekend. Here you go, and the second of the Burroughs car over the finish line in the background, Matty Burroughs, and we'll get him as he comes around. So first five cars over the line. We've got uh, Bo Robbo... Andy Brown, Clayton Chapman, Mark Burrows and Dale Martin. They are, we've got two Class 11s and three, three Ultimate Class cars. And coming around, last year's third place getter in the championship, Matty Burrows, which is the second of the Burrows cars. And he's in a uh, Class 1 car, so it's pretty impressive to see these guys up that, that far, far up the pointy end. I'm just gonna. I'll cut back to you guys for a couple of seconds while we watch Maddie come in, and then um, once he's in, we'll pull, get to bre- breath and a mouthful of liquid. We'll uh, have a chat to him about his experience out here this weekend. I know everybody's battled with dust. Yeah, good interviews uh, out there, Sandy. Yeah, good work, Sandy. Catching up with everyone down there. As Dale said, it's, uh, you know, Dale's done a lot of races. So if he says it's the roughest race, race he's ever done, then there you go. That's just how brutal it can be at the back. But And a puncher. What a bugger. You yeah, know, five that's what or six we said. Minutes. We did suggest that, you know, that our next car in is the three of uh, Matthew Burrows and Jay Mitchell, which obviously the son of Mark Burrows. 
being in class one or pro like car, yeah. you know, it's uh, it'll be uh, provisionally first in class. I was expe- we were expecting the Tucker car, one one zero. Uh, so that must. I think he had a late start after these. Um, yeah. After his uh, forty five minute service break, so I'm not sure, but uh, seemed to go out late. I think is that him. Here he is now. The one one zero. Yep. The Tucker car. Yeah, that's been on song all weekend. Yeah, no, I've, I reckon he might have had an issue in the last because I was checking on the rally safe a few minutes ago and he was due to be the next car in. So I reckon he's had a little issue in that last little section. Looking, um, at, looking. Um, we heard Dale Martin had a puncture. So well, well let's have a look. Yep, we're going to cut back down to you, Sandy, for a chat with the uh, the son of a gun. You got me up there, guys. You got me up there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Matty Burrows. I tell you what, first of the uh, class ones over the line, backing up your last year's third place in the championship. Yep. Yeah, beauty. Yeah, loving it. Um, so we. Man, in you're last... fast out there. Very impressive. Yeah, it's all. It was the car's going great. We've done a lot of improvements since last year, so we're really happy with how it's going. And coming in the last lap, and we seen Tucker was behind us, so we pushed real hard that last lap just to try and keep him. I'm glad we did. That was a big goal of ours. So no, really happy. And to see Dad here as well. Obviously, last year we only got the one car home. So yeah, really happy. Mate, I'm uh, I'm super impressed. Good, well done. I know how rough it is out there. Everybody's uh, relayed that through. I went out there last night and had a look at a bit yeah. of the track as well, and that was only after two laps. So. Yeah, very very rough. Dad keeps telling me I'm lucky to have a young back, but it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Good to see you home. The uh, Matty Burrows, the second of the uh, Burrows team, and the first of the Class 10s. We'll get someone down here to, to, to direct cars. That would be good. But uh, Tucker, another super impressive car over the finish line. I was... These guys, uh, they pushed all weekend. And I don't know, these are obviously provisional times. Obviously, there might be some corrected times. But, um, like I said, it looks like to let them shut down the car because a lot of background noise. But Thanks, Sandy. We've got the uh, the Tucker car come in, but it looks to me, looking at the back, Trading that the spare on. wheel's not on there. So no. whether, whether they also... I'm assuming they had one on her. Could have had a puncher as well, looking at that. Simon Tucker, Aussie-built Southern Cross. Second of our class ones over the, over the finish line. Wanting to get out of their gear. I'll be sweating in there. And, uh, I have to sit in that for three hours, th- getting thrown around the desert. Can get quite punishing. Dehydrated. Probably want to have a pee as well after that amount of time, I would imagine. How's your game, mate? <laughs> oh, I reckon I've gone a couple of rounds with Mike Torson. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone said it's one of the roughest they've been in Australia, so... That uh, desert section chops out and gets pretty bad, brutal. They talk about Fink being a, a pretty brutal race, but that's got nothing on this, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. good fun. Good, you know, it's enjoyable. We're reasonably quick through the rough stuff. The rougher it gets, the more we like it. But, yeah, we had a couple of little dramas with a car in that second lap of the first section there this morning, and uh, we just had the nurse at home. So yeah. we're just glad to make it like it was brutal. Well, I think, you know, the, the attrition out here today, um, we only had, we lost 10 cars yesterday, but... And I haven't seen how many we've lost today. There's still guys out there. They're still in their third lap for today. So they're still got a lap and a bit to go. And I don't know what time cut-off time is, but you guys have romped it in. Yeah, look, we're very lucky. We're very lucky. We think we've done a head gasket. And um, as punch and water out, we had to come in halfway through that stage. The last couple of laps here to, to top the water up. And, yeah, look, we had... We had had the alarm coming off for the last 20 k's, uh, high coolant and then low battery. We had the fans kicking in trying to keep things cool. But um, yeah, look, if it wasn't a car on the side of the track, it was a bloody stump. Another stump's come up to look at you. So <laughs> that was another another big thing. We we took our spare off to try and get airflow. Um, a big risk, but yeah, we got we got there. Well, well done. Good good uh, good good day's outing. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, there you go, Simon Tucker, second of our class ones over the line. 
and um, we might have a little bit more of a break. The cars seem to be quite spread out, and I think we've only probably got maybe 25, but when I've been to races in the past where we've had something like 80 or 90 entries and only had 25 finish, I think so far this weekend we've been pretty lucky on the... Obviously, guys have got fresh cars after the off-season, so... Yeah, we'll uh, watch a couple more come in. We'll hollow them up as they come in. Thank you, guys. Thanks for that, Sandy. Well, as we hear down there, Glenn, the Tucker car, you know, you have a few issues, but you take some risks and you, you can get it to the end. So they, those boys have had a few problems, but they look at they're still sitting... What's that? One seventh on road. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's been pretty impressive all weekend that vehicle, and uh, obviously he's nursed it too, you know, with a possible head gasket problem and uh, overheating yep. problem. So uh, I did notice the spare was missing, so that's why I thought he might have had a flat. But he absolutely they left that up deliberately to get some more air through the um, the coolers in the back behind their heads. Yeah, which is makes sense. But uh, not if you get a puncher. It just the it risk. doesn't make sense. It's a risk you've got to take. Yeah, Simon said they took the risk and luckily it paid off. But, you know, the, after all that, they're still second in class and, um, you know, persistence get you to the end. That's it, you know. you just got to keep going while you can keep going, keep turning those wheels. And uh, it's a brutal track, as all the drivers have, have said. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it takes a lot of toll on the uh, competitors and the cars. And just to finish this event is, is no mean feat. As we uh, look on the screen, we've got the Barnett car, which will be our next car in, the car 68. Craig Barnett in the uh, also a Southern Cross. We can look at the great pictures from our drone on the... Live stream, camera, what you're looking at, we're looking at. The Steal It ARB stream. Look at those pictures. So he's going down now to next to the airstrip. Do a U-turn and that little section on your left there is like, it's like a tunnel. Like It's like a, you're looking at it and it's... The trees sort of grow into each other and that's the last little stretch before you do the last turn onto the finish straight here. Yeah, a couple of short, sharp straights there, Lee. There, there we go. Look, one side. There it is there. Tunnel of trees. It gets pretty whooped out in there too. So as you can see, the car that these guys have... Uh, Come up yep. through the gate. Another Southern Cross, which is the same manufacturer as our previous, the Tucker car. Older style version, but the 68, Craig Barnett, Megan Barnett, and Gary Hardy. Southern Cross, that's a Mark 6. Still sounding strong. Yep. That's just got a uh, 6 litre Chev. Mark 6 Southern Cross, so they'll be happy with, with that finish. Closely followed by the 1087. 1087, you... we didn't see that one, but that's a great effort from the McGinley Tatum, which will be our first. Sports like car home or 10 car, yep. Yeah, they're just sort of it's it's when they get close enough, we sort of can't get a glimpse, they're stuck in the dust. But, um, but yeah, that's a great effort from the McGinley car. Then McGinley, Dean DeMarco, and the Tatum and Griffith. So, our next event, of course, up, which is Hilston, not far from Griffith. In further north. Mid-July. Yeah. Bit of a break. Now to the next one. Hopefully we get better weather there this year than what we had last year. It was uh, had a lot of rain prior to the event. There was no rain during the event, but uh, made it pretty uh, pretty ordinary with the conditions. Yeah, a lot different to uh, here, but uh, hopefully we get a um, nice clean weather event this year. Cougar Racing, 68 Barnett car. Look at it, that looks clean too. Cougar Racing. Got the Great Northern logo on the side. That'd be nice if someone can bring us up one of those. Yeah, Great Northern Super We, might, we might have a Great Northern Super Cruise if someone wants to bring us one. Yes. 
So that is our eighth car. You can count that far anyway. Along the fence there, that's car eight home. Yeah, we've got Sandy down there. Take it away, Sandy, for some more interviews. Don't know if you've got us up there, guys. I hope so. The Cougar entry, the Barnett team. I can smell coolant, mate. So you did really well all weekend. The car looked really fresh. Mate, How'd we, you go? Oh, we went good. We just snapped the limit strap in the bloody second last lap. So I mean, listen to that shock. He just bang for about 4,000 <laughs> times. So we had to back off out the back there for a bit. But um, no, mate, she's strong. Seemed to have a reasonably dust-free second yeah. half that last lap, so that always helps. Yeah, helped. mate, we, we didn't see much dust all weekend. First lap, day one, and then, yeah, we've had a good run. I can't complain. Yeah, real good. Car feels good because it sounds mate. amazing. Yeah, no, it's bloody going, going real well, really well. Re- ready for Hilston. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, well done. Thank Congratulations you. for finishing. Now, just on that, while, I, uh, while I'm here, I just got handed the official results. This is going to surprise a few now. Um, the top top three came in on the road: Bo Robbo, Andy Brown, and Clayton Chapman. But the top three for this year's ARB or still at ARB Big Desert 480, folks. You've got Bo Robbo on the top spot. You've got Clayton Chappie climbed up into second spot uh, on corrected time, and Andy Brown in third outright for this weekend's still at ARB Big Desert 480 so we're going to get those guys around on the podium in a minute and um, I'm sure they'll cover each other in champagne or whatever that happens up there but we won't be long we've got uh, Mark Burrows in fourth Dale Martin in fifth Simon Tucker Matthew Burrows in seventh and that's all I've got currently at the second but that's uh, they're no longer provisional they are actual results so well done to those guys, and we'll get them up in a minute. But uh, we've just got Dean McGinley coming over here in our the first of our class tens. We know, um, sorry, uh, Bowie and Ella were having a really good run there. They got a f- vibration in the car. They tried to fix it, couldn't get back out. Dean, first class ten. Unfortunately, Bowie had an issue for him. But uh, well done to you guys. Yeah, that's a shame. I didn't even know that he was... I thought he was in front of us. But anyway, nah, thanks very much. We'll take it. <laughs> the only way I'll beat him is when he breaks down. Um, how'd the car go? The car still, still seems strong? Um, no issues? Nah, it got bloody rough. But anyway, it's all good. Nah, the car's going good, so we'll get it ready for Griffith and shouldn't be too much to do for it. We did have a little chat about Griffith yesterday. The track's ready to go. This is the end of... Uh, the end of our first round of the championship, Griffiths up at Hillston's next. So you're saying the track's nearly ready to go or, you know, they're, they're well underway with preparations up there? Yeah, the track just needs to be marked. we um done a fair bit of grading after last year. Well, we had to because of the mud. Um, so, yeah, it'll just be a matter of marking it out and jig a few things in the pits and whatnot to make it more spectator-friendly. But other than that, she should be all good as long as the weather stays nice. Yeah, we'll be right this year. So. <laughs> All right, congratulations, mate. It's good to see Dean McGinley over the over the finish line. The first of our ten cars run a little Honda K24. Seems to be a super popular motor coming out in these cars now. I can hear somebody else coming in. I'm not too sure who that is, but looks like a Forsman, the Forsman 202 entry. I believe they probably still have one lap to go. Next on track may possibly be uh, over the finish line anyway, maybe Jackson Evans.
We see the Western car, Connor, um, young Cooper Western in the distance. Had that little issue earlier, but uh, good to see him back out and running. Yeah, we got uh, Peter Simpson there in the uh, bonnetless Bennett truck. Is he just... Uh, is yeah, he's just behind us here near the airfield. Right. Just wondering whether is it uh, full, t full tilt or not, but yes, he yeah. is. Yep. He's got the hood. The speed bonnet moved. You're getting plenty of air, that's for sure, with a bonnetless... Yeah, we missed the uh, the Jackson Evans. The Polaris has come across the line. Jackson Evans and Sam Raper, first in class. That's a great result from that team. Pretty happy about that one. Closely line. followed yep. by the Simpsons. We're back on the PA. Yes, we are. Righto. Everybody that's here, I have uh, outright results. I did mention them before, but we weren't uh, on the PA system here. It was only went out to the folk online. So let's give it a quick round. We know we, we know the, the first seven or eight cars that have come across the line on road, uh, road placement rather than um, corrected time or anything like that. But outright for this year, we have uh, Bo Robertson in first place. In the 11-13 car, Clayton Chapman in the 15 car came second outright just in front of Andy Brown in 11-42. These are now confirmed placings. 21 car of Mark Burrows, then Dale Martin in fifth. We have Matty Burrows just got popped off uh, by Simon Tucker. So Simon Tucker in fifth, Matty Burrows uh, sorry, Simon Tucker in sixth, Matty Burrows in seventh, and that's all I've got currently. So we'll update you as those times get confirmed as we go. Um, we might as well wander down while we're here. We'll wander down and have a have a chat to Jackson Evans, wherever he is. They're letting the car cool down. Okay. Mate, here you go. I tell you what, first of the six cars over the line, pushed to hell hard all weekend. The car still seems good after yesterday's little incident, but uh, enjoyed it? Yeah, no, we did really enjoy it. Um, yeah, just got an awesome team behind us to put it together after we broke it. But, yeah, it got rough out there, and we, we knew we were tightish on time, so we made some shock adjustments after pro... Yeah, I think it was after prologue... No, after day one. And we went the wrong way with it, so we went out and it was really bumpy, so we fixed that today and we were able to get into it, so it was good. Well done. Congratulations, Jackson Evans from the King Chrome Polaris. Thank you. Congratulations. Their finish on the steel at ARB Desert 480, apparently one of the toughest races in Australia, folks. Sibo. Sibos just getting out of his car, so. Some of these people don't like me jabbing a microphone in their faces as soon as they're finished, but. Sibos' car seemed to have a fairly faultless run. I don't know whether they were dealing with something getting rid of the front end, but sometimes it's either them hitting a tree or trying to deal with cooling issues. Trying to get some weight off the front end for some reason. I can't hear a word you're saying. You don't need to hear a word I'm saying, mate. We're talking about you. <laughs> Tell you what, they've just done three hours in the seat, these people. And once again, it uh, gets absolutely rude out there once that sand layer disappears out in the desert and it becomes... Just a uh, rocky base becomes, starts destroying tyres, starts basing out suspension, all that sort of stuff. This uh, Sibos from down Warrigal in Victoria, Warrigal Machining.
behind us, Sam and Hannah coming over the line in the 10 car with, in the Bentley entry. But how did you go, Sibbo? You're here. My body hurts. <laughs> My body hurts a lot. <laughs> well, you did really well. I mean, what have we got? About 10 cars over the line now. First of the fours over the finish line. Yep, I was pretty happy with that. Really happy. And and uh, thanks to my mate for navigating, he got us through without too many scares. It was hairy. It was wild. <laughs> That's good. And the desert chopped off, uh, chopped up out the back, obviously. The holes are that big. You got to have your headlights on because it goes <laughs> dark. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Sivo, for finishing, mate. Just, uh, like everyone said, it's been a really tough, tough second half of this uh, this race out here at Rainbow in Victoria. So we've got coming down the chute now, Sam and Hannah. I've got another sheet getting handed to me, just some more updates on, on placings. I think we got before, we got to Matty Burrows, that was seventh. Officially eighth is Craig Barnett in the Cougar Racing entry. The first of our ten cars... Um, the first of our ten cars, Dean McGinley, was uh, across the line in ninth. Jackson Evans, the first of our six cars, in tenth. And eleventh, Peter Sibo, who I just spoke to, and he's uh, that's confirmed eleventh. So I will presume, and it is only a presumption because we aren't we haven't been handed the the official word yet. But I would I would nearly imagine that um, the, the Bentley entries are, are next. In line. We'll run around, have a quick chat to Sam. And I know Hannah Hannah didn't finish yesterday. They had a little issue with the truck, and she jumped in in for the second section today with Sam. I'll let you get your helmet off, mate, because I know how hot it is in there. Might as well have a quick, quick chat with Dad, eh? It's all about the kids. <laughs> it's yeah. good to see it over the line. Yeah, unbelievable. Great effort. And, yeah, Ryan navigated the first two sections and had the last one. So, no, awesome effort. So, yeah, need to be talking. Little, to little issue with the, the four car yesterday. Yeah, it's a minor problem with the engine, just very annoying. You know, she was going really well getting her confidence but yeah that's racing so yeah she had it Ryan was good enough to let her hop in the last section today and yeah they're having a great run have so. it sorted for Griffith yeah well, who knows where next three cars is a big ass but yeah but no it's yeah it's their day so no worries there Hayden Bentley hey mate okay. how was it rough <laughs> yeah <I'll see> it. <laughs> Car, car went flawlessly by the looks of it yeah no bloody oath it did she's running well thank god yeah. um and uh, everyone knows it's rough out there, but any any um, I don't know any insight to what it's like as a driver coming in? Um, it's just sharp. I, I don't really. I don't, there's no way to explain it really. It's just I don't know. It's just endless pain. It looks like you might have been second over the line for the class tens and about eleventh outright. Um, I haven't got that locked in yet, but we've got uh, every other place locked in. There's no one around you, so that might yeah. be the case. So, well done. It's a pretty hard race to finish, apparently. So, uh, good, well done and uh, for getting over the line at all. Yeah. No, thank you. I'm body stoked. <laughs> they are uh, Sam Bentley, folks. Thank you. The Bentley Cabin Parks 1018 car. They got two cars here this weekend. I don't know where Hannah's run off somewhere, but yeah, she. Uh, she had a big day yesterday as well, so. for the uh, work down there, Sandy. Got a few finished now. Two, three, four. That's 12 cars home. Mm-hmm. 
like we've got our next car about to cross the line. One of our side by sides, another one. 627, is it? That's a great finish from that team. Justin Ryder, second of our side by sides. Yeah, Justin Ryder and Stephen Teese in the uh, Can Am. <laughs> just just yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to cross down the sandy now for the uh, podium presentations down there. We'll yeah. leave it at you, with you guys down there for the uh, podium. Yeah, without him in the shot, so you can hear us. Might as well get the presentations underway with the top three. And I'm going to get my bit of paper out just so I can maybe give you a little insight onto overall total race time. Sorry, a little bit messy here. Not that I'm unorganised, but going on. so cool being here and getting through this. I've been my best mate out of like doing it for years and um, yeah it's just great to to get this achievement to get an achievement like this to finish and, and to do well is just phenomenal so um, yeah yeah really paying off and we're just really really thankful so thanks much, very much Alright mate well done there Clayton Chapman car 15 all the way down from Queensland your second place getters and first outright this year Big Bo Robbo all the way from WA, car 1113. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah, big weekend. It had a couple of little issues with the truck not down changing. Got it, it looked like it was slipping away there for a few minutes, but uh, pulled it together. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was. It was up and down weekend, but um, no, we hadn't been out here for a while, so it was a bit, all a bit sort of um, foreign to us or whatever. So we. Um, yeah, we were a bit lazy this morning and um, yeah, had to get a move on that last section, but um, all in all, it all worked out. The, um, yeah, the truck's pretty, yeah, held up pretty good. It's pretty, pretty brutal for it. <laughs> all right, there you go, folks. First place and winner outright for round one of this ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship, Bo Robinson, truck 1113. Well done, mate. Shane Hutt in the passenger seat. Navigating. And uh, like I said, we've pretty much placed in order on who finished where. The rest of them. Um, no, just the rest of the ARB. We've got still got a few yeah, cars out on track. Start off in third place. Never, ever, ever. Good. Did a gate on the motorsport track. 
man. This is so angry. Very angry. Very angry. Very angry. Very angry. Very angry. You ready to fucking climb up onto that? What? You ready to try and climb up onto that? They gave you a stool, mate, so. Where is it? Tony's going to uh, just okay, present yeah, some trophies. Yeah, Tony Carabot, right. pres president of the Victorian Off-Road Racing Association, who's hosted the event out here at Rainbow in Victoria. Tony Carabot is going to present uh, Daniel Hartman navigating for Andrew Brown. Congratulations, mate. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. A lot of hard work. Well done, mate. Yeah. yeah, great event. Say something or? Yeah. Nice. All no, good. Well done, <laughs> <piece of> stainless <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll do second place. Second place. Once again, Clayton Chapman and Adam McGuire. Clayton. Thanks, mate. Congratulations, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And first place outright this weekend, Bo Robinson, Shane Hutt. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us. Congratulations, Shane. Thanks, mate. I'm going to climb up here. Are we going up? <laughs> this is a setup, man. Really. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, <laughs> ah! Don't fall off! Don't fall off! <laughs> should have done that. Don't fall off! Okay. Funny, is it? Huh? Funny, is it? Yeah, it's not not used to that, eh? Hey? Oh, I'm not going to. Gentlemen. Cheers. For the first time ever. Congratulations. Oh, oh, big up good job, big boys. Hey, well done, mate. Well done, mate. Good on you. Good, 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 good job. See you the next one. Oh, that's this. Do you want to do this or not? I'll take it. Oh, you want it? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't want to pay that. Put the deposit. Give them what they want. Oh, they want a board. That's a little wet. That's got a bit damp. Go close. They are, folks. The top three. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your top three. Uh, I've been just given an other updated sheet. I can read out some uh, some more placings. We did see Sam Sam and Hannah come in that 1018 car, which is now confirmed 12th place. It's a bit hard to do this out here with that little bit of breeze, but they came in with a total run time of five hours eleven minutes. Bo came in with four hours and twenty minutes, so you can tell the difference. In the uh, in the speed of those cars there, can't catch this. Sorry. Uh, Justin Ryder, six two seven in thirteenth place. David Waffham in in fourteenth in that little Urseg one oh four car. The middle miss entry uh, just got pipped. They came in sixteenth on corrected time, and uh, Lachlan Campbell 
in 15th, just ahead of them in the 607 car. Sorry, I've got to read this instead of looking at you, but um, those guys had run times of around five, five hours and 20 minutes, so that's a long time to get thrown around the desert. Um, I reckon we've got half of the field that's still out there competing back on track and uh, back into the into the pit area here. Looks like car 422 has just crossed the line. Well, there you go. It's about 18 odd cars in the finish line. 42 started this morning. A little bit of dust in the distance. So there's other cars running around out there, that's for sure. Wind's dropped off a little bit. It got quite blowy a minute ago during the presentations. aerial footage there of the uh, start finish line and all the uh, finishes as you can see by the flags a fair bit of breeze nice clear day here in rainbow certainly been some excellent uh, racing here over the weekend spectator area and uh, start finish and the uh, pit area and uh, with the food area and also and our commentary area is just sensational well set up here Be a lot of sore and sorry bodies here this evening. It's a punishing track. Just to finish is an outstanding achievement.
So we'll finish it off with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's not much happening. Yeah. Probably like finish it up the next six. Down the creek. Lovely. In the creek, which is that seven or eight. Yeah, that'll be. Then you're coming down this straight. Seven or eight minutes. Said he's just going to wait for these ones that come in that are just entering this, yeah, and then following the core. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, all got to You want to come down and look at the cards? Hey Max. Max, I'm going to save the battery for the car. I'm going to save this for the car right home. Huh? Maybe we'll save it for the car right home. Huh? Yeah, copy. All right. to take a moment and say thank you to our amazingly generous sponsors. Without their ongoing support, we couldn't even begin to think about hosting an event like this year's Steel It, ARB, Rainbow Big Desert 480. So a big thanks must go to our major sponsors. Steel It, Paint for Steel. The Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. ARB, 4x4 Accessories. Nicky Thompson, Legendary Off-Road Tires. Rainbow Rise Events Association. Raceline Wheels. Dynamic Wheel Co. Australia's hottest and toughest wheels. And the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship. Steel at ARB Big Desert Race wouldn't have been possible without the involvement of the following sponsors. Quality Metal Solutions. Chase More Heavy Haulage. Ultimate Helicopters. Rally Saver. PMD Race Products. Millie's Media. Promotional products and uniforms. And Andrew Peace Wines.
This year's steal at ARB Big Desert Race wouldn't have been possible without the involvement of the following sponsors. The Australasian Autosport Alliance. The Australian Off-Road Racing Association. The Hindmarsh Shire Council. Grain Corp. Wimmera Mallee Waste. The Rainbow IGA. And SP Tools. This year's steal at ARB Rainbow Big Desert 480 is honoured to have the following class title sponsors. Unlimited Class and Class 10, proudly sponsored by Marson Race Transmissions. Class 1 by Show and Go Photography. Class 2, proudly supported by Dart Transport. Class 4, Warrigal Machining and Mechanical Repairs. Class 5, Browns Gypsum. Class 6, proudly supported by GRC Motorsport. Classes 66 and 9, the Victorian Off-Road Racing Association. Classes 7 and 11, proudly supported by Gold Acres. So everyone at home still trying to follow your favourite car and family and friends. We've got a few left. So we'll uh, try and get those cars home for you. Everyone watching at home, online, around the world, wherever you're watching. It's been a great day, great weather. Great weekend. Sort of a lot of finishes here on the fence. Got about 20 cars that have uh, finished all the laps with a handful still out there. As we wel welcome back, back up. Sandy Bowman with us. Hey, mate. We're, uh, we're still waiting on a handful of cars. They're going to wait until they come in. Chris Land, car 80. Still motoring. We've got, um, I think Doc is just on the edge of the desert now, will be our, our last car on track so far. Matty Hummer in front of him, Jason Forsman in the 202 still moving in front of him, Chris Lands, car 80. Sorry, I just ran up there. I'm out You're of breath, I was mate. just going to say, mate. Well, lucky there's My no... fitness level is at the top of its game right now. Well, I was going to say, you're blowing pretty hard after walking those 20 steps up that hill. Uh... 
Dutch, Dutch Courage, the Vanderwood entry, they are still coming in there on that fast bit. Cooper Weston is also on his... On, he should be coming into sight over on our left. Yep. Any second. Um, so we've got a little while to go. We've got to fill a bit of air here, but they do want to uh, wait until everybody's off the track before they do a, do a presentation for class. Is in. Yeah, they want to do a um, yep a presentation of the the, uh, the classes, the classes, all the uh, eleven classes. Yeah, we've got a fair fair range out there now. I mean, not that we've had any class threes here this this weekend. They've they're slowly getting knocked out of those championship rounds. It's slowly disappearing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. A, it is a brutal track. This one. Um, as we've heard all the drivers when you were down there with them earlier, just discussing the how brutal the track is. So just to finish this race is uh, it's a real enduro endurance event. So just to finish is uh, a great effort from all these teams, and no mud, just dust. Yeah, I only saw the tiniest little bit of mud on the creek crossing on the pre-run on Friday. Yep, which I'm sure is gone by now. But yep. Got a, another list off D here somewhere of the finishes. Might be the one I just brought in there. Got so many bits of paper going on, a pile of paper. You're on your keep today, mate. You're running oh. around, you're in the sun, you're interviewing Tell down you what, there. We've had 19 cars finished that I've been handed. Well, look at this at the finish line here. We've oh. got a passing with oh. oh, what? Well, it's all happening. No, two six cars as well. 626 over the finish line and 611. Nearly touching as they left uh, that finish jump. Jeez. So. We have our first 19 cars followed, here. Followed by the Mott. The Mott cars over the line. The Mott this car This is good home. to see a lot of these cars. Yep. Everybody that's home so far is home safe. Obviously a few damaged vehicles, but they're home safe, and that's one important thing. Absolutely. Especially with this morning's dust. I was a bit worried about that as they were leaving. Yeah, it was like pea soup this morning, but the breeze has <laughs> really picked up, and... Um, yeah, it's just great to see these cars all finishing this event. But as we see the yeah, the Western car over there to our left, the Mickey Thompson's car with Cooper Weston, which was driven by Chris Weston yesterday. Uh, Cooper Weston taking the keys off his dad today, which is great. Another one, a car will get home. It should be. We've got the uh, 202 car. Someone's just gone out for their last lap. Oh, one of those side by sides. Yeah, that's when we had when one of those side by sides. The hill is in. Yeah, so one of those side Brendan? by sides oh, has still no. got one oh. lap. Yeah, Brendan Hill is in. In the 611 entry. Yep. That's 626. Which was Vaughan Hogan. He's gone out for his last lap, which I'm surprised. We must still have a fair bit of run time out there. And if he doesn't make it to certain sections in a certain amount of time, they might flag him and, and send him back in. But that's normally what will happen if they don't if they start running out of, the, out of time at this end of the day. Yep. Gee, what a finish, mate. That was yes. con that was I was going to say controversial. It wasn't really controversial, but. How does Bo Robbo pull that gap back on Andy and um, and then Clayton obviously coming in third on road behind Danny Brown? Yeah, oh, sorry, think, Andy Brown. I think we saw Angry Bo in those last lap yeah, and a half. Yeah, I, th I think he's worked out that... And when you look at the times, don't forget, I, I didn't read out the overall times there, but Bo Robbo, he had to drive like that because guess what? He did four hours, 20 minutes and two seconds... Clayton Chappie did four hours and 20 minutes and 51 seconds. That's that's close, you know. And Andy Brown was uh, four hours, 21, 46 seconds. So It's only two minutes. That's not a lot. That's not a lot in, yep. uh, when you're considering you've just raced 480 80 k's of Australia's best off-road racetracks. Yeah, not even two minutes between the first three cars. Yeah, that's tight over that distance. And, you know, the last car over the line that I have a, have a score for here is the 422 of Stephen Von Peen. That did six hours and 52 minutes. Yep. 
So they're two hours longer on track. Whether they have problems or not, you know. Uh, that Franklin car, that 1110 side by side, five hours 32. We see the, uh, the Western about car. Come yep. around our last corner here. He's got the checker flag is up. The rush buggy. Cooper West. I, I tell you what, Chris will be absolutely wrapped to see this happening. Well done. Obviously, that's some issues. For the Western, Western crew. Yeah, that's some issues earlier in the day, which they've resolved. But uh, Chris drove yesterday with Cooper Just, in the passenger seat, and the, Chris jumped out. Cooper jumped in with a mate today and had some fun. Just watching our officials, our flag waver down there on the left, and thank you very much to all 110 plus officials and uh, helpers and volunteers out here on the weekend because they have sucked dust for t like what's today? We started at uh, eight o'clock, so yesterday. they've sucked dust for like five or six hours just today and a Two few days. hours yesterday. Yep. So I know it's like out there with the wind and the dust and the sun. Gets pretty draining. Chris Land is car 80 is on his way in. I think we've only got two or three left on track from what I can tell out there after that. Um, I know that six car went out. Hogan went out there after that. We've got Chris Land on the way back in in car 80. We have uh, car 202 still out there. That's the Forsman entry. Matty Hummer in the 633 entry. We have the 445 Nissan out there and um, 626 on his way back out, which I presume is the last car on the track. So, yep, we probably... We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just, we're going to keep the stream going just for a little while longer for a couple more cars. For you. They do want to live stream the trophy handout for all the classes. Yep. Uh, a couple of the guys, a couple of the guys there. I know Bo Robbo had to nick off and get on a plane back to WA, so he couldn't hang around, unfortunately. Which is why they kind of, once they knew that top three or top five were locked in, and everybody all the uh, corrected time was given and everyone was 100 percent, they handed those out, uh, so those guys could nick off. Here you go. Vandy, he's still, Vandy got, he's still got a lap oh, he's to go. He's still got a lap to go too. Because he had a bit of an issue earlier on. He's got. Is he, so, is he going around again? I think he is. Oh, wow. He had, yeah, he did, he did get held up for a long time earlier in the day, didn't he? So they're very spaced out. We've literally got one, two, three. We've got car 80, Chris Land. He'll be coming into sights over on your far left hand side in the dust along that tree line. We'll have uh, Jason Forsman still battling away through the desert. Also, Matty Hummer still batting, battling away through the desert. 445 is only at the start of the desert. 626 has only just left the start line a few minutes ago. And Darren Vandy, Vandy who's only just come through the finish line for, the, for his last lap. Well, this, happen, this does happen a lot in racing, doesn't it? I mm. mean, desert racing, as you know... These big guys have had total run times of just over four hours, four hours, 20 minutes, four hours, half an hour, uh, four, four hours, 30 minutes. Tenth place, five hours. So even that is a big gap between the first and tenth. And then um, you start dropping away. By the end of this, we'll have a... I would imagine if those guys have just gone out, They'll be doing a total. I think you had a total of eight hours. Eight hours, yep. Of uh, com to complete the com whole circuit, to and not only that, you've got to usually do seventy-five percent of the track to be classed as a finisher. All your laps, yep. And uh, if you don't do your seventy-five percent, then um, you don't get points for the championship. Some of these guys, even Darren Vandy, he's had a year off, but they're they're back, and they might be just literally needing to get the finish to get their points up for the championship, so they can hunt down a class five championship and even so the way the points has been structured here in the, the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship it can also give you a good hit for the outright of the championship. Yeah you're going to be there at the end of the day to get your points get your finish which is why uh, Darren Vandy is continuing on. We've got last year Brent 
Brent Martin in uh, a Class 1. Maddie Burrows in a Class 1. And the middle misses, they came second outright in a Class 1. So it's not necessarily the Class 11s and the ultimate class cars. Once again, thank you to Steel at Australia. They have put on an amazing amount of energy, put in an amazing amount of energy to keep this uh, this event going. Yep. We're always looking for more sponsors on both the event level and even the class level sponsors. You know, um, I see Warrigal Machining, Sibo, he sponsored class four. I see, uh, which it looks like he won. And... Um, Mick Marson, he, he sponsored a class. There's, there's def definitely different uh, class sponsors in there, as well as you can sponsor the event, you can sponsor the championship. We definitely need more, a few more on board to get this live stream uh, out to everybody. We've, we've hit, I didn't see the numbers today, but I'm sure I'll find out. Yep. Like I said earlier, we had over 2,200 people on the live stream yesterday. So that's from everywhere, from Scotland, Ireland, England, America, a fair few in America. Lots of local in Australia. Family sitting at home on the couch, in the air conditioning, no dust. Yep. Unlike us mugs out here in the desert. No, we're up here with the air conditioner on. Yeah. In the box. With the tally. That dust in just behind that tree line, folks, that's Darren Vandy on the way back out on his last lap. They all seem to be moving okay out there. Chris Land should be coming around the last corner or two into the finish line within minutes. I didn't see I didn't see the Triton come over the finish line 570 so presuming that they were belted with some a few issues and didn't get over I don't know if I can't I can't see them from up where I am now I haven't got any not a lot of results and I haven't got any information on uh, whether they've DNF'd or what's happened with those guys but Car 80 coming uh, on his last couple of switchbacks. That's Chris Land in a in a new car this year. I, I mistake it, I mistaken it, had mistaken it for uh, the same car repainted as last year, but fresh car. So they will be just looking to get some seat time and understand how the car is different from the other one. Yeah, their last car. There he is in that green. Ultimate class car, checkered flag. Chris Land. Interesting enough, he started off this morning in 36th position. So big changes today with the different positions. A lot of people still here, enjoying the sunshine.
Well, folks, we've got, we've literally got five or six cars left on the track out there. They are still motoring around. This time of the day, it gets a little bit drawn out, obviously. But we've got the Fallsman 202 entries on the way. They're back out of the desert and through the creek. They're back on the, on the way back in. Matty Hummers, I'm going to say three quarters of the way through the desert. So he's a third, third left of the track. 445 just over halfway around the track, so he's on the tail end of the, end of the desert also. But you've got 626, which is um, Vaughan Hogan. He hasn't entered the desert yet, neither has Darren Vandy in the 554 entry, but we might we can cut to a little bit of footage or something like that, and then um, I can give you a couple of times that I've just been handed. So our overalls, obviously we know... Bo Robbo was at a 4.20, 4 hours and 20 minutes in total run time. In 23rd position, the 4.22 truck, the Micklefab truck of uh, Stephen Von Peen, they did a total run time of 6 hours 52. So that's over, that's over 2 hours longer, 2 hours 20 minutes longer than your fastest car out on track. So we're just gonna we'll watch the we'll just uh, watch the distance here for a little bit. We'll probably come back to you in uh, not too not too long and um, finish off the day. But uh, if you want to grab yourselves a drink or anything like that, quick toilet break, and we'll be back to do some presentations for the all the classes for the for the weekend. The first, second, third place getters for each class. Vandy actually looks like he's catching that 626 car. The gap seems to have closed up a little bit. It'll be a little bit faster on that fast stuff, but the 554 is definitely the last car on the track. We'll be back shortly.
Don't be forgotten, folks. Our uh, one and only Class 2 Forsman entry is just bouncing over the finish line. Thank thank God, I reckon he's saying uh, that was a lot of dust. That would have been hard work in that little car, little 1650 car. But they've done phenomenal this weekend. We've still got... Um, we haven't got many left out there. We still have got four cars left out there. Matty Hummer will be coming in over on our far left. He's sponsored by Race Line Wheels. Still going strong, so um, I've been running all over the place in between being on the microphone here. But uh, Matty Hummer's on his way back in on the far section. He'll be coming in in the dust over on the far left. We've got a lot of cameras come back in, obviously. We can't keep them all out there all day. <coughs> So Matty Hummer won't be too far before he comes in. We've got uh, 445s coming towards the end of the desert section now. And Darren Vandy and 626, which was Mr Hogan, are still going. So they're around halfway through the track. So... We'll, uh, 
We'll hang out for Matty Hummer to come over the line. We can see he's dust in the distance. He's just gone through that road chicane and coming down towards the back into the stadium. Been a long, hot weekend. Very, very thankful that the wind picked up this afternoon. I'll just go and uh, see if these guys can shut down some more microphones that are on cameras here, there and everywhere while we wait for Maddie to come into the finish line. There he is, coming back into the stadium. 633, Matty Hummer in the uh, little race, right, race line wheels entry. Swerves tyres. Do a lot of beadlock rims and tyres. In Victoria, shipper all around the country. That's Matty Hummer, and um, he shouldn't be too far off. It's a long. I know it's a long wait for these last half a dozen cars to come in. But we've literally got three left out after Matty crosses the line. And and car 445 Doc is uh, coming into the creek crossing now. So he's probably only another 10 or so minutes out. But um, Vandy's been overtaken by, by um, uh, Mr. Hogan out there, Vaughan Hogan. So Vandy is now the last car on the track. And somebody has to be last. It's been me a couple of times. I just see a, a picture of health walking across in front of me. AJ came out of that five-car navigator for five-car, Dale Martin. Boys have done well in their, their first year out in this car. Sorted, we hope. Well, Lee's back here for a minute, and so is. Glenn, it's been a phenomenal weekend. These boys are gonna, they're gonna bail. They got a long haul home. They're gonna hang around and uh, bring the last few cars in. Yeah, it's been a very enjoyable weekend, Sandy, with working with you and our dad. And a great event here this weekend. A lot of finishes. Congrats to all the winners and class winners. And um, yeah, I hope we've hope you've enjoyed it at home and listened in with the great uh, broadcast footage and cameras that. The uh, filming production have put on, they've, they've taken you places you've never been before, so I think it's great moving forward, and uh, thanks again, fellas. Yeah, it's certainly a great step forward as a 6-3 uh, Matty, three, Hummer. Three. Matty Hummer comes through the finish line. A well-deserved finish, he's, he's driven well all weekend, but uh, yeah, it's been sensational racing and great, great weather, it was just a bit of a worry the first up this morning, Sandy, when, it's, oh, definitely. when the, there was no wind at all, when it was just a, 
The dust yeah, over well, Lake Wells wasn't uh, wasn't. Uh, but anyway, like the uh, the gods come to our event and uh, got the wind up and fixed everything, and uh, we've had an enjoyable weekend. So thank you, Sandy. Thank, thank you, you, Lee. To the yep. two Wells. Yep. Glenn and Lee. And well, I'm sure we'll see Darren back again next year. Yeah, we'll get him back in. Uh, yeah, then. He's uh, thoroughly enjoyed. We've got a lot of good feedback. So, uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to next year. But uh, thanks again, guys. No worries. Thank you, boys. We'll uh, hang around for a little bit longer. Thanks, mate. We'll hang around for a little bit longer and see these last few cars in. Then we've got folks, you can leave us on the background if you're home in a lounge room and go and get a drink and a, and a refresh toilet break but we've still got about half an hour until the last cars cross we don't want to shut them off because we've had 51 car, two cars start this weekend and we're still on for i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you we're probably still gonna have about 20 probably half the field overall finish so we're probably going to have 26 or 7 entries i can see over in the distance behind the start line there uh, a big cloud of dust and to me that looks like it could quite possibly be the 445 entry, the Nissan, ent Nissan entry, little boosted uh, RB30, last time I knew. They're going to come around. That's John Smith. They'll come around. We've still got the Hogan entry, and we've also got Vandy out there in 554, who's been overtaken by Hogs. So hang around. Put us on in the background if you've got to. Those are still with us. Thank you for joining us. We will be doing the trophy presentation for classes and the event. Uh, we've, Like I said, we've announced the top three who had to be... Uh, a couple of those had to bail out of Victoria, get back to business in, in other states, so they had to run for planes. But, um, yeah, hang around. Go grab another drink, and uh, I'll, I'll announce the rest and give you a presentation towards the end of the trophies. Now uh, hold five.
That was him, folks. Four, four, five. Tell you what, he's done all right just to get around, as we all know. Getting around this course is just phenomenal effort. But that was the doc, 445. We have that many bits of paper here, no kidding. Just having a look where he started. Uh, 28th overall. And he's come in, there's only, there's a long gap between Darren and, uh, and Hoags. So the Vandy entry, 554 and, and 626, are the last two on the track and they're, they're just over halfway. So they're still battling out in the desert. We're going to be, I'm going to say half an hour. Got a lot of people down here that is starting to, um, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, load up cars, get some stuff ready, and then um, if everyone wants to get ready, they can come back up for a presentation. We're going to hold out until then, I believe, before we sign off. Keep us going until the uh, presentation's done or until I get word otherwise, and uh, we will be with you very soon. Well, like I said, we've probably got half an hour or so if you want to come back. Go and do what you got to do. Put the washing on at home or whatever you have to do. And then come back. Once again, just going to run through them. We've had amazing amazing energy put in from some of our big sponsors. ARB, 4x4 Accessories, Raceline Wheels, Mickey Thompson Tyres. They've, these guys have backed the championship this year for 2024. Steel at Australia. ARB have backed the, the, uh, the big desert 488 here at Rainbow Victoria, Australia this year. And... Um, we're always welcoming more sponsors on board if somebody wants to get behind. We know uh, the clubs do all of this, put on these shows. Vora have put on this show this weekend out here at Rainbow in, in, in cahoots with uh, Rainbow Rises. There's, there's, like I said earlier, over 110 volunteers. So it would be good to get a couple of sponsors on to help, help back some of that live feed and uh, also, obviously, the events individual sponsors even even sponsor a car help someone get out here and do their thing they're going to get their they're going to get their thing on on board as well so we'll cut to our little ad here and uh we'll come back shortly we've got like i said we've got about half hour before vandy vandy and uh hoax come in
Righto, folks. If you can hear us down there, Mark Burrows. Uh, that's all right. Uh, folks, in about, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that'll be about 3.15. We're going to have presentations up the front here for those listening on at home. We've got the last car's dust coming in from the desert. Uh, they tell me 701's out there, but I have not seen that on uh, Rally Safe on my screen for a long time. But we can see 626 over on the far left coming in. I can see some more dust coming in behind them just at the chicane at the road. So at about 3.15, if you can all wander up, uh, we'll do the presentations before we, we, we call it a weekend at this year's first round of the ARB Australian Off-Road Racing Championship here out at Rainbow, the Steel at ARB, Big Desert 480. It's been a phenomenal weekend. I know the uh, end of the weekend gets a bit drawn out just waiting on cars and that sort of stuff, but... That looks like it might even be Heath Whedon coming around in front. No, that's 626. Heath Whedon's on the trailer? That, that is tried telling me 701 was still moving. I'm, nah, I didn't see him, but uh, this must be the last car then. It has to be. 626. So give us about 15 minutes before presentation starts up here at the start-finish line. Tell your family, tell your friends... Grab a drink, sit back on the couch if you're still listening at home. That'll be grand. And uh, we'll see how we go and wrap up for the weekend after that. Be back in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Cheers.
There he is, 626 over the finish line. Last car on the track, folks. What a stellar effort. And I reckon he's taken all of his eight hours to get around. I'm not too sure on his time, but within about five minutes, I'll have all the official times on a bit of paper, all the official placings. Don't forget, we'll be around 3.15 up here at the... Uh, up at the uh, start finish line, we'll do all of the start, uh, all of the trophies. So 3:15. If you tell everyone to wander up, grab a refreshing drink, and uh, we'll see you in uh, about 10 minutes. Yo, check one. Check one, two, what are you doing?
Righto folks, gather round, we're here for the presentations of this year's Steel It ARB Big Desert 480 out at Rainbow Victoria, and I know you all had an absolute blast, sucked a lot of dust, as we all did, um, we're going to start off with a few presentations, we're going to try and make it sw short and sweet, we know we have plenty of people who've got a long way to travel, Queenslanders, Western Australians, people got to catch planes etc, so... We'll try and make it as fast as we can. Now, starting off, we have a, uh, a few helpers in the background. Like I said earlier, we have 110-plus uh, individuals helping out behind the scenes. They were uh, volunteers doing all sorts, from recoveries to uh, paperwork, organising the event, everything. If you've done it, you know what goes on in an event to get it going. So I'm just going to call up a list of list of people that we've got a little something for them just to say thank you, organised from Tony. Uh, so D Sibbo, who's right here, you're the first one off the bat for a bunch of flowers, so thank you very much. We've got D Sibson, Nat Pike, Rita Carabot, Narelle Eckerman, Julie McLean, Heather Davidson, Amelia Chasemore, who I believe isn't here, but I think Billy can take those home for her. And uh, Marg Crowley. So thank you, ladies. I know how much energy you guys put in behind the scenes, and everyone knows how much energy you put in behind the scenes. So round of applause for those. They can wander down, grab a bunch of flowers. We very much appreciate you. These are the people that do the paperwork, the organising. Uh, you would have checked in with them this morning or, and when you signed on etc 
So, once again, thank you, ladies, and thank you, um, thanks a million to all the volunteers out there. We had recovery cars, fire, medical. The police this weekend said that uh, the weekend ran fairly smoothly. We also had uh, everyone, obviously the Wells came up and gave us a hand to do the commentation and everything, people on the gate, all everything, traffic control. So there's a million different things that it takes to run an event out here. All right, we're going to go uh, next up. We might go to the... We've got a couple of special awards here. We've got, sponsored by Glendaren Panels, was um, the best presented vehicle. And I believe that goes to David and Alice Middlemas in that little beam car that did so well. So, David and Alice, you wander down. Tony will hand you the trophy. And uh, next off... We've got the Bright Spark, and I don't know how this happened, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people in the audience that don't know how this person got the Bright Spark Award. But uh, Darren Vandy, if he's still here, I'm pretty sure he's still here because he came in quite late. He might be down at the, uh, down at the car, but the Bright Spark Award, also sponsored by Glenn Darren Auto Panels. Thank you to the Wells for that. I don't know where Vandy is. Oh, there he is. Over in your far right, he's coming in. A couple of encouragement awards. The last battler, and I know you all hung around, and thank you very much. I'm sure some, most of you have been last at something at some stage in your lives, so when you're last across the line, people appreciate seeing you standing here. The last battler... Car 626, Hogs. if you can uh, come on down, that'd be fantastic. Well done. And if you, if you don't know, these guys, they compete with disability. And uh, there's your Bright Spark on, on, on here. You want to have a quick word, Bright Spark? Leaving last off the line on the last lap, I think. Yeah, she was a tough morning this morning, but we made it home and uh, I am humbled and pretty happy to just get that and just get home it was hard work out there all right thank you darren well done <laughs> thanks millie there you go folks uh side by side it was last across the line thank you very much i hope you had a stellar weekend i know I, you, just because you were last car on the track there yeah. how horrible was it uh well I heard some horror stories the other night about how bad the whoops were going to be at the back, and everyone was pretty right about that. <laughs> um, yeah, and as it, as the day went on, all the tree roots started to get exposed, so, yeah, it made it pretty hard. But, no, awesome. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to the committee. Thanks to Tony, who's been unbelievably supportive the last month. Vora, Aora, everyone. All the volunteers, all the helpers, all the other competitors. Awesome weekend. Thank you, mate, and well done. There you go. Last over the line and a phenomenal effort. We have the last of the camaraderie, uh, a camaraderie award which goes out to a side-by-side -side competitor, Maddie Hummer in 633, who had the race line wheels entry and I believe he helped out a few out there over the weekend. So he's coming down. I know he was one of the last cars in as well, battling it out. Those little cars sure took a beating towards the end of the day. Thank you, Maddie. And uh, while uh, Maddie's down here, he's uh, backed by Raceline Wheels, who's a big, big part of the championship this year. Chris Hummer from Raceline Wheels has put a lot in to do the prologue, the Race Line Wheels prologue. And I know you would have heard me talk about it over the weekend. Danny Brown takes that out this year for the fifth championship prologue in a row. Not that he had a good run today, but he did do well all weekend. So Danny Brown and George Apted, you wander down. If they're still here, I know they'll be here. They should be here. I hope they're here. 
Oh, the old cheese is going to come down instead. <laughs> Danny's nicked off, but Andy's here to accept. Chris from Raceline Wheels. Andy, I know uh, Danny didn't have a good run and you're accepting on his behalf, but I don't know if you want to say a word or two, Chris or, or Andy. Thanks, Andy. Look, we're really proud to be a part of the series again this year. Um, thanks for having us along and uh, congratulations to Danny on winning it and well done, Andy, for picking up on his behalf. Thank you. Chris, thank you very much. Always appreciate it. You probably bloody cheated anyway, so what else? <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers. There's Andy on behalf of Danny and George. Thank you, Chris, and thanks to Raceline Wheels. They've jumped on board in the championship last year and this year. Thank you very much. Uh, Marg and Heather, if you could, Marg Crowley, Heather, if you could come up here. We've got a little, uh, we've got a bunch of flowers for you, ladies, just to say thank you very much. You didn't hear earlier when I called it out, but thank you very much for your input. Once again, these, these people do amazing things in the background of events just to get them going. Some people show up to races, they just put their entry in, show up and race around a track, but don't realise what it takes to get the background happening. Okay, we're going to start off with ultimate class in the classes. So ultimate class, as you know, is up to six litre or three and a half boosted buggy. And uh, third in ultimate class this weekend in his first successful finish in this car, Dale Martin with AJ Rowe. Second in ultimate class this weekend... Mark Burrows and Tom Burrows in that uh, car 21, that little monk-built car. And first this weekend, your ultimate class winners will be... He's already started walking, but it's not him, no. Clayton Chapman and Adam Maguire in car 15. They destroyed it today. They did really well. Dale Martin, car 5. Thank you. Sorry, AJ's already gone to the chiropractor. He can <laughs> AJ can hardly walk. So uh, that was pretty tough out there. Congratulations to anyone who, who got to the end and finished. That was, that was the toughest, hardest thing I've driven. And uh, doing it in a new car was something special to finish that as well. So congratulations to the club, Tony and his team and everyone involved with Bora. I know it's been a few big changes this year and they've, they've taken all their stride and put on a great event. So safe travels home for everyone. Thank you, Dale. Uh, Mark. Yep. No, well, th thanks everyone for uh, showing up. A great race again. Always good fun at Rainbow Town. Gets right behind it. Thanks ARB for uh, you know, getting this area. Well, ARB and all the other sponsors, of course, uh, that helped run the series. And thanks Tom for doing a great job in the navigator seat. Thanks Sharon for uh, letting us do it all. And yeah, no, it's, it's been a great weekend. We've had a ball. No worries. Thank you, Mark. And well done. Second place. Ultimate. And the guy that looked as fresh as he did when he came in, <laughs> that, that was as what he did when he went out, Clayton Chapman. Yes, um, yeah, thanks again to the, um, the committee and the club who put on the event. It's absolutely massive. And the community here too at Rainbow. Um, yeah, super supportive, the whole town. Just love coming here. It's a great place to, to come and compete. So thanks to our personal sponsors, uh, Link ECU, Penrod Oils and Mickey Thompson Tyres. Uh, couldn't do it without them. Um, yeah, no troubles with any of those products this weekend either. They just everything ran floors for us. So, thanks to uh, Mick um, Marson, MR Trans as well for doing a gearbox at the start of the year. Always looks after us and does a great job. And our Speedline Race Engines and um, our own personal business, Chapman's Auto Repairs. And um, obviously, <laughs> they, they are major sponsors. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, thanks again to everybody. Um, it was just yeah, tough competition. Absolutely loved being able just to, to flog the car and actually and compete. So it was um, yeah, great great weekend thanks again thank you clayton car 15 winner of ultimate
Uh, uh, so, class one. And there was uh, a couple of class ones that finished today. But in third place, with a total run time of 5 hours and 21 minutes, car 104, David Lotham, Michael Schneider in that Urseg Honey Badger, that 104. I don't know if everybody's here. I know some people have had commitments, so if some people aren't here, if we could, someone could collect on their behalf, that'd be great. Second place, car three last year's third championship uh, place getter, Matthew Burrows and Jay Mitchell. Thank you, Maddie. And uh, phenomenal effort, Simon Tucker in car 110 with Kyle Tucker, that little green and white Southern Cross car. They came first in class one today. Congratulations. David. <laughs> you want to have a chat? Thanks, man. No, you don't need to. You don't have to. Matty? You want to have a couple of words, Matt? I know they're all appreciative. <laughs> they are all your top three class one people. You want to say a couple of words? You don't have to, you're not pressured. Oh, just quickly, I think um, Big Desert 480 committee organisers. Um, volunteers, officials, anyone involved in any way, shape or form. Great effort, great event, but I don't know about calling it the Big Desert 480. I think, reckon it should be the Big Brutus 480. It was, uh, <laughs> it was bloody brutal. But yeah, look, congratulations to all the car competitors that made it home. That's, uh, that's a great effort on its own. Yeah, thanks guys. Well done. There you are, guys. Class 1. Give them a round of applause. All right, now this was a feat in itself. There was only one car in this class. Class two, the Forsman entry, car 202. Only car in the class, only 1650 here this weekend, and they uh, they seemed to come over the finish line. The car still looked in pretty good shape when it came over the finish line. So they're from down Geelong Way in Victoria. Tell you what, they would have taken a bit of a beating in these smaller cars, as we know. Well done, mate. Thank you, mate. How are you going? I'm going all right. That's all right. Probably I'm, better than I'm feeling. Yeah, I sat in aircon most of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the cars held up better than my body has, but um, yeah, no, it was pretty brutal out there. But yeah, we've uh, done a good job to drag the little 1650 around for six laps here, that's for sure. So um, I'd like to thank Lee, my navvy. Uh, all the Forceman Motorsport crew, um, we only had one car here this weekend, so I felt a bit of pressure to fly the flag for the team. <laughs> Hopefully we, uh, we have two or three at, uh, at Hilston in a couple of months' time. Uh, thanks to all the volunteers, the Vora committee, to Tony. I, I know there's a massive amount of work that goes on behind the scenes and we can't do it without these guys and girls, so congratulations to everyone involved and uh, well done to all the other competitors. We had... No issues this week with guys. Obviously, we've got guys coming past us all the time, but uh, absolutely no trouble with anyone. So we look forward to catching up with everyone at Hilston. Well done. Thank you very much. There's the Forsmans in car 202. Righto, on to class four. Uh, this was a fairly well-sized class. I think they had about eight entries, seven or eight entries at the start of the weekend. By the looks of this, only four finished. So... In third place, and one of the last of the cars over the finish line, John Smith in car 445 with Grant Mannion in with him. They came third, class four. Second, car 435, Darren Mott and Bailey Mott in that Micklefab truck. And also, we saw Sibo come over the line. Uh, if Sibo and Jason could come down in car 412, the winners of class four this weekend at the steel at ARB, Big Desert 480. And Rainbow definitely turned it on for us this weekend. Apart from a little bit of uh, lack of wind this morning, I think the weekend went absolutely superb.
We know we were faced with a couple of different issues this weekend that we haven't been. A couple of words, mate. Yeah, a big shout out to the committee for putting on this event and the absence of Muller and Julie. Um, and, uh, and a big shout out to the emergency services and the recovery guys. There was lots of them out there. They did a fantastic job. No worries. Thank you and congratulations. The Mott crew. There you go, Sandy. <laughs> Going well. Oh, you know, tough weekend. But anyway, we had a couple of dramas and we managed to get there. I'd like to thank Bailey, uh, Vora, all the landowners. Um, without the land, we don't have these races. All the yeah, officials, um, volunteers, everyone. Thanks. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations. Second place in Class 4. And Sibo. Sibo and Jason Munro, Dee's obviously jumped out of the passenger seat and uh, so a revised car again this weekend or crew again this weekend, but you did well. Yeah, and I'd like to thank uh, the Rainbow Rises committee. I've seen how much goes on behind the scenes in the last few months and uh, the landowners here, the, what they put up for us to tear up the place and all my crew, uh, Jason, Brian and Mark and Jace and even my own parents. So, yep, without their help, um, it would be very hard. Thank you. All right. Well done. Thank you, Sibo and Jason. <laughs> Righto. On to Class 5. We only had two Class 5s here. This weekend, the flies are driving me crazy down here. Uh, we did have two Class 5s here this weekend. One was car 570. They didn't finish, unfortunately, for those guys. And Darren Vandy, who we know was one of the last two or three on the track, with a total, I think the total allowed time was eight hours. They came in with seven hours, 56 minutes. So, well done, Vandy taking out Class 5 with Millie in the passenger seat. And I don't know if you had somebody else in the passenger seat, but it doesn't say on my paperwork. Oh, Isaac, I think, jumped in as well. So well done to those three. They did a phenomenal effort. They left last car, I think it was, that came off the finish line to start, or the start line to complete that last lap. And I'm thinking to myself, we're going to be here till about 7.30 tonight waiting for this lot. But they eventually came through. And that goes well towards their championship points anyway. Because they're going to do the whole championship, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, mate. Thank you. Hey, um, how good is this sport when you've got your competitors coming over, they see your cars in bits and they come over to help you? The, the people in this sport are just awesome. So thank you very much. Chapmans, I cannot thank you enough for that pump. You saved my skin. I'm just forever grateful there. Well done, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, Vora, all your committee, all the volunteers out around the track. It's a really well run event. Thank you. Thank you to the Vanderwoods, your Class 5 winners. Righto, on to uh, Class 6. We had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in total. I think we only had 5 finish, and Maddie Hummel was one of the last ones in 5th place. Uh, 611 was in fourth place, but in your third place today, car 607, Lachlan and Greg Campbell. In a Can Am, then 627, Justin Ryder and Stephen Tees, also in a Can Am. Then we've got the King Chrome entry, Jackson Evans, Samuel Raper in car 635. They've got a massive support crew here this weekend. You did see Jackson come over the finish line on three wheels yesterday. So he was held up for the last couple of kilometres, but in the end, today paid off. A couple of words? Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank Vora and the, um, yeah, the whole club and committee for putting on a great event this weekend. 
Uh, shout out to Method Race Wheels and Tensor Tyres. We had a fair few stumps and rocks and everything coming out there and they held together great. And uh, King Shocks for keeping us on our four wheels this weekend. It got pretty rough out the back there. Uh, Dad for jumping in the silly seat. I couldn't find anyone else despite his best efforts. And I uh, should thank my sister because she's probably going to end up washing this car tomorrow. So, yeah, thanks to the sponsors and everyone. Keep this all possible and we'll be back next year. No worries. The uh, third place car, 607 from the Campbell Motorsport. 627, you want to give a couple of words? Yeah, sure. Sure. Justin. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the committee and the whole club did a great job of the event. Uh, first time here for us. It was very rough. We were just happy to get it done. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Thanks to my crew, they always go over and above. Um, we had a rough truck getting here, but we got it here. Got here with about 20 minutes to spare for recon, so we got the job done and we got got it finished. Thank you. Fantastic. Second and uh, third this weekend. Uh, sorry, first this weekend. Jackson with Samuel in the passenger seat, car six three five. Thank you, mate. And um, day one wasn't looking too good, was it? When we rolled over <laughs> with, without a wheel, but. Yeah, it's awesome to have a Polaris winning Class 6. <laughs> We're fun with this. Um, but, yeah, I just want to thank our team. Our team was unreal. King Chrome, Polaris. I want to thank my wife. I've done hours and days and so much work after work trying to get this car to do what it could do out here today. Um, so, yeah, she's been unreal. And, yeah, Albie, Daniel, Dad, just all the people that are there every day making it happen. Um, yeah, we, we've still got more in this car. We have still had some teething issues, and, yeah, we'll be back for Fink. Oh, sorry, we're going to be back for the round two. Yeah. But, yeah, next for us is Fink, and, yeah, we're going to be having a crack. So, thanks. Oh, also the event, unreal event. Loved it. It was, yeah, everyone did such a good job. So, thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Well done. The Evans crew there, they put a lot of energy into this sport recently and come on board to the championship. Right, oh, class, that's your class six, and we've gone to class 66. We did only have one entry all the way from Warwick. It was our Warwick vet, Ross Newman, in car 6681 with Chris Leonard in the passenger seat. They had a total run time of oh, two hours. Hang on, they didn't go. Actually, it doesn't say on the sheet. If they're still here, Ross Newman. No, maybe not. There's plenty that aren't here. There's plenty of people have had to go on their way. We'll get those trophies out to those guys. Thank you, D. Class 7, another car that battled all weekend, who I also don't think is here, uh, Heath Whedon in the Class 7, 701 from last year. I'm not sure if they're here, but we'll get those out to those guys as well. We'll be on to... Class 10, when D sorts out some paperwork, there's piles of it everywhere to make sure we're doing the right thing here. And uh, I don't know who enjoyed that control zone. I know some people enjoyed that control zone out there this weekend. That was something that was lumped upon the committee at the last, very, very last minute. So they did their best to keep the event going as we were leaving for the pro, uh, sorry, the pre-run of the track on Friday lunchtime. They were lumped with a big, uh, how do we do this? So I um, congratulate them on coming through with the goods and ma making the event still go ahead with that little hiccup in the middle of it. Uh, so Class 10, we only had two finishes in Class 10. Uh, class 10... 1018, which was Sam Bentley, Eli Moss, and also Hannah Bentley came in the car this uh, today as well to back him up. So if those lot can come down here, Hannah, you can come down too. It's not, don't be shy. Uh, Hannah had a bit of bad luck yesterday with the truck, so she jumped in today for the last section. So between the three of those, they got it done. Uh, and our winner for Class 10, unfortunately, after Bowie had an out, Dean McGinley, Dean DeMarco in 1087. Down from Griffith in New South Wales. Yep. 
Sam. I've had the microphone in your face a couple of times this weekend, but here we go again. Well done, mate. I know you've um, come out and just driven the wheels off her, basically. Well done. Yeah, no, it was great fun. Um, obviously, I'd just like to say thanks to Mum and Dad, um, Hannah and Ryan for getting in, um, Viv and Coop for coming along to help out as well. Um, I obviously feel bad for Hannah having a bit of bad luck with the truck, but I suppose that's how it goes. Yeah, no worries. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. The Bentley Motorsports team, second place, and uh, here we have Dean in 1087. Dean and Dean. Yeah, thanks very much um, to Vora for yeah cracking weekend. The Rainbow Rises Committee. Um, this is our first time coming down. You've done a cracking job. Um, the whole township been behind it. Tony, you've uh, had a few curve balls and it looks like you've weathered the storm all right. <laughs> you've got a smile still. Um, yeah, commiserations to Bowie and Ella. Um, yeah, without their breakage, there's no chance of catching them. Um, yeah. And, Thanks to Ronnie at Race Trains for gearboxes and, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, um, Ronnie at Race Trains for the gearbox and, yeah, uh, my wife for making this all happen pretty much. Like, she lets me come and play. There you go, Dean and Dean in 1087. We'll see them up at uh, round two up in Hilston, New South Wales. Well, we've only got one class left. We've got uh, class 11, five entries to start the weekend. This is newly formed class, it's growing some legs. It's pretty close to anything goes style class. And uh, with five entries, had three finishes there. Class third place was triple one zero, Darren Franklin and Rob Hackney. Second place, 11.42. Andy Brown and Danny Hardman. And this year, for Class 11, was Triple One Three, Bo Robbo and our guy behind the camera, Shane Hutt. He did uh, two jobs this weekend of facilitating and coordinating the live feed and telling Bo what to do. This is a guy who sent text messages throughout the race telling cameramen to get where they need to be. So... Thank you, Shane, for that. Don't be scared. We've seen you. We've seen you again, mate. Uh, might as well get the Franklins up here first. If you want to have a quick word, you don't have to. You know, no pressure. Uh, all good. Uh, I'd just like to thank Vora and everything for the, uh, organising it, all the volunteers, the landowners. Um, been a, another great weekend out here. Hasn't smoothed out any more since last year, but um, great event. And, um, and thanks to everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Andy, second place. First, week, uh, first race in Australia in the car. Well done. Thank you very much. No, I'm absolutely wrapped in the car. It was uh, sensational all the day. This bloke got in the way all the time, but other than that, it was um, no, it was a ripper event. Um, look, I'd just like to call out, just on behalf of ARB and, and myself, uh, the, the Rainbow Rises Committee and you know Tony, especially up heading it up, has done a, a fantastic job on this event. They've been met with many, many challenges, and um, they've they've just hit, hit them head on and achieved, a, I think, a fantastic um, result. So, yeah, just a well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. There you go, Andy Brown. And uh, Shane, who's on the other side of this camera, folks, Bo Robbo's had to jump on a plane and head back. I don't know, we might just get Shane. I'll down to poke the microphone on the other side of the camera and get him to have a word or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a cameraman now. I've moved on. It was great. It was unbelievable. It was a, uh, yeah, great experience. Thanks to everyone, like everyone's saying. I know you guys came out against a few speed bumps and we hit plenty out there, but yeah, it was great. We had a great battle with Andy and hopefully everybody liked what my mate Phil and Char did on the live stream and we got that on board going and hopefully going into other rounds we can produce some more stuff like that and more cars, more onboards, more entertainment because I'm an off-roader and 
I want to get it out there as much as everybody on the hill here does. And my wife and kids aren't here. They want to see it. And, you know, yours aren't here either. So that's what it's all about. And these great sponsors and everybody that put in, thank you. They are Shane Navigator in uh, Bo Robbo's trophy truck, class 11, 11 uh, 13. So we've got left, we've got a handful of little bits and pieces. We still have a fridge raffle, which I think we're going to get Nat down to do. Is that correct, Dee? I'm only the mouthpiece for this coordination. <laughs> so in the meantime, once again, a massive thank you to the championship sponsors, who is ARB, Mickey Thompson Tyres and Raceline Wheels. They've done an amazing, amazing effort keeping this championship going behind the scenes. Once again, the AR, Steal It. ARB, Big Desert 480 Committee, everybody behind the event. I know what goes on. You and you know pretty much everything that goes on behind the event, uh, behind the scenes. Most people here do. Thanks to the competitors. We're going to get Nat down here in about three seconds, and uh, we'll call out the uh, winner of the fridge. I'm glad to see everybody came back in safe today. That was a big part of it, especially going out into this morning's dust before the wind picked up. That was a little bit terrifying. We've seen that before, with the, what the dust can do. So, right, oh. This is what. So it's, it's money back. To Okay, this is some money back for the volunteers, which was put in by a number of people, uh, put some monies in, just a, a little bit of a kickback. I know it's not much compared to the energy and the money that you spend getting here just to help out, and I know it's out of your pockets, but um, there's a number of sponsors, individuals and businesses that put in some dollars towards helping you guys out. It'll just help you fuel along the way. We have uh, Graham I'm going to say it probably wrong. Nusk, N-U-S-K-E. He's here. He's going to come down. I'll give the old ones to you, D, if I can. These are drawn at random, as you can tell. Uh, Ian Terry. We saw him up and about this weekend. He has been a competitor here in the past. I'm not too sure if he's still here. Ian Terry, make sure he gets something there as well if he doesn't. Tony's going to read out that word name. Oh, Robert. Robert, our radio bloke. Our radio bloke. I'm not going to attempt his name. Zvortevin. There's going to be a silent Z, I'm sure, or something. How do you say it, mate? I don't want to... Swartavine? Yeah, Swartavine. Swartavine. Robert Swartavine, thank you. Thank you for your energy, mate. We do appreciate it. Larry Davidson, come on down. If you're here. If not, Dee will get you something. Larry Davidson. Gee, we've got a million envelopes there. We have uh, Peter Bolton. This guy. He put an amazing effort in. He was the man in charge, basically, for most of the weekend, Mark Heemskirk. So he was our clerk, of course. He's done a few events now. You're, I'm sure you'll see him towards the end of the year, if not before, doing Pines, which is our final championship round. Thank you, Mark. No Chantel Petzl. If I've said that correctly, I hope I have. Remembering that I struggle with names like Barry Smith, so... Chantel, thank you. Once again, there's a, a million different people that help out. Jessica Halambi. If Jessica's here... Lisa Sherman. <laughs> Lisa Sherman.
Ashley Eckerman. I did hear that name earlier this weekend somewhere. But Ashley Eckerman, if you're about. Stuart Amos. Gilly Nodson. Oh, Billy Hodson. <laughs> Billy Hodson. I know this fella. Actually works down a little workshop in Kilsyth called Oldsfall Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Rowena Keller. This is literally just a little appreciation from those guys that are willing to put, put a little bit back in to help you guys out because we know how much it means to off-road racing. Cowboy, you here? John Payton. Cowboy, cowboy. Cowboy. John Payton. We will get you something if you're not here, though, so don't stress. Thank you. There's another Payton, Bucky Payton. Second of the Paydens. We're not too far off, folks. I hope you've all loved the weekend. I know the uh, desert seemed to be brutal by the end of it. Kimberly Bye. One of the Mott crew, book, uh, sorry, Brook Mott. Running out of hands down here. <laughs> now these are just some of the names that have helped out and get this get this uh, event running. Jamie Sherman. So once again, we had over 110 volunteers this weekend. They told me earlier. We had over 2,200 people listening to the live feed yesterday afternoon. And uh, Craig, Craig Drendel. So that was a phenomenal effort. Like I said, we know everybody has a job out here. They just pick it up and do it and get it done. Elizabeth Staples, if you're in the crowd. There's still a number of people here. There's probably still people coming in from the desert. I think most people are in now, but... Carla Griffiths. This is just another thing that needs to be organised at events. It doesn't all happen. Uh, David Officer Dinter. Me thinking about it, I wonder what part of the track was people's favourite, but I reckon it would be in the finish line by the sound of it. Tony Clark. We have, uh, we know there was 480 k's, about 77 k laps. Don't forget that we have Griffith coming up in, was it July the, f I'm going to say 5th to 7th for memory. Um, then on to, which is up at Hilston. Then on to our Gundy round up on the border of Queensland and our finisher down at Pines in Millicent, South Australia. Neil Bowles.
Julie McLean. Done a lot of walking, Julie has. <laughs> Simone Clark. Then we've got uh, Tali Louise Funston. Like I said, this is just a little kicker to, to say uh, thank you. This was put in by a number of different people. Some anonymous people put in some a few different amounts. Nick Roll. Nick Roll. They keep coming. Corey Smith. Don't forget we've got our ARB fridge sitting here. That'll be um, drawn soon as well. Breeze is still going, which is nice. I know we've had zero this morning. Joe Carabot. He's gone. We'll get that to Joe. Got about four or five to go, folks. Then we'll hang around for the fridge. And then... Uh, and we've got a couple of sportsmanships awards too. Adrian... Jesk, J A E S C H K E. Adrian, if if they're not here, they, they'll uh, make sure that those get through to you. Right, oh, Kane Goldsworthy, one I can pronounce. Tammy Bigham, if Tammy's here. Now, yeah, don't forget, we've got room for sponsorships to get this championship rolling. The uh, We all know that the live feed costs a lot of money to get going. We know that track maintenance, everything costs a lot of money to get going. So anyone that wants to jump on board for a sponsorship and help out keeping this off-road racing championship the best in Australia. Uh, also, Angela Leah. Here somewhere, I think. Lindsay Oliver. The last one, Christopher Zato. Christopher Zato, Z A D O W. Right, that's that taken care of. I think we've got a final few little bits of business to do, which is the fridge and some sportsmanship awards and then we're done so just hang for another couple of minutes and then you can all be on your safe travels home and once again thank you very much i must say i know there's been some testing moments out there this weekend with uh recoveries and stuff there was no big accidents which is a good to see everyone came home safe and um we're glad that wind picked up this morning beautiful weekend with weather we're off to hilston so if you haven't organized Organise yourself around getting your cars up to Hilston, entered, and um, that should be a cracker event as well. Oh well, no, someone else can. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the fridge. I've got five. I think Andy's gonna put up five fridges. I can't even get one. I keep falling. In. Here we go. Whatever that is. Black Ticket. Glenn Collis. Glenn Collis.
Colas was a competitor here this weekend, weren't they? Uh, Blue B033 car four. One, oh, 147, was it? Come get your fridge. You have it on board when you get to Griffith for the next round full of coldies. Okay. So, uh, what else have we got to take care of here? So, once again, the Martin Motorsport Award. Yep. They, uh, they put out... They put so much into this sport um, over over many many years. Craig Martin, the previous champion, the boys have both been champions of the of the off road racing scene. They put a um, and a, a bit of cash up just to help people get along and get back each race. So this this time round, it's been given to car six three three, Maddie Hummer. And that's from the Martin Motorsport Group. We know Dale, uh, Dale had a ripper run this weekend. Brent had a little bit of an issue with his car yesterday. But um, they, they, they don't stop giving. Josh McPhee is a Volunteers Award. 250 bucks from the Martin Motorsport crew. So Craig Martin giving back to the sport. A lot of energy. Like I said, a lot of energy goes into it and um, this is just an appreciation from the Martins. The Martins to you, mate. Well done. Thank you. Now, Tenacity Award, which is another $250, once again from the Martin Motorsport Group, uh, Vaughan Hogan. Once again, I think Vaughan was the last car on track today. Battled out and being out there last car, I'd, I'd kind of happily be out there last car if I was running around on 40-inch tyres, but he wasn't. He was in a side-by-side -side and car 626 battled it out right to the very end. So thank you, mate. Well done. All right, folks. Uh, I think that's closing in from us. If Tony, Tony you want to have any couple of words, no. Um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, once again. First round of the ARB Australian Off Road Racing Championship. Uh, we got next. We have uh, Hilston. Don't forget, in New South Wales. We got four rounds of the championship this year in 2024. We'll see you at the next one. Safe travels. Thank you very much to everybody that attended the Steel at ARB Big Desert 480 here at Rainbow Victoria, and we'll see you all for the next round in a couple of months. Well done.